Okay. And you can just make them. Yes. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we please take our seats? Thank you very much. You got it. Visualization. You can always invite me to you. Are you here the whole week? No, today only. Just today. Okay, I think um, I think what we should do is have a few um, working methods to input from the stakeholders. We should just talk about it, and then once people who are interested to meet with you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start. Can we please take our seats? Thank you very much. Veni? Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first open consultations and MAG meeting for the 2020 cycle. Um, this morning, we're going to concentrate on the open consultation uh, portion of the meeting. And before we start, I would just like to remind everybody that um, we are being webcast and there is a um, transcript being taken. And we would also ask you that if you want to take the floor during the meeting, if you could please use the speaking queue. So we're going to try the speaking queue. The reason why we're trying the speaking queue is that we do have some remote participants um, outside and we want to make it fair that the first person to ask for the floor is the first person in the queue. Um, so with that,
I would like to introduce our chair, uh, our MAG chair for 2020, Miss um, Henriette Estoyson, uh, to start the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Shengatai. Um, yes, it's Ms. Henriette Estoyson. <laughs> And um, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be here. I've been part of the IGF community since we were negotiating around it in, in, in 2005. And, um, and so being in this role, having been a MAG member, having been a workshop proposal presenter, having, having been at the end of rejections of workshop proposals by the MAG, um, it's really um, a challenge, but also an honor for me to be in this role. Um, thanks enormously to everyone for the support and the advice um, that has been coming my way. I need it. I need it now, but I need it throughout this, this process. And, um, and also feel com comfortable, um, and I'm saying this to MAG members, but also to the constituents, the IGF community out there, to make that support and advice critical. I come from civil society. I believe in speaking directly and, and, and being clear. And I'm open to criticism from, from all of you, constructive criticism. I want you to just, before we go ahead, Shengatai, I want you to tell people exactly how to use the speaking cue. <laughs> because there might be people here who have not used it before. So just explain to them where to go on the website and how it works. Okay, thank you. Uh, for those people who are online, uh, we are going to uh, paste in the link uh, to register or, or to um, log in for the speaking queue. And for those people here, you go to the IGF website and there's a link there at the bottom of the page uh, where you can go to the, for the speaking queue. Um, if you have any problems, please do not hesitate to con contact Louise over there in the middle and he will help you out. Thank you. Sorry, thank you for that. Um, to review the agenda, we'll only review the agenda for today. So just to give everyone a sense of the overall um, shape of the meeting, today is the open consultation. It's the day where the MAG listens to what members of the community uh, feel about the IGF, what they are gaining from it, what they'd like to gain from it, their proposals and suggestions. This is not to say that MAG members cannot participate. You do need to participate, but remember that we need to listen, absorb and process input from the community. Um, and then tomorrow and the day after is when we as a MAG work with that input and begin to structure it into a plan of action. Today's agenda, the open consultation agenda, um, the first component are the welcomes and inputs. I'm very pleased, I'll introduce her shortly, um, um, our host country chair. Um, after that, we will um, go into the taking stock of IGF 2019 um, and setting expectations for 2020. So that's from 11 to 1. That's when we look at the synthesis of the input, the written input received, and also inputs from the floor and from remote um, participants. And we'll have a, a strategic discussion about um, those inputs. We then have lunch, and after lunch we have a session which is being kindly um, co-organized and supported with, with Switzerland. Um, and that session will focus on the UN Secretary General's high-level panel on digital cooperation. It's an opportunity to have a consultation and for us as, as the IGF community to provide a platform to those champions and key constituents involved in taking that process forward to give them an opportunity to, to brief the broader IGF community and, and others. And to also look at what the IGF can do in terms of its 2020 agenda to respond to some of the specific needs of particularly Geneva-based missions whom we've invited to, to join. It's also an opportunity for us as a MAG to share some of the outcomes um, of the 2019 um, IGF with, with that particular community. And then that's it. That's the agenda for today. Um, are there any, uh, uh, anyone happy to, uh, are you happy to adopt this agenda? Any questions about the agenda for today? We'll review the MAG meeting agenda tomorrow morning. 
Okay, on that note, um, let's adopt the agenda or consider it adopted. Um, at this point, I'd like to um, welcome my colleague from UNDESA, um, Wayman, who will start the meeting for us with a message from the UNDESA in New York. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Wanda Book, 2020 Host Country Chair, Rudolph, um, our 2019 Host Country Chair, distinguished MAC members, stakeholders who are here with us and all participating online. I am Wai Min Kwok from UN Department of Economy and Social Affairs, UN DESA. Um, my colleagues from the IGF Secretariats uh, will be distributing copies of the message of Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Mr. Liu Zhenming. Many of you met the USG in Berlin, uh, during which we had a session with Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and also the other session, during which he expressed thanks and gave out appreciation letter to outgoing MAC members, while also welcoming new MAC members. I would like to highlight some of his key messages here. Um, he started by recalling IGF 2019. Not only did we have record numbers in participation and diversity, across different stakeholder groups, countries, and disciplines. With capacity development support to the Global South provided for by the host government, we also convened the inaugural parliamentary session. And with that, the USG expressed deep appreciation to the hosts, the government of Germany, for their leadership, collaboration, and commitment. Looking forward to 2020, he extended a special appreciation to the government of Poland for its offer and undertaking to host the 15th meeting of IGF in Katowice. He recalled the Secretary General keynote address at the Berlin IGF, that the internet can be a powerful force for good, but we are seeing also that it is a tool that can easily be put to nefarious use. The Secretary General also reminded us about the three divides, digital divides, social divides, political divides, and how digital divides both reflect and reinforce the other two. And with that, um, let us be reminded also by the Secretary General um, that in building the IGF as a platform where government representatives from all parts of the world, along with companies, technical experts and civil society can come together to share policy expertise, debate emerging technology issues, agree on some basic common principles, and take these ideas back to appropriate norm-setting fora. In delivering the 2030 Agenda for Substantive Development for the remaining 10 years, the GIGF should also step up as a platform in responding to the Secretary General call for a decade of action to deliver the Sustainable Development Goals. USG Mr. Liu applauded the far-reaching efforts of all current and past MAC members, commenting that the cohesive, committed and collaborative efforts of the MAC, now building on 14 years of work, are important and critical to the IGF process and fulfilling its mandates. But in our efforts to leave no one behind, there remains the need to strengthen the linkages and engagement of the national, sub-regional, regional and youth IGF NRIs and develop their capacities. We have made impressive progress in the positive network effect of the NRIs, but we need to do more. And that led USG Mr. Liu to continue uh, to remind us to continue to answer to the call of the times, as highlighted by Secretary General and Chancellor Angela Merkel, and respond to the mandates of the General Assembly as contained in the Resolution 70-125. Um, to continue to make improvement to the IGF processes, outputs, and desired impacts. This is also reflected in the recommendation of the high-level panel on digital cooperation. The USG urged the MAC and all stakeholders to stay focused and effective on the need for the IGF to engage um, with the global community, um, including in the governmental and international organizations, think tanks, academic institutions, and all individuals as the internet is now a central medium in our daily life across borders, sectors, and disciplines. In, 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 re, in moving forward, um, he advised the MAC and all to be guided by the mandate of the IGF, as set in the Tunis Agenda, reaffirm, reaffirmed in the GA Resolution 70-125 in 2015, as well as the terms of reference of MAC members. 
The, con the continuing relevance and strength of the global role of the IGF needs the participation of all. The inclusive participation of the community at large empowered through the MAC and established processes. The USG call on the MAC and all of us to work harder to reach out to those countries and stakeholders who are currently not engaged in the IGF. We do this not only for the benefit of the IGF community, but also to fulfill the promise of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Developments in leaving no, no one behind and no country behind. Finally, he called upon us to be inspired by the experience and wisdom we learn and share in Berlin on one world, one neck, one vision, and work towards Internet United, the overarching proposed theme of the IGF in Katowice. Um, the USG message is also available on the FGI website. I invite you to, the, to the visit and take a look. Thank you all and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for that, um, Yemen. And please convey the gratitude of, of the MAG to the USG for his presence and his really active participation in Berlin and, um, and for caring so much about this process and, and for the commitment and for making your time available as well. And I now have the great pleasure of introducing our host country co-chair of the MAG for 2020, and um, she's sitting right next to me, um, Under Secretary of State from the Ministry of Digital Affairs of Poland, Ms. Wanda Bok. So over to you and please tell us a bit more about yourself. Thank you very much, Henriette. Um, is it on? Is it on? It, yes. it works. Okay. So it's, very, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you and it's a great honor also for uh, Poland to host uh, upcoming IGF. Uh, thank, you very, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I am a Deputy Minister at the Ministry of Digital Affairs and uh, this day is exactly my fourth anniversary in public administration. I'm a barrister, but uh, f this, um, for the last four years I was working for a Ministry of Digital Affairs. Half of the time I was, uh, I was General Manager of uh, Digital Poland Project Center. This is a public institution responsible for distributing European funds for uh, digitalization in Poland. And half of this time, so two years already, I'm um, Deputy Minister of Minister, uh, at the Ministry of Digital Affairs. And I'm mostly responsible for uh, telecommunication sector, for, um, uh, for international relations and for EU funds, of course. So um, it's, uh, as I already told you, it's a great, a great pleasure for us and an honor to organize uh, IGF. Uh, we, um, I personally will be responsible in Poland for a coordination um, Polish uh, govern and government activities. And, but also there are my colleagues from the ministry here. So this is uh, Michael and Przemek, you can see them. Can you, can you, can you stand yeah. please just to, they will be here for a, a whole week. So uh, don't hesitate to contact them. Uh, so um, yeah, basically that's, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> so I would like to wish you a happy year because this is still the, the beginning of January. So, uh, so I hope it will be a very, very good year for all of you. And we as Poland will be, uh, will be able to, to de and deliver really meaningful IGF. And uh, we'll try to be as supportive as only we can. We already started our preparation and in a, uh, in a few minutes, we'll, uh, I will ask Michael to, to briefly uh, summarize uh, them so you will know where we are already. Thanks. Thanks, Wanda. Um, I can testify to the enthusiasm and the commitment of the Polish team. We've, uh, Shangatai has been meeting with them. I think Lynn might have had meetings with them. I personally had meetings with the team in Berlin and um, here as well. And so I feel very supported actually and encouraged by by the by the commitment and the seriousness and you'll hear more of that one of the innovations of the igf is that um, host countries past host countries um work with the mag or or have the the right to to participate in mag processes and and the igf is very much about continuity and learning and building on what we've learned 
Um, so it's really a great pleasure for me to, to welcome Rudolf Griddle, known to all of you and I think to our remote participants, um, to give us um, his insights as the, the, the host of what is the largest to date, the largest IGF, and an IGF which I think we all valued enormously and uh, based on the feedback, uh, certainly is considered an extremely um, successful IGF. So Rudolf, maybe um, now is the time for you to share some of that, that, that wisdom and experience um, in your welcoming remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anred, and um, thank you also to uh, Wyman, to, to Wanda, and to Cengitai, and also from my side, um, every, every good wishes for the new year. Um, I, am, I am not only here as a former host country representative, I'm still a MEC member mm -hmm. for this year, um, which is a very good thing. And looking back to um, the, the last year's IGF and, and uh, some insights, uh, I am uh, very happy that I do not have to refer to uh, the quotation of Bismarck, who said people should never know how laws and sausages are made. Um, you, sh you, can, you can easily know how the IGF is being made. Um, because no secrets behind it. Uh, we had... Um, around 4,000 um, participants from 160 countries in Berlin. Um, and uh, then again, an, a, a large number of um, online participation. And um, we, uh, we thought uh, and, and we had the vision to have some new ideas. Uh, four of them I will shortly just mention. It was the parliamentarian session, which um, we think worked out quite well. Um, there was a strong uh, feeling of ownership by all the participations from parliaments around the world that came um, to Berlin. We, we tried to um, have as many representatives of the Global South present as possible because we, we, we had the impression that as we have a lot of host countries from Europe, these years, it is even more important to have a participation that is global. So um, we are very grateful and thankful for all the um, participants from the Global South that they made the effort, that they came to Berlin and that we could help a little bit in facilitating mm -hmm. that. One uh, issue that was very dear to our heart was um, to involve um, SMEs and also SMEs, not only from the tech sector, but from all the industries uh, into the IGF process because we um, feel that in the age of uh, Industry 4.0 or IoT, um, there is actually no more distinction between internet issues, um, offline issues, new economy, old economy, all these distinctions do not exist anymore in our view and that's why we thought it is important for them to be involved, to get familiar with the um, issues that are being discussed at the IGF because they are relevant for these companies as well. And we, um, we try to revive the, um, that's not a new thing, but we try to revive the high leader segment. Um, and uh, it turned out um, to be uh, also quite um, interesting and diverse debate because um, there were around 30 uh, ministers and vice ministers from um, all over the world and they were also geographically um, well um, uh, represented and also the, the, there were countries from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west with different um, approaches to internet governance and that in our view uh, gave a very good the debate on day zero and a good input to the to the IGF. We were very thankful um, that the um, Secretary General of the United Nations um, made the effort and came uh, to Berlin and opened the IGF together with the Chancellor, Merkel. And um, we, um, we also uh, welcomed very much that uh, there was a main session on um, the question that we are also going to discuss this afternoon, which is the high-level um, panel on digital cooperations report and what input the IGF 
can give into this process of the follow-up of this report. I think that is something that will determine also this year's debate uh, on, on Internet governance and the future of Internet governance. And it's important to have this linkage between the IGF and this uh, work going on at the HLPDC. Um, I think I leave it at that. I don't want to close without thanking um, our Polish uh, colleagues for um, uh, everything that is going to come and for the good uh, communication that has been um, present between our teams already last year and also this year and uh, looking forward to uh, working with you um, on this um, effort and this endeavor. And um, once again, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you very much. Um, can I suggest we give Rudolf some applause? <laughs> Um, thank you very much for that. And I think, uh, you know, as, as I said at the um, closing session um, last year in Berlin, um, the thanks is not just to Rudolf and his team, it's to the broader German um, internet community that they managed to galvanize the, the civil society, some of whom are on our mag, technical community business, and the fact that they really managed to, to give life to the notion of the IGF being owned by the stakeholders and organized by the stakeholders. So, um, and, and we realized that it wasn't easy. It, it, it probably looked a lot easier than it was, but um, thank you very, very much. It was really a memorable event. And we now move on to a presentation from, from, from the Polish team to tell us a little bit more about what to expect for this year and the state of, 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 of preparations thus far. And then we'll give you all an opportunity uh, and the remote participants to ask questions. Uh, thank you very much, Henriette. For the introduction, I had to move here in order to have full control of the slides. Uh, before I start with the slides, I'd like to uh, extend my warmest thank first to Chang Tai and you and Dessa, uh, Denise uh, Cesar, who, who's not here with us right now for the extensive support so far. Uh, we are starting with what we do on IGF, but I think we are uh, on, the, on, uh, on the safe side and we are uh, on, on, on the right track with uh, the technical side of the IGF and uh, right now we are starting under programming which seems to be uh, a bit of a challenge too. Um, uh, the, the slides that I have are not intended to uh, give you extensive information on the status quo, the preparations, just to give you the basic idea of the event. Uh, me and Przemek uh, will be available for you uh, all along this MAX agenda and we'll be pleased to give you more information um, uh, if, if you need. Um, uh, the IGF will take place in Katowice, uh, the capital of Silesia in the south of Poland. Uh, Silesia agglomeration is one of the most densely populated regions in the country. And the city is is accessible by road via motorway, rail, and air. There is an international airport right next to it in Pizovica. There's also one in Krakow, plus Ostrava in Czech Republic. Um, Silesia is not only has not only a lot of historical significance for Poland, but but also due to its vibrant community and uh, coal mining tradition, it's the symbol of Polish industry and uh, entrepreneurship. The region is also known for innovation, medicine, business, and culture. It also stands out for uh, outstanding uh, cuisine, which is one of the most recognizable tra trademarks of Poland. Um, above the venue itself, um, we're going to have the event in the ICC, International Co Congress Center in Katowice. It was built in 2015, so the building is quite new quite spacious and uh, has already hosted one of the biggest events that are there 
uh, climate conference in 2018, COP24 with 20,000 people attending. Um, the ICC, uh, there's interesting thing about that because it comes with uh, the legendary Spodic Arena, which was previously considered as uh, the IGF security screening area, finally considered not fit for the purpose uh, by the UN Secretary uh, security team, but we recently uh, found another purpose for it. I'll come back to this later on. Uh, now, the building is divided into three levels, as shown in the slide. We already have attempted at a preliminary setup of the place. Uh, in general, the ICC provides a lot of flexibility in terms of space and room adjustment. Uh, the entrance to the building and registration area would be located on level two. This is, this is on, the, on the top of the slide, level two. Uh, workshops would be held on level one, zero, and two. And the, the, the IG village would be situated on level zero. This is the, the, the purple uh, area uh, 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 on, lab, on, lab, on level zero. Um, for the security screening, uh, it's been decided by the UN security mission to go for a tentage to be erected on the esplanade at the main entrance off Olympiska Street in front of the entrance doors. It is, uh, well, uh, it's, it's uh, right next to the entrance on the top of the slide. So it's not, uh, it's not depicted on the slide, but it will be there. Uh, more in detail, this is level uh, two. On level two, we're going to have meeting rooms and workshop rooms there's going to be plenty of dam. We have movable walls, and I'm sure we can uh, we can feed all the IGF needs uh, there. Yes, this is uh, this is uh, this is level two. As you can see, workshop rooms and meeting rooms. Uh, now level one, and this is where the uh, whole event, uh, well, this is the, the beating heart of, of the whole event. Uh, three big rooms, uh, among which um, we are going to have the plenary and main a meeting room in section B. In section A, we're going to have full court uh, right in the middle there's going to be a hangout space. Um, uh, the, uh, it's, it's not a painted on the a picture, but we're going to have this. Um, uh, the hangout space is a proposal that we have in order to get the most of the networking of all the IGF guests. It could be part of a logic, a creative space and provide the scene for all entertainment events, such as the, the music night which seems to have already found its permanent place in the IGF agenda. Uh, okay, and uh, section C, section C, uh, there are going to be move movable walls uh, all across the space. We're going to divide that uh, in workshop rooms as well. This is level zero, more, wa more workshop rooms, A, B, C, and the idea of village will be here. Uh, it's going to be to the left from the ballroom foyer. It's not depicted on the slide, but we're going to have a lot of room for that. Uh, last time we checked, uh, we can even accommodate 45 um, stands uh, uh, there, uh, even more. <coughs> uh, this is uh, this is, I know this can hardly be legible for you, but it's only a breakdown of all the IGF needs, but broken down on the whole uh, uh, ICC. It's just going to uh, give you an idea of uh, how much room we have and how flexible it can be. We can uh, uh, may get available uh, to you for questions. 
later on. Um, here's the blue zone as proposed by UN security officers, Sir Lee and Dramgul and Captain Mauritiana during the last visit in Katowice in December. Um, uh, there have been two site visits so far by the UN representatives. Uh, the first one was in October, involved Changatan to Denise, so that it um, could, in, uh, could inspect the, the venue and see if it has enough capacity and if it's the purpose. The round building right next to the ICC that you can see on the right side of this uh, other picture is the Spodic Arena I told you about just a minute ago. It's outside the blue zone. Uh, but it would most likely be used by the Kosciuszko Institute, one of the most recognizable Polish establishments, uh, NGO, to organize another edition of, of one of the biggest cybersecurity events in Poland, CyberSec. The plan is to have the, the IGF and the CyberSec go at the same time. Uh, we hope it will create an interesting synergy and attract more people for both events. We're working on the, on the plan right now on the best way of getting both events go simultaneously adding some some value to each other. Uh, now, now a bit about accommodation in about, in about five minute walking distance from the ICC and the Spodic Arena there are ten hotels with the standard from two to five stars within the distance of five kilometers from the venue there are 15 hotels altogether a bit further, up to uh, 40 kilometers from the ACC, there are another 14 hotels. Uh, for the climate conference in 2018, there were so many people, Katowice couldn't accommodate, and, and, uh, and uh, we know that, that um, uh, some of the attendees even made their way down to Krakow uh, to big, uh, their hotels. It's not that far. Uh, Krakow is one of the most beautiful see it is in Poland uh, and, and uh, uh, it's absolutely makes sense to 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 uh, uh, to have a, a place there if 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 you want but I'm pretty sure Katowice will be ready for every idea participant if if they want to to make their stay there um, we want to make sure that the prices are not skyrocketing during the uh, event that's why we already work with a hotel agent and uh, his task um, is to make sure that uh, uh, we have good prices for everybody. Uh, last but not least, um, we've been having internal discussions with uh, extensive aid from the IGF secretary and, uh, and, and the MAC chair on the high level leaders meeting proposals we have already established a steering committee in Poland. Uh, we already had the first, its first meeting. Um, uh, the composition of the steering committee is based on uh, uh, what we have done for the local IGF, which has been run since 2016. We have an extended team. Um, on the IGF 2019 open big closing session, there were some interesting ideas proposed and, and we would like to pick up, pick up some of them and add some more. Firstly, uh, digital economy, <clears throat> digital economy that focused not on the technological and business side of uh, the thing, uh, but also on ethics and social rights, uh, an interesting angle worth exploring here is the upcoming overall of the e-commerce directive by the Commission, and uh, it, which is expected to provide new framework for social network platforms and uh, of course as much as uh, this directive has a European context to the platform, the policy has a global one and uh, definitely it relates to the broad topic of internet government, so we think if we, if, 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 maybe if the, if uh, uh, the draft a, a, a regulation made it debut in Katowice it would be it would it, it would be a nice topic to follow and uh, and to work some high level discussion around that. Uh, we have already talked to Director Viola and we are uh, we are in the process of extending our invitations to the top uh, management of the Commission so that they can uh, be here with us uh, at the beginning of November. 
uh, in Katowice. Uh, secondly, inclusion and diversity. For this topic, we have thought of putting more emphasis on uh, equality in so social development as well as wider participation, for instance, of young or disabled people. Eco-smart cities, or more broadly, digital technologies and uh, environmental change. We would like to see the term smart cities in a broader sense, not only when it comes to business and technology, but also the impact of, of, cli of climate issues, uh, the, the impact on, on, on climate issues. And uh, uh, this is a very important topic that was heavily discussed during the open mix session in Berlin and uh, we, we had shared this sentiment even b before Berlin that we would be looking to have uh, the IGF 2020, the, the youth IGF. Uh, for that, uh, we have some proposals how to go about this. The first of them is a worldwide IGF 2020 car contest under the patronage of the Polish president uh, and under the banner with my intent of the future. This contest would be addressed to youngsters between the age of 16 and 26. Three main c c categories, poster, short film, and essay. We also think of inviting the prize winners to Poland and the fourth thing of creating the IGF 2020 fund that would cover mm, contest prizes as well as travel logistics to Poland for the winners. The official ceremony and the awarding of prizes would be organized during the IGF in Katowice. There could also be a working session of the young in Poland in the run-up to the IGF in April, uh, during which some workshop IGF 2020 proposals could be discussed based on the contest ideas. That's the basic, uh, that's the basic idea behind the contest. It's of course for you to consider at some at some value, we are open for your suggestions on that. Uh, setting up the Polish Youth IGF. As I said, uh, we had a, we've had a vibrant community uh, around the local edition of the IGF since 2012. We've never had uh, the, the youth edition. Uh, IGF 2020 is the best possible opportunity for us to um, to do that and we're currently thinking of, of the best m m model of its affiliation uh, whether it can go to one of the NGOs or stay with the administration or maybe go to one of the academia uh, members uh, that we have on the on the use space creative use space. Uh, I talked about the hangout space right in the middle of the foot court, uh, but we're also planning to arrange for the special space in the ICC to enable the enhanced activity of the youngsters. For example, workshops, lectures, slideshows, and topics related to the IGF and the broad topic of internet governance, which would attract young people from Poland and other parts of the, of the world. Uh, it's going to be, uh, as I understand, off the main agenda of the of the IGF. Um, right now, we have tasked the steering committee um, in order to in order to get their ideas on uh, what could be uh, done here. Um, uh, but that, that's also for you to, to consider and throw some ideas on us. Uh, concerning the, the continuation of the practices from the age of 2020 in Berlin, we are thinking of going on with the parliamentarian track that was successfully carried out by our German colleagues, uh, maybe with a special participation from the MPs of the European Parliament. So that's, uh, that's in, the, in the nutshell so uh, this is what the IGF basics are, as they are right now. Uh, please note that there is also the official web page of the 2020 event. It's uh, in, the, in the slide at the bottom, IGF2020.pl. Not, not, not so much information there right now, but I'm sure 
will be filling up quickly. Uh, this is this is this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to try and pronounce your surname now. <laughs> so we just heard from Michal Pukaluk. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, who is the international, the director of international policy department at at uh, the Ministry of Digital Affairs? So thank you very much for that. Any questions? I hereby open the floor to um, those in the room and those that are joining remotely. Any questions um, to our Polish hosts? Okay. Takes a little bit of time. Um, Shangita, are you monitoring the, the online? Oh, we've got? Nobody. Aha, it's happening. Ben, you have the floor. And by the way, I'd like all the, the MAG members and other participants to introduce themselves um, when they take the floor so we can all get to know one another. Thank you, Henriette. And, and so uh, to your point there, my name is Ben Wallace. Uh, this is my third year as a member of the MAG, my third and unfortunately my, my last. Um, I work for Microsoft as a regulatory policy analyst um, based in Seattle. Um, and and uh, my roles within the MAG include um, co-facilitator of the BPF on cybersecurity for the last two years. Um, last year I was, um, I was fortunate to be able to coordinate the data governance thematic track um, and looking forward to working with, with all the new colleagues and, and old colleagues this year. Uh, the, the detail that you've just provided there, Michael, um, demonstrates quite how much you, the Polish hosts have already got into the spirit of this and it uh, uh, inspires a lot of confidence. Um, and the one question I, I had, a, a particular question I had was a little more information about this um, meeting that you said would be co-hosted, um, co-located with the IGF to kind of benefit from synergies um, focused on cybersecurity. Oh, you're just there, I see you there. Um, so I wondered uh, if you could say a little bit more about that meeting, which would happen at the same time focused on cybersecurity. Thank you. Um, do you want to wonder and then you can add, Michal. Yeah. So this is cybersecurity forum, which is usually organized in November. Uh, in Katowice also, so it's not really fortunate for us and for them, you know, to steal, uh, to steal our guests. So, and that's why we decided to um, to co-organize co somehow. But those 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 events will be uh, divided. Uh, so they, they are two different buildings. They are really close to, uh, to each other. So at the same time, we benefit from the situation that at Spodek, you know, the, the building which is very close, it's like three, four minutes walk from, uh, from ICC, uh, there will be no heavy metal concert or something like that, you know, so <laughs> because there was the risk like that. So at the same time, we can support each other with guests and with, uh, with teams. Uh, we already asked president of um, uh, Kościuszko Institute to join our steering board and uh, she has a great uh, experience in organizing big events so she will be very uh, very supportive not useful but supportive for uh, for uh, for us uh, she decided because usually they uh, when they organize cyber security forum they focus not only on expo but also uh, they organizing workshops so but uh, she decided that this year uh, she they will focus mostly on expo so they will not uh, compete with us with uh, and with workshops uh, that we're going to organize. Is it okay? Yeah. Thanks. Did you want to add anything, um, Michal? No. Okay. <laughs> um, next question. I'm very happy to give the floor to Jutta Kroll. <coughs> Madam Chair, for giving me the floor, Jutta Kroll from the German Digital Opportunities Foundation. Uh, I'm MAG member in my third year. I wanted to thank the Polish colleagues for that really well worked through a presentation. I do think you have started already good preparations and we are very much looking forward to 
BIGF 2020. My question is in regard of the youth contest that you already mentioned. I'm wondering whether it's open to young people from all over the world, which age groups, and when would you be ready to announce a bit more in detail when does the contest start, when entries could be made, and how the run-through will be. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, the idea was to make it open for youngsters uh, aged between 16 and 26. Uh, we can, it, well, it's still open. It's still uh, open and we can work for that depending on your experience and, and, and your uh, 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 feeling whether or not this uh, this, this, this age range is, is fit for that. Uh, we are going to make it public uh, uh, in mid-February, and then we'll be heavily campaigning on uh, the publicity. We're going to engage our embassies, and we're going to engage the, 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 the office of the post president. Uh, we, uh, we, would like to, we would like to use his good offices to, to, to make it known worldwide. Uh, we will be outsourcing a third party uh, establishment to help us out on all the logistics related to, to it. Uh, and the plan is to have as many uh, as many um, uh, uh, works from people as possible. We expect up to 5,000, and then uh, we're going to have a jury. Uh, the initial selection will be made by us, and then uh, we'll present the, the best, uh, the best ones to the jury, to the jury, to uh, to, to to decide on who gets the the main uh, prize. Uh, uh, with the process, uh, we have a timeline for that. It's tentative right now but we know that we have to act quickly uh, and we would like to con conclude the, the contest in April so that we already have the winners in April and then of course we can work with the IGF Secretariat on, uh, on, the, on the workshop session. Uh, we were planning to invite a vibrant youth community from uh, around the uh, IGF so that they can use the main ideas that stem from, from the contest and maybe they're working around to a form of a, a, a workshop that we can have during day, day zero or, or any other day. Uh, the purpose for it is to make young people's voice heard uh, the contest is for young people, and uh, the workshop uh, drawing from the drawing from the main ideas of the contest is also for young people to decide on the workshops. And 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 uh, uh, so, as I said, for a timeline, April I think is deadline for us. Uh, we have uh, we have a timeline. Uh, we have a timeline, a sort of time timetable time, time in written form. We can make it available to to Macro for uh, a review. But we uh, already started with uh, contracting a third party establishment to help to, to to help us out all the modalities on uh, the the age of the participants as well as. The, workshop session involving young people in Poland. It's open for discussion. Um, thanks for that. And I, and I can confirm that, that um, the, the, the Polish team is talking with Anya and is fully committed to working closely with the existing team, and, which is quite dispersed, but with those that have been involved in UF, youth IJF processes. So the intention is fully. Um, to integrate with existing processes and involve existing youth structures and people in this process. 
Um, next we have Paul and then Raquel. Let's take both your inputs and then um, respond to that. Paul Rowney, you have the floor. The, thank you, Chair. Uh, Paul Rowney, uh, business constituency from uh, Namibia. Uh, I just want to jump back on this cybersecurity forum. Uh, and apologies, I missed the beginning because I was actually out on a, a Skype call. But I, I, I think we might have to have a bit more discussion about this. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about running the two events in parallel. Uh, I think there's possibilities to have them, but we need to think of how to structure it. There, there's so much goes on at an IGF, and there's a possibility that people will be drawn to one or the other that might impact one or the other. So maybe, you know, we look at uh, having it as a pre or post event or finding some way to accommodate it or see if some of it can be accommodated in the program. But I would like us to have a bit more thought and discussion about that. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you, Henriette. I'm here in the back. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to take uh, just one minute as a, in my personal capacity to thank everybody. As an outgoing uh, MAG member, um, I've been um, in the MAG for the past three years and I'm really grateful to, uh, to have been working with these amazing colleagues, uh, with the HF Secretariat and uh, with the past and uh, the new chair. So thank you very much. Um, uh, now, formally, I'm Raquel Gatto. I work with Internet Society. I'm the senior uh, policy advisor. I'm also here with my colleague, Alejandra Pietro, who is coordinating all the youth programs uh, within ISOC. Uh, so um, I asked for the microphone uh, first to make, it's probably uh, early, but it's important in the logistics side. Um, if uh, the, the uh, Poland, the new host country, has any um, indications uh, to be working with the visa arrangements. It's really important to consider those for um, the participants on developing countries. We've had in the past, uh, for example, fellows who had problems to, uh, to get the visa from uh, certain uh, regions, uh, especially Latin America and Africa. So if you have any indications in that direction, that would be really uh, appreciated. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, as it was being discussed, uh, we uh, are open and uh, um, would uh, be wonderful to share some of our experience in the past years uh, evolving with the youth programs. We've brought more than 300 uh, young participants to, to the IGFs already. Um, and I'm sure there is a lot to be shared. Uh, we also have a special interested group um, called the Youth SIG, and uh, I'm sure they can uh, share within their own experience uh, from the youth for the youth to, to make it happen. So thank you very much. Um, thank you for that, Raquel. Um, do you want to respond to, to Paul's question about possible conflicts. I just want to flag as well, we don't have to resolve uh, all issues and concerns today. This is really where we note and we flag them for, for future, um, future work, but it would be good to get an initial response to concern about potential conflicts between the two events. Well, um, to be honest, we cannot stop Institute Kościuszki from organizing their uh, day forum. So uh, we decided to, to cooperate and to support each other. Uh, so uh, we can, of course, talk with, uh, uh, talk with you about, uh, about how, how to organize it in the best way and to, so we would compete with other events also organized in Europe at the same time. Uh, but, you know, usually they organize cybersecurity forum in November in Katowice during uh, several, uh, in last, in, I don't know how many years in the past, but several of them, several of them. So, um, so yeah, we are open to, 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 to discuss it and so we can find some, some solution. Just, just a question around that. So the, the IGF is essentially five days. How long is their event and on which exact dates will it take place? Uh, they want to start it, uh, to start it the next day, not the, so the first day of IGF, uh, not the day zero, but the first day of IGF is going to be also f uh, for them the first day of a cybersecurity forum, uh, and that's going to last two or three days. They're not sure, and they they're not sure uh, yet. So I think um, thanks for raising that, uh, Paul. It is good that we anticipate this, and we will we will get back to looking um, into this in more depth. 
And Jennifer, you have the floor. And just to, to give everyone a time check, we are running um, just past the end of our first segment. It's fine, we can be flexible. But people who do want to give input and remote participants, I'm including you, um, please join the queue now so that we can close it. Jennifer, you have the floor. For the quick introduction, my name is Jennifer Chung, a third year MAG member with the private sector. Uh, first, I would like to um, say Happy New Year to everyone because it's still January and thank Germany very much for the very, very successful um, IGF Berlin from last year. Um, we had really, really good um, reviews and, and thoughts from that. I'm very happy also to hear from Poland that we will continue the parliamentarians possibly that session. It was really uh, interesting um, last year to see that. We've also had some very interesting discussions um, actually coming back home to our, to our region. Um, I'm based in Asia Pacific, so it would be nice to have some more information about that, maybe to you know, include the MAC members in you know, the preliminary kind of discussion with that as well, because I remember last year a lot of people expressed a lot of interest in that. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Jennifer. Um, it seems to me that uh, there are no further questions. Um, so we've come to the end, but I'd like to just give, give um, my co-chair the opportunity to, to, to make some, any additional remarks or closing remarks on, on, on this part of, of our meeting. Well, uh, thank you for a willingness to speak, actually, and this is very important for us to have uh, remarks from you, to have, uh, uh, to have, your, uh, to, to have you on the board. Uh, actively, so uh, we are, I, I just would like to underline that we are really open to speak, uh, to talk to you and to, uh, to um, engage you in the whole process uh, and we will take everything into concern, uh, consideration. Also we would like to, get to, uh, we would like to work together uh, on a day uh, zero agenda uh, which uh, we are preparing right now and yeah, basically that's, uh, that's it. I hope, I hope everything will go, go well with our cooperation. I'm pretty sure that, that will. And so am I. <laughs> and, and thanks for being here and, and for, for your team to be with us. And on that note, we're moving into the second part of uh, the IGF 2020 first MAG meeting and open consultation. And this is a really vital part. Um, I think we sometimes underestimate how important um, this part is. And that is taking stock of 2019 while looking forward to 2020. Um, um, this is a, has been part of the IJF format um, for a long time. I think since we have, the, I see Marcus Kumar in the room. Uh, Marcus, where are you? There he is. So Marcus was the executive secretary um, of, of the IGF and has been the MAG chair. And this type of institutional memory is absolutely important. And I also encourage anyone who has any questions about, about the, the history of the IGF. And similarly, we have Shengatai, who's been part of, of the IGF um, process from the beginning. And um, this is when we listen to what the stakeholders who, who care about the IGF, but who are also co-creators of the IGF, um, when we hear what they have to say. So I am very happy to hand the mic over to Shengatai, who will present us with a, a summary of the input received um, on the call. The call went out in mid-December, so we did not give people a lot of time. But in spite of that, we've had a very positive response. Uh, thank you very much, Jane. Uh, for the call of, um, for input, um, we had a web, for, a web form and we asked what worked well, what didn't work well, and also the suggestions um, for this year. Um, so the synthesis paper is broken into those two parts. The first part is um, taking stock of the 2019 program and the second part is uh, suggestions for the 2020. Uh, we had um, 40 inputs um, that we received 
And, um, and this is just a summary of the inputs. The full inputs can be seen on our website. And if you also go to the front page of our website, you go to um, the bottom, there's a tab called Documents. You can also click it and you'll see the, um, you'll see the inputs. And then there's also the summary uh, paper, which I'm about to read out. While well, I'm gonna read out our version of it, uh, this one there is for publication. Uh, stakeholders expressed deep appreciation to the government of Germany for hosting a successful IGF. The MAG, under the stewardship of its chair, Ms. Lynn St. Amour, and the IGF Secretariat and UN DESA were also thanked for their contribution in preparing the 14th IGF meeting. Positive feedback towards an effective preparatory process timeline was given. This includes the timely renewal of the MAG 2020 and its chair, the announcement of the next host country, as well as the call for session proposals. Regarding the program structure, many noted as important as successful return of um, the day zero pre-events as it allowed for stronger stakeholder interaction, efforts of the host country to encourage high level stakeholders into meaningful discussion with concrete outputs documents were also praised. Many saw the bottom-up selection of themes and sub-themes for, for, for the IGF 2019 as a good step towards enabling multidisciplinary discussions and a more focused program structure. In addition, many welcomed the innovative legislators track with a concrete follow-up output. A few submissions noted that the process of the selection of workshops lacked transparency. They added that workshop evaluation process lacked expertise, resulting in some topics not being integrated into the program. For example, the environmental impacts of ICTs. Some participants noted challenges in updating the workshop speakers list in regard to the overall workshop organization. Some said that large panels prevented the development of meaningful interactive discussions. Some felt that some sessions lacked diversity, adding that some did not respect scheduled time. Many noted the rise of the IGF's political visibility and its making a stronger global impact due to the presence of the German Chancellor and the United Nations Secretary General, as well as of other high-level stakeholders, including heads of states and governments, leaders of large private companies and non-profit organizations. Of particular importance to many was the legislator's track and engagement of a fair number of parliamentarians from around the world. A positive growth of the overall participation of the IGF 2019 was underlined as important. Many recognize the contribution of the German hosts in this regard as well, through funding participation from developing countries. Some say that a delayed selection process was problematic as it affected the visa processing. The valuable work of the best practice forums, the dynamic coalitions, and the national and regional and youth IGFs has been broadly appreciated, as well as enhanced youth engagement into the overall program. However, some noted that the content of the best practice forums and the dynamic coalition sessions was duplicative in comparison to other sessions. The IGF Village was seen as well equipped and organized. A few inputs noted the splitting the village area into two sections negatively impacted the accessibility of some booths. This also added that they also added that the signage to the village area could have been more clearly displayed. The overall logistics of the meeting received very positive sentiments. Stakeholders appreciated the availability of bilateral rooms as well as free of charge coffee and snack breaks, and a friendly service, and the friendly service of the staff. The water bottle. 
Yes, the water bottles, yes. <laughs> Several inputs underlined the challenges with visas uh, in some developing countries that prevented stakeholders from attending. Now um, I'm going to the second part, which is suggestions and recommendations. Looking forward to the 15th IGF. IGF 2020 should continue the bottom-up, inclusive, thematic approach to the overall program structure. Efforts should be continuously invested to increase the participation of individual stakeholder groups, in particular governments and the private sector, startups, and small and medium, small to medium enterprises. Overall, IGF should strengthen cooperation with other mechanisms related to digital policy. One of the ways this could be done is through fostering discussions on issues of current interest to people in their daily lives, to business, but also global politics. For example, the IGF could focus on climate change and digitalization. An outcome-oriented IGF meeting should be a practice with adopting some of the innovative ways the IGF 2019 host country introduced. For example, the Jimmy Schultz call. The IGF should continue to improve its outcomes and they should be put at the disposal of the wider community. One possible way is utilization of these outcomes or outputs by the MAG and the IGF Secretariat as well as a revisit at the forthcoming IGFs and national and regional initiatives meetings. Linkage, linkages should continue to be improved with the national and regional initiatives, the dynamic coalitions, and the best practice forum networks, as well as with the youth global community. High level participation, including from the head of the host country government and the United Nations Secretary General should be a permanent practice. Given the extended mandate and the government's interest for hosting the IGF, a multi-year strategy could be developed to interlink the annual IGF processes. Stable funding, however, remains a challenge to this. A number of stakeholders referenced uh, to the report on the United Nations Secretary General's high-level panel on digital cooperation and stressed that the IGF should evolve into a stronger mechanism for digital cooperation as the panel proposed. Uh, that's the end of the summary by the Secretary. Thank you very much for that, Shengatai. And I'd like to thank um, every individual and institution that took the time to, to send input um, to this call. It's really extremely important. And I suspect there's actually, the Secretariat has very little time to produce this synthesis. And, and I think that when we process this content, we should uh, also look at some of the original submissions and, and, and draw on them as well, because there's actually a wealth of detail there that we cannot include in a synthesis at such um, short notice. Um, so I now open the floor on... Um, on, before we go into to, uh, sort of, uh, the strategic discussion of the inputs, are there any questions at this point about the synthesis and about the types of submissions um, we received? Any questions for Shangatai before we move into the strategic discussion? Okay. So on that note, I now open um, 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 the floor on um, the, the input received. And if, just, if you refer to the agenda, um, what we want to include in this session are um, three elements. Firstly, um, the comments we received um, on the program, main theme and sub-themes, proposals for, for, for new themes, um, session types and format, um, then also comments on the intersessional activities. We haven't heard much about them, but they are in, in the IG, they're reflected in the, in the outputs. And then also comments on day zero and suggestions um, for improvement. Um, MAG members, we will have time to revisit this in, in greater detail at this point. Um, I think, however, it might be quite useful um, to look at 
the outputs. We'll discuss the outcomes and the outputs um, this afternoon as well. But Shengitai, could you perhaps just um, give us a brief overview of, of what, the, the, what the outputs were of the Berlin um, IGF? There's actually a very useful web page um, that looks at those different outputs. And what's useful about it is it reflects that there are different types of outputs. Um, I wonder if we can bring that page up. Luis, are you able to do that? It's clusters, the outputs. It has host country outputs. Um, that's it. I just want to review them quickly. Actually, Shane Tai, you don't have to. I'll just go over it. It's, it's uh, self-explanatory. Um, so when we consider the input, um, some of the inputs we always receive relates to outputs. I find this is quite useful because the IGF is evolving into a, a, a continuously more outcome-oriented process. So what we have are the Berlin IGF messages. Um, those are outputs of the IGF. The draft chair summary, summary um, and then there are video highlights and there are press releases. I'm not sure what exactly is under um, see more. And those messages were constructed um, around the tracks, the three tracks of the IGF. 2019, which were, um, let me see if I can remember them correctly, data governance, um, security, safety, stability, thanks, Louise, um, and digital um, inclusion. Um, and then we have the intersessional work outputs as well. Um, and we have, um, that, that, those are the, the um, dynamic coalitions and best practice forms. We also had in Berlin host government outputs, the Jimmy Schultz call, um, the elements of SMEs um, charter, and the summary of the high-level meeting. We also have participant outputs, and those are the sessions, uh, session reports that uh, session organizers compile um, after the IGF. And then various process outputs. Um, Louise, can you just click on that? So we can just um, have a the ne various, the next bullet point, various process outputs, because I can't remember what that is. Okay, that's just a, a, a listing of all the, the different types of, of outputs. And then we also had through the partnership um, um, between the host country and the Geneva Internet Platform and Diplo Foundation, we also had the daily briefs and the just-in-time reports. Um, but let, let's go back to the stock taking inputs and, um, and, and review them. And if you can also cast your memories back to the, to the um, open mic session, some of the inputs that were received there as well. But let's focus on the stock taking input received in response to the call we put out in December. I open the floor. So we have um, Ben, we have Jim. Um, ben, you have the floor, and others, please um, use the, the queuing system to join. Thank you. I think I'm on now. Um, thank you, Henriette. So I, I was a little slow off the mark, and I did have a question to Chengatai, um, but I, I will also offer some, some comments as well. Um, I think so. The stock taking was partly a call for issues, and I remember last year we used that as an indication of what could be the, the themes and sub themes to be covered um, during uh, under the meeting program to help us structure the meeting program for 2019. Um, there seemed to be a few comments about additional topics that we covered, um, but not a big um, discussion since this paper about. Um, at, summarizing a call, um, a response to a call for inputs. So I just wonder whether we take this as, as our only uh, input to, to thinking about what topics to cover in 2020 and, and how to structure. But that was partly a question. Um, so linked to that, just some initial comments. I thought um, the, the three thematic tracks um, worked very well. I would say it was a good innovation because I've only been working with the ITF for uh, three or four years, but I understand it was kind of a, a reversion to a, a way of working from a number of years ago. 
but I felt that having three thematic tracks um, was, a, was a helpful way of organizing, uh, an organizational tool for the program um, and, and a good way of explaining to people what, um, what the meeting would cover. I understood from a, a colleague anecdotally that he felt it led to fewer conflicts um, for him because clearly if you're interested in, in a certain area of internet governance issues and not others, then it allows you to focus on those. Um, so I thought that was something it would be worth continuing with. Um, as to what the thematic track should be, I, I find it hard to, to, uh, to see how we would come up with anything completely different. Th those three um, tracks seem to capture a lot of the relevant issues. I noted with interest uh, in the synthesis document that there were uh, some topics that, that stakeholders called for um, room in the program for. Um, I thought it was particularly interesting that several suggestions about uh, the environment, so that could be about the impact of ICTs and the impact of digitization on the environment from a negative perspective. It could also be about how digitization and emerging technologies can can help to deal with issues like climate change. So I'm not sure quite how that would fit into the three thematic tracks we had, but I can see uh, how that could be interesting as well. So I just leave that there as um, some opening comments. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, yes, that's correct. We didn't have that, that many distinct um, issues uh, being um, specifically spelt out. Uh, we did have um, digital transformation, digital skills, digital economy, trust and security, new and emerging technologies, uh, digitalization and climate change, as I mentioned in the, in the summary readout, and the environmental impact of ICTs. So, I mean, we can uh, cluster them a little bit more. Yeah. But, yeah. Yes, thanks for that question, Ben. I also had a similar question, and, and I, I do think we could, you know, we could look at the, the inputs, but it does seem as if there's general support for the idea of tracks in principle. I don't think there's any question about that. I think people felt that the three tracks of 2019 were relevant, and, and based on this, I think what, you, what is appearing as, in fact, I see only two issues really emerging as a request for additional or new emphasis or different emphasis, and that is um, skills and um, climate change, environmental impact, um, because uh, security and, and, and trust was covered by last year. Um, new and emerging technologies, I think, is, is uh, I'm not quite sure what was meant by that, um, um, but it is a, it's a cross-cut, I think, that, that applies to everything we do at the IGF. Um, so I think it is going to be for the MAG to decide whether we consider the input on thematic content received in response to this call as sufficient or whether we should put uh, out a further call. So it would be useful for you to begin to, to reflect on that because I think it's a valid question that you raised, Ben. So um, let's continue. Um, next we have Jim. Go. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Prendergast with the Galway Strategy Group. Um, I am not a MAG member, but I am a frequent participant in MAG meetings and MAG calls. Um, over the course of my involvement with the IGF, you know, there's been a debate and um, uh, calls for more outputs, more concrete outputs coming from the IGF. And I just want to note that the, um, the organization of the outputs from the IGF in Berlin, the way that was done by the staff of the Secretariat on an almost real-time basis was very impressive. I think it goes a long way in answering those calls from people wanting to see more outputs and concrete outcomes from the IGF. Um, what, it, I, what it certainly does is it helps organize that information and puts it in a much easier place to find. Um, so I do think this is a, an improvement over, the, over years past and it's something I think uh, should be continued going forward. I think it really does address a lot of the questions and concerns about, you know, maybe some, we're not doing the best job marketing the IGF and everything that we do, but this one page with all that information there is a great innovation. So congratulations. Thanks. Um, thanks, Jim. Before I give the floor to Jorge, that's a good opportunity to thank Wai Min, 
who led that process, and Sam Dickinson, I'm not sure if she's participating remotely or not, um, and the Secretariat, um, and the team of consultants working with the Secretariat. Who did, it was rather a crazy process. I was part of it myself, um, as I was a consultant to the Secretariat last year. So it's really good to hear that, that it added value. Thanks for that, Jim. Um, Jorge, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Andriette, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jorge Cancio from the Swiss Federal Office of Communications from Switzerland. So first of all, of course, uh, thanks to Germany as host country for 2019, to the MAG, to the IJF Secretariat, to UNDESA, to all those who made uh, Berlin uh, possible. I think that Berlin really uh, stepped the, the IGF process uh, um, higher in uh, its accomplishments. So I think that Poland has a very good basis on where to start on. All the innovations, all the improvements we have been witnessing during the, the last years. We have made a, an input to this uh, stock taking, so anyone who is interested, I recommend you to, to look at it. I will spare you to uh, me reading it through, but I would like to highlight in a very concise fashion, I hope, uh, some of the points. The first one is, uh, I think we made very good progress and we still can improve it on uh, the political visibility. And one essential point there, I think, is uh, this uh, um, speech from the UN Secretary General, which is answered in a way by the host country president or head of government. So that's kind of a tradition we are building. And I think that uh, Katowice would be a great place to continue with that. And uh, in our input, we have uh, said that this could be uh, a sort of a state of the internet or a state of digital cooperation address by the Secretary General and uh, the answer by the host country. So I think that's, uh, that would be a very important. Secondly, um, uh, we saw in Berlin uh, ra uh, rising of the high-level leaders uh, segment. I think that uh, that's also a very fertile ground where we can build on. And it would be really great if the discussions of the high-level segment really build on the outcomes of Berlin. So if we have discussions in Katowice that they really refer back to what was discussed in Berlin, and hopefully that there are also direct linkages to the intercessional work by the BPFs, by the dynamic coalitions, by the NRIs. So I would love to see our ministers discussing, for instance, the outcome document by the cybersecurity BPF and so on and so forth. So that because this um, raises, it's a win-win solution to raising both the relevance of the high-level segment discussions and of the BPFs and intercessional work formats. Of course, the parliamentarians track in Berlin already went at great lengths to, to increase this political visibility and also these linkages with the work done by the community. This leads me to my third point on outputs. Of course, uh, we saw with uh, great interest and also with a lot of uh, satisfaction that Germany uh, uh, continued the tradition started at the 2017 IGF of uh, having messages. I think that uh, that is uh, worth continuing and hopefully we have Katowice messages. Also uh, together, as uh, was uh, uh, also mentioned by Andriet, 
with a, a better presentation, a more visible presentation of all the outputs from the, from the meeting. And of course, again, uh, if we can improve the linkages between those outputs and what has been done the year before and what has been done in the intersessional work by the different layers of um, cooperation networks, uh, the better. My fourth point is that we also have, uh, we also have a lot of experience now with uh, the information sources, with the summaries of the meetings, with uh, orientation that is being given to, to the participants to the meetings and participants to the intersessional work. So if we can still improve and strengthen the interconnection between those information sources and orientation sources and what we are doing intersessionally and at the annual meeting. This would go at great length to fulfill this recommendation of having observatories, help desks, and I imagine that the best way to go about it is to have a sort of a network of those sources. And the uh, uh, last before the the last point is uh, topics, uh, of course, which uh, are relevant to the wider public. And Katowice being the, the venue for the 2018 Climate Change Conference is, of course, a perfect place to put in climate change and its interaction because it's not only negative, it can be positive with digitization at the center of the uh, international internet governance agenda. And uh, of course, I would recommend that we continue with the practice of the, of the call of issues where we can uh, further refine the, the issues which are burning at the tips of the fingers of, of everyone. And finally, of course, um, uh, a modest offer as former host country and also as a host country of all the organizations which are here in Geneva. We'd love to continue or to work with you as we've done with France and with Germany in the last years. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jorge. Um, Maria Paz, um, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I'm Maria Paz Canales. Uh, Executive Director of Veritas Digitales, uh, representing civil society from GRULAC here in the MAG for second year. Um, I first want to thank you again, here, <laughs> I first want to thank you again to the German government uh, for the wonderful event that we have and all the efforts of uh, working hard over the whole year with the MAG in the improvements that we were able to implement, including the innovations in the way in which the uh, session uh, were organized, the, the three tracks that have been mentioned and the inclusion of this high level meeting uh, at the zero day. I think that those are uh, things that commonly we can hear in all the inputs, either in person during the event or in the consultation that just took place, that are things that are commonly recognized by the community as improvement for, for the last version of the IGF. And I think that uh, particularly the lead in, in the organization of the high-level meeting in the uh, day zero, uh, it was fundamental the lead that the, the German government as host uh, had in, in that happening and also um, the representative of uh, the German civil society organization that also collaborate and work really hard uh, jointly with the government in make that happen. That uh, being said, uh, precisely I want to start my comment, my input, uh, considering this, even this was a, a, a huge improvement we always can be a little bit more ambitious and try to uh, uh, perfect what it's already good. And one of the things that I have heard uh, or have read in the inputs and also resonate with my comments, uh, my own comments, is that we should 
uh, do a better work in the next version of this high-level meeting for the IGF 2020 in connecting the, the happening of the high-level meeting with the rest of the event. There was a, a feeling in, 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 in some of the participants that they didn't have enough information about what was going on in the high-level meeting and uh, how the participant of the high-level meeting was selected and, and uh, I understand the challenges in identifying the relevant participants from the different sectors but now that we have the experience of the first version I think that as a MAG uh, we should work more supporting the host government in, in trying to uh, implement some improvements in that uh, task of uh, identification of the participant in advance because uh, that will provide much more transparency and balance in the participation of the, in the, in the high level meeting. Um, then I want to comment uh, regarding the topic inclusion that also have been mentioned in many of the comments. I agree with uh, Madam Chair that uh, the main uh, subject matter topic that is missing probably uh, from the current discussion of the IGF that is mentioned in several of the, of the submission is the ICT and environmental issues, which is something that is mainstream uh, around the global discussion about technology and the internet. But also uh, something that has been commented also in, in, the, in the MAG lease regarding the inclusion of conversation about new business models in, in, in digital economy. Uh, there is a BPF that have been proposed in that topic and I think that uh, in, in several submission and my comment myself, I want to contribute to support the idea of that being considered. Finally, another thing that I, I, I see uh, in some of the comments and, and submissions and also resonate with my own experience um, working as a a uh, co-facilitator of the Gender and Access BPF is the issue about gender diversity and how to make the policies and practices and protocols of the IGF uh, more friendly for, for people uh, of uh, different uh, uh, gender diversities and uh, this includes the issues about real name policy, have a code of conduct that uh, allows people to feel more safe. Uh, there was uh, some unfortunate incidents regarding the safety of some of the participants that were linked with the fact that they are more uh, sensitive to gender-based violence uh, situation in their uh, home countries. So, um, in some sense, uh, to try to improve those are, are, are uh, things that have been developed in other kind of meetings and, and conference. Uh, so I think that is an easy improvement that we could consider for this year. And, and finally, uh, regarding the organizing of the uh, overall event in terms of the workshop session and the different intersessional work, uh, also something that resonates with me from the comment and I want to highlight it's try to make a better connection uh, between the work of the NRIs uh, in terms of uh, identification of subject matters that are relevant to include in the, in the IGF. I know the, uh, there is a, a specific main session for them and uh, uh, Anya and, and in general all the secretariat have been doing a wonderful job uh, collecting the input of the NRIs for including in the global IGF. But I think that also uh, this input could be tried to be gathered in an earlier stage in order to inform more the decision making of the MAG about the selection of the topics. Uh, so in that way we connect better to the discussion that are happening on the ground and around, and around the world. So I will leave it there. Ah, no. Just the last thing, the small thing, is I think that we will have time to discuss it later during this uh, meeting, but I just want to pose uh, the question and, and highlight the challenge that implied to identify and include new topics, but at the, at, at the same time to understand that probably the three tracks topics that we had last year will keep being relevant. So just uh, how to creatively uh, leverage on that without necessarily repeat the same topics and being able to include new ones. It will be something very challenging for us as MAG and I invite you uh, all from day one to think about how we can uh, confront this challenge. 
Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, lots of um, work and thought in that input, Maria Paz. Next, I give the floor to vote. Uh, thank you, Henrietta. Um, just as a reminder, yeah, over the past years, uh, a past year, I worked on a pilot project that I and Meg agreed to in January last year on the implementation of internet standards, which will make the internet a lot safer once deployed by industry and others. Uh, I will present on that on Thursday, so I will not go into the content, but share some of the experiences that are actually valuable to this discussion at this point. Um, as a other reminder, this pilot came forward from the work in uh, the MAC working group and that produced a report called the Strengthening Cooperation Within the Context of the IGF. And some of the recommendations there actually have never truly been discussed in the MAG. It's, it, it was presented on but never reflected on. And some of the comments made now give rise to maybe do that in this year or at least for 2021. Um, because what's in there are some recommendations on how to actually structure topics in a better way. And what we've been hearing is that we've had a best practice forum on cybersecurity, but at the same time we have all these, all these workshops on cybersecurity, and for some reason they don't really seem to interact in a serious way. So how can you actually integrate some processes? And the same will go for the topics that were mentioned now. We can have 10 different workshops with maybe even the same people within those workshops discussing on how important the topic is, or we could use the four or five days that we actually have, bring these brilliant minds together on the topic, maybe even because of that, bring other people in that would usually not be at the IGF and come up with some sort of recommendations of further work that actually needs to be done for 2021 to 20. 2022. So if the MAC would actually be able to, to cluster and structure some of these proposals and perhaps say to people, there's the best practice forum on topic X. And if you want to hold a workshop, you will have to work with the best practice forum to do that. And in that way, instead of having 20 or 25 people working on the best practice forum the whole year, you maybe get to have 100. And may, who knows what happens there. And it could be an experiment. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does work, you will actually strengthen the IGF in a major way, going towards this IGF plus model that people have been talking about in the past months. So, th so that is one. And a, a great example of that is actually what happened with the parliamentarians. They were brought to the IGF in a very successful way. They had about 150 attending, I understand. And they came up with the Jimmy Schultz call just by bringing them together and preparing it in a, in, a, in a good way, have the workshop and actually on the, on the final day, you can see all these parliamentarians being enlightened to the topic. And then I come back to my project because I've reached out to parliamentarians that integrated very well with my project with the, the, the reach out for the IGF. But the first reactions I got was let's say, why do I have to go to a, to a con conference that do, does technical things on the internet. So in other words, why do I have to be there as a politician? And when you start explaining and ask them, but what are the topics that are of, re of relevance to you? And you can say, oh, we have a workshop on that and that and that, and you can attend there and actually participate in an active way. And that's one when their mind started to change. And to go back to my own country in the Netherlands, it only took two sessions with a parliamentarian, and they're going to be asked, government uh, questions to the government from parliament why is nothing being done on these internet standards that they're actually taking more seriously and not just voluntarily that took two sessions of a half hour so in other words that's the way you can influence another part i would like to and then we talk about reach out I already heard that the polish government is willing to do reach out more to parliamentarians again in 2020 my question is is there a willingness to reach out to some of the stakeholders that are underrepresented or not represented at all at the IGF. Because when I was started working on my project on the implementation of standards, I literally was told the IGF is a place where nothing happens, where only people talk, so why would I put any effort into your project? In other words, when we try to do something different, <laughs> they stay away because they don't think it ever will change. 
And that has to do with, with some of the quality of the work that people refer to. It has to do with some level of trust, that they don't trust this environment to actually produce something. And some just say, we don't interact with the IGF, and leading to not giving any valuable input at all. So in other words, there's a world to win when we start reaching out more actively to these sort of stakeholders that see the IGF at this point in time as not relevant. And that comes back to strengthening cooperation, because that sort of effort leads to a better, a better way to, to, to interact with other stakeholders. And yes, it takes effort, it takes time, it probably will take some money as well, but it's something which in the end is worthwhile, because 2019 proved anything, it is that things do can change and will change if you make the effort. And I will present on the content on Thursday, and believe me, there are some very interesting things we found in just two months of work. So thank you very much for your time and listening. And um, thank you for that vote. Um, next, we have Raul Echeverria, who is a remote participant. Raul, introduce yourself, please. Hi, I don't know if you, if you hear me. We can hear you. The volume could go up a little bit, but we can hear you. Maybe okay, we should perfect. use our headsets to hear you more clearly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Red. Uh, congratulations for being chairing this, uh, this first uh, MAG meeting. And I wish you all the success. I'm sure you will have a very successful um, role as a chair of the, of the MAG. Um, okay, I already um, submitted my comments uh, in the, um, to the open consultation, so I invite you to read the, the, the comments that are available. I will not repeat all the things that have been already said by other colleagues. I, I share the, the, the overall concept that the meeting in Berlin was very good, that there were a lot of progresses, facilities were extremely good, and there were a lot of innovations that were very positive in the, for, for the meeting. And um, one of the good things uh, was the, the introduction of the, the policy questions uh, to guide the, the submission of workshop pro proposals um, that helped very much to have an idea, give an idea to the community about the, the purposes of the, of the workshops and what uh, was expected to be discussed and in, the, in the workshops and how the workshops could contribute to the overall discussions of the, of the themes that were selected. The, the workshops, uh, the, the submission processes was a little complicated. Uh, there is, a, I agree with um, some uh, concepts that were included in the, in the report from Chengetai that um, there are some claims that to add more transparency, more clarity to the process to select the workshops. And one important thing I think that also uh, is um, uh, related with the legitimacy of, the, of all the processes is that, that there, is a, there is people that uh, that seems that always get their workshops uh, approved. And while the, the, the rules changes and there are more, it's uh, supposedly more uh, ideas and more uh, measures to promote the, the, the uh, proposals from newcomers, that uh, is also give the, the impression that uh, some people understand, have learned very, very well how to, to deal with this kind of processes. And, and continue being an advantage for the insiders of the of the process. Speaking about the the the, the meeting as a, and the overall structure and schedule, I think that uh, it's a time to introduce big changes. And as soon as some decisions can be taken, for example, in this meeting, it's as better. The there there were already comments on the high level panel, and Jorge Cancio from the Swiss government uh, proposed to link the discussion of the, at the high level uh, session uh, to the outcomes of the, of the previous year and to the outcomes of the interstitial work. This is a very good approach. I think it's a very workable that will be a, 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 a relevant uh, uh, improvement. But uh, we can also do more. And, and we can, if we move the high level uh, discussion, the high level session to the end of the meeting instead of having it at the beginning, so we could use that, that, uh, that session to discuss not only the outcomes of the previous year or, or the interstitial work, but the outcomes of the tracks, the tracks composed by workshops and uh, main sessions the, the, of the meeting itself. So it would be a, 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 good, um, a good way 
to, to round the discussion, to close the discussion of the IGF every year. Maria Paz proposed also to add more transparency about the participants, the speakers, how they are selected. And this is a big challenge because we need a uh, kind of ambiguity in those processes to make, the, to make them work. But we already learned how to do it uh, in, in Net Mundial in 2014. We have been discussing, we have been speaking five years about the success of Net Mundial and, and the things that we achieved there. But we have not uh, um, adopted yet some of the practices that we learned from that meeting. And we should uh, conduct that high level session in a in kind of uh, Net Mundial style because we, we knew how to do it, how to invite the people, how to select the participants, how to uh, conduct the discussion, how to prepare the materials in advance, everything. Uh, so this is about the high level session. And the other other improvements that I propose for the meeting is I I, I congratulate the MAC for, the, for achieving a, a significant reduction of the number of workshops in 2019. I think that we still uh, uh, have to reduce uh, the, the continue reducing the number of workshops and to avoid the discussion, uh, to avoid, sorry, the competition between the workshops and May sessions. So to organize the, the, the workshops and May sessions in different times during the meeting. So, so we, so we um, um, have different roles for the workshops and May sessions. At this moment, it seems that the main session is just a kind of workshop that is being held in a bigger room. And we should um, establish a, a, a difference. Workshops are, are, are meetings, are self-organized meetings in a bottom-up manner that contribute to create the, 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 the skills, to contribute to, to inform the people in the discussion. And main sessions should be the place where we, we hold the open discussion among all the stakeholders about specific issues. So we, it would be very good in my view if we can uh, hold uh, workshops and main sessions at uh, a different time. Um, thank you very much. And thank you very much um, for that, Raul. And uh, you know, as as we proceed, the the the, the shopping list, list gets more and more complicated. But also, it's really good to get concrete suggestions, which we've also had. And Paul Verhagen, you have the floor. Here, um, my name is Paul Verhagen. I'm with a think tank based in the Netherlands called the Hague Center for Strategic Studies. And I would like to combine two strands that were mentioned earlier by our uh, colleague from Switzerland, as well as uh, Mr. Dinatris here, which is the need for a stockholding, a visual representation, as well as the interlinkages between different components of internet governance. Um, I think all of us are aware that there are many pro uh, products to be read, many reports to be read. Uh, this requires quite a lot of time. And to that end, within the context of the Global Commission on Cyberspace, or GCSC, developed a tool, and I will put up a small prop, that uh, is supposed to measure the propagation of norms within cyberspace, uh, the propagation of norms, principles, confidence building measures, initiatives, etc. And it speaks exactly to these elements of interlinkages, of clustering, of structures, of what kind of stakeholders actually live within the space that we're trying to operate. And we found it to be quite a valuable tool to actually show which parties would have synergy in working together which parties would benefit from adopting norms from other parties. Um, it is based on a text mining and a social network analysis, so to that extent it is also partially automated. Um, and I would just like to propose this tool as a useful strategic instrument um, and invite anyone that is interested in looking at how this tool is implemented to please come talk to us in the break. Uh, we are more than happy to uh, elaborate on this. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thanks, Paul. Um, I really encourage anyone who's interested in how one, one deals with the plethora of data in the sector to, to during the lunch break, to, to ask for a demonstration. I had the privilege of seeing a dem demonstration of this tool. So um, anyone who's interested, uh, make some time with the, with the Hague Institute people to have a look at that. It's a really interesting, irris irrespective of whether uh, it's linked to the IGF or not, it's a really useful tool. Um, next we have Raquel. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, uh, as well as the, the previous speakers, uh, the Internet Society has also uh, submitted a formal written contribution, so there is no point on repeating it at length. Um, I just want to make a very succinct highlights on 
some of the three um, takeaways that we had from the past IGF and uh, looking ahead at uh, this year 2020 preparations. Um, first of all, um, I'm sure that German has expressed many times that uh, enough things, but uh, <laughs> it's never enough. It's uh, uh, compared to the efforts put to make this I the IGF 2019 um, um, a wonderful remark, uh, an impressive event. Uh, and it's not putting behind the, others, uh, the other host countries, uh, but it, it's really the effort to deliver the promises made and going beyond. And uh, also to welcome Poland um, as um, it's going in the same uh, good direction and uh, to have even a stronger IGF. So thank you very much once more. Um, in terms of um, more the program and the, the, the agenda um, shaping, um, it's important to, to also recognize that um, uh, this IGF brought visible uh, improvements to crystallize uh, the, its relevance. Um, I can name six, and I'm sure that there were uh, much more read by Shanghai and the others, but uh, fewer thematic tracks less parallel sessions, more cohesive agenda shaping, outreach efforts to new stakeholder groups, for example, the parliamentarians, and increased attendance, the higher ever, um, and of course, uh, more clear outputs. And, um, and as we celebrate those improvements and as we learn that it can be made and a few steps can take us a very long way, um, it's also good to look into the new challenges and uh, what can still be improved. Uh, conscious of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it short, uh, just to mention that um, the streamline of the intersessional activities is really important. Uh, the intersessional activities such as the BPFs, the dynamic coalitions, the NIRs, uh, um, they, are, they are important and they should continue to be nurtured, streamlined and strengthened. But as we do, for example, separate sessions during um, the, the IGF itself, uh, it might compromise some of the substantive discussions. Um, and so I would welcome and, and, and I would uh, uh, recommend to the, the, the MAG to consider integrating that further with the program uh, to deliver in a, even in stronger outputs. Um, in terms of also the post-workshop follow-up, as we have now a more um, clear and uh, a, more, a stronger methodology for the selection of the workshops, uh, it might be the time to look uh, on how to, to follow up uh, some of the uh, gray uh, areas of uh, good workshops or, or with good potential and how uh, the MAG and community can contribute to make them uh, into the program, either because they are treating a very specific uh, topic or either because, um, for example, uh, they are new proponents uh, at the IGF for the first time and don't understand how to make it uh, a good uh, workshop proposal. Um, and um, last but not least in, in this uh, point is also uh, to recognize again uh, the good uh, point that uh, Poland is bringing uh, to, uh, to uh, increase youth participation. I think we all heard on site uh, in Berlin uh, their stronger voices and uh, to take one of their um, their lines, uh, they are not the future, they are here, they are the present, and so it's good to see that this is being taken into account. Um, and finally, in terms of the impact, and uh, it has been mentioned uh, for, for the IGF, uh, um, the intertwined discussions with the HLPDC follow-up, uh, the HLPDC report follow-up, and uh, in particular the, H, uh, the IGF Plus. Uh, it is reassuring to have the message directly from the UN Secretary General uh, endorsing the importance of the IGF. And it's the moment also for uh, the IGF community and for the, the, the MAG to consider uh, in its work stepping up and, and see how uh, we can bring this uh, wonderful example based on principles of multi-stakeholder bottom-up, inclusive participations that the IGF is all about to this work going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. Um, Roman, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear colleagues. This is a great pleasure and honor to be here with you. Um, hopefully we start this new year with uh, new energy, new approaches, and uh, I would like to really thank on behalf of uh, Russia, the German host, I think it was an uh, amazing organization, and we wish really good luck to our friends from Poland. 
and we are, of course, are, uh, as always, committed to help uh, and so to provide any necessary uh, uh, instrumentation, knowledge, expertise to the Secretariat and to the host country to help. Uh, so here in the MAC, I represent government. Uh, in the real uh, life, uh, I represent civil society. I am one of those who convene uh, for more than 11 years the young people across the globe to unite against climate change, corruption, uh, cyber security, future of work, and so on. And uh, I really love this, and uh, I'm also the youth G20 Sherpa of Russia. At the same time here, uh, within the IJF process, I would like to work as um, the one who uh, work on the IJF mandate. So clearly on global internet governance. And we have impression also from the last forum that we really do lack discussing the internet governance. And uh, we would like to <laughs> get back on track and discuss uh, global internet governance. And uh, we really uh, like the work from uh, the high level panel on digital cooperation. We hope that on the next sessions we will uh, hear in more detail uh, how we can con contribute and uh, work further. But uh, with regard to the sessions, uh, we would like to discuss best practices on how nations uh, implement new regulations and uh, national uh, legislation. Uh, best practice forum, uh, I think, would better serve for, like, for this, to actually share best practices and compare how countries deal with cyber attacks, how they protect their citizens' data, how they, uh, again, implement uh, legislation and so on. That's why I don't quite understand still, with my second year in MAC, uh, what do we have uh, on uh, BPFs and uh, DCs and so on, as it was mentioned in uh, Cengitai's comment from uh, um, feedback, uh, that sometimes they really duplicate the um, uh, program sessions. And uh, program sessions are really too much. Uh, if you see the program schedule, you do not understand where to go. Uh, we really uh, like the uh, German approach to uh, narrow it down to three tracks. We did it as well in the G20 process. It's a good practice, but at the same time, uh, what we had in the result was like, basically similar sessions divided in three separate tracks. So and let's better have one good session on cyber security, one good session on data security or something, yes? One good session on global internet governance. Please, of course, you know, environment and uh, smart cities is very important, but <laughs> maybe like UN Habitat or UNEP or a better platforms to discuss uh, such aspects, but here, here to discuss internet governance. And um, you can look also to the best practice of uh, such uh, huge uh, events like World Economic Forum, which is about to start next week uh, in Davos. The new approach from this year is that they uh, decrease the amount of sessions and they decrease the amount of speakers. So you can check the program. It's now available on the website. You will see it's uh, like very, very uh, less this time. The same approach we follow in Russia when we organize the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum and so on. And we are actually ready to host several sessions related to IGF. So we call to Poland to unite uh, efforts. We propose to cooperate during our national IGF in April. We invite everybody because we are open and inclusive and would like to uh, have as many our MAC members and uh, different stakeholders as possible. Also, um, I was first time evaluating the uh, workshops as well as proposing the workshops. So I was able to compare uh, both sides. Uh, and I'm no, not happy with uh, either of them because uh, as uh, one of those who proposed the workshop, uh, I didn't understand the feedback. Also, as one of those who evaluated, I just saw that we had a lot of work, a lot of material. We did not have a chance to actually discuss uh, like this or that session could be better or maybe we should split this session and unite several proposals. Uh, maybe uh, actually Mark can serve as the program committee of the forum. Maybe we can actually discuss the topics. Uh, maybe we can discuss the proposals of the workshop and not just blindly put so, some uh, marks. Because I was very uh, loyal, you know. Uh, all my marks were like uh, 4.7, 4.8, uh, 5. <laughs> when I received the uh, evaluation of my workshop, it was like 2.7 or something. Those speakers were from HLPDC, 
from uh, European Union, uh, from uh, like IGF and, and so on, you know. Uh, maybe it was a national criteria. Maybe we should not show that like Russia is proposing this event and th that's how uh, the event would uh, score five out of five. I don't know, because actually uh, we had a very um, represented delegation in this forum and all of them. Previously I participated so several years, but, uh, and I thought it's only my impression, but this time all people from uh, Russia uh, with whom I exchanged opinions thought that it was too much uh, of negative towards one certain country on many sessions. In which session you go, uh, like this, uh, misinformation or something, uh, they discuss one country. We do not uh, feel like this is a UN spirit. We do not um, feel that in some ECOSOC uh, sessions, NGOs or governments would discuss uh, some specific countries with such disrespect and uh, not uh, in a dignified way. So we would like, of course, to um, have it in a more balanced, more respectful and more dignity way. Uh, with regard to um, also transparency of uh, booth allocation, uh, we would like to say that we were happy to receive a notification like a week before the event that we can still have it because somebody refused, but if we received it a little bit early, it would be much more appreciated. And I think that Mark can also play some role in uh, allocation of the booth as well as the session. So yes, just to put it in a nutshell, uh, we believe that uh, we should have more uh, wor work from Mac on the topics. Maybe we should just, from, w w maybe we should just split uh, the um, work workshops um, call for, uh, like, first we receive topics, maybe then we'll work among ourselves which topics we want to have at the forum with our host country. Then uh, we compare the descriptions of these topics without speakers at this stage. Then we can all together decide which speakers would fit these or that sessions. When we can ch check the geogra uh, geographical diversity, gender diversity, every other form of diversity we would like to check and uh, to make sure that all the discussions are relevant for the mandate of the IJ, which is our main uh, concern. And uh, I think that uh, many people share this uh, opinion as we really spoke with many people. So let me just say it openly. Uh, and uh, I would like to have some real actions uh, to make IJF uh, a UN uh, body, which, is, which has a mandate, which will make a real change for the better world because internet is actually something which unites us, the, the hugest uh, network, and let's make it really uh, sustainable and let's do our job. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, thanks for that. And um, Carlos Afonso, you have the floor. Hello, uh, yes. Carlos Afonso from Instituto Nopef in Brazil. Um, Thank you, Andrea. Maybe to introduce yourself. Yes. That's what, that was it, As Carlos Mag Afonso from Instituto Nopef. How, how long have you been on the MAG and how long do you have left? Since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I am about 75 years old and <laughs> even before, that's right. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ariet. In general, I agree with uh, Raul's suggestions, in, in particular, very good suggestions and several other good suggestions which we don't have time here to repeat. But there is an element which I would like to suggest regarding the workshops. I was one of the uh, readers of the workshops in 2019. I found several which refer to excellent issues, but the proposals were, were formulated in a way which would not allow them to pass the quantitative tests. They wouldn't get enough population marks to be selected. In some cases, we managed to propose the joining together of proposals, but this was not enough to capture good ideas which got lost because of poor formulation according to the proposed evaluation methodology. I would suggest we start very early with the workshops, even earlier than we did in 2019, so that we could have time to deal with them with the approach of thesis advisor, not the approach of an uh, uh, examination board, giving them some time to reformulate to pass the quantitative ritual. 
This would do a lot for transparency in the process. Thank you. Um, thank you very much um, um, to, to, to Carlos and to, to everyone else. Um, um, you know, beep, beep, I'm, I'm trying to keep um, some, some, some sort of summary of key points, but I'd like to invite comments. Um, there's no one else on the floor right now. Comments on day zero. We haven't actually had any feedback um, specifically on day zero other than on some of the high level sessions. So um, it would be good to get your, your feedback. On, on, on the day zero event in Berlin. Any remarks, any reflections? It, I think if I'm correct, it's the, it, we had more events on um, 2019 day zero than ever before. Is that correct, Shangatai? Yes. Can you give us numbers? <laughs> I think we had about 50 or 53 events. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think what stood out as really significant in Berlin is that you had the normal IGF community members who used Day Zero as a core part of their work and to take discussions forward on particular issues. But then we also had Day Zero also reflected the, the involvement of German stakeholders and organizing events that, that, that are relevant to them. So I think um, Rudolf sometimes uses the, the concept of a narrative um, around the Berlin IGF, and I have the sense that, that, that Day Zero really was a key component of that narrative. Can I give you the floor, please, Rudolf? <laughs> yes. Um, it, it is true that um, it was very important for us to, to uh, build up from the very outset an awareness and a sense of um, ownership and participation within the German um, broader IGF community and that uh, culminated somehow in the um, involvement that we um, could witness on day zero from uh, stakeholders, uh, from all the stakeholder groups um, on very different issues. And uh, the nice thing was that uh, on day zero we, we could somehow uh, manage to have um, these German IGF community members coming on board at the same time as the high level people and also the, let's say, normal IGF usual um, community and the, and the MAG members. So, uh, and, and, that was, and that was a little bit, I'll say, the, the, the starting point for this um, one world, <laughs> one, one, one net, one vision um, that we had in our minds that everybody came together, but um, from a bottom-up approach at the same time with a high-level component, perhaps. Thanks very much for that, Rudolf. Um, Jim, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Jim Prendergast. So, um, you know, one of the things I think I find unique about Day Zero is because it's under the purview of the host country, it's a little different every year. Each country tends to put their own mark on it. Um, so there are some, you know, uh, events that are consistently on Day Zero. GigaNet comes to mind, they use that, as you said, they use that to further their work. Um, and I think the, the freedom and flexibility that comes with day zero is, is something that we should continue. Um, however, I think one of the things I think the MAG should be thinking about um, as it looks at day zero is that you know, day zero has taken on a lot more significance recently than it has in the past. High level uh, meetings, you know, uh, uh, CEOs of big corporations, luminaries in the internet industry coming in. Um, but it's also resource intensive as well. And I think there needs to be um, just a, a look at what, what is happening on day zero, how can it be further integrated into the overall program of the IGF, and what, if any, support does the Secretariat give or can be giving to help strengthen those synergies between day zero and what's happening throughout the rest of the week. Thanks. Yes, that's absolutely um, true. And I think the, the reality is also that day zero is, to some extent, a response to the workshop selection process. Mm -hmm. And that people who feel they have really important uh, discussions to have at the IGF, whose workshop proposals are rejected, uh, can still find a way of doing that um, through, not the only, but do, do it through day zero. It is important, however, to remember that day zero is not organized by the MAG. 
It's not organized by the host country, although there is a component of it, that is. Shengatai, do you want to just review the shape um, of day zero for yeah, everyone's I just want to, uh, There seems to be some um, confusion with terms. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that, yes, for day zero, there's uh, the day zero sessions that we have, and then there's also the high-level leaders meeting. And so the high-level leaders meeting is the purview of the host country, and it's, it's up to them to come up with the theme and how they're going to do it, and they also do so in consultation with UNDESA. Um, the day zero sessions, um, those pass through the IGF secretariat. Now, um, for the day zero, we, we don't want day zero to be a place where if your workshop gets rejected, you come and get a session in day zero. Uh, that's definitely not the case. If your workshop gets rejected, it gets rejected. Um, day zero is for other things that don't actually fit through the workshop process and they're not quite um, in the program of the IGF because day zero, mind you, is the day before the opening. So the official opening marks the beginning of the official program and day zero is outside of the official program. So we have things that um, I think the community deems useful, uh, things like the Giga, sorry, the GigaNet, that is the academic institutions, and we may have, you know, presentations, you know, all, a whole smorgasbord of things. Um, so I hope I've made it a little bit clearer. Um, I think you have, and, and if I was unclear, I apologize, but I think what is happening is that, that there are, um, um, people who have events and, and content that they want to present at the IGF who actually are not even submitting workshop proposals. Yes, exactly, yes. So they, rather than, than try and get their content onto the agenda through the workshop proposal uh, process, which is more unpredictable and complex, they do it through day zero. Now there are pros and cons attached to that, so I'm not judging it. I just think it is something that the MAG needs to consider, even though day zero is not part of the MAG's um, work. And um, Chennai, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much, Annette. Um, my con so my name is Chennai Che, and I'm representing civil society MAG, and I also work for the World Wide Web Foundation. My comment specifically with regards to day zero, where we had, I think, the one panel that seemed to have four male speakers and only one female speaker, and I think that was you, uh, Madam Chair, who was the female speaker on the panel, so you brought in some diversity there. However, if MAG, um, if the IGF space has been pushing for diversity as one of the big criteria for evaluation for workshops, and then on day zero, people whose workshops were rejected based on that lack of diversity, I do think it does send quite a confusing message in terms of like when then can one participate. So even though it is not our oversight as MAG members to determine the kind of um, the, session, the events that will take place on day zero, I do think perhaps, as Maria Paz had pointed out around community standards, one of the issues that we should raise is that even if you're putting forward something for day zero, do take in mind that criteria around diversity of participation because it is a little confusing for someone who has suggested a session and gets rejected on diversity to then attend a session that has five white male speakers and one white female speaker and the five the four other white males are from Europe and the only other white uh, person on the panel is from Africa. So I do think that's something that we can propose as just having basic standard criteria for day zero sessions, unless that's already been addressed before. Uh, thank you very much for that comment. Yes, uh, we do keep in mind the common IGF principles, you know, diversity, inclusion, et cetera. I mean, those are kept in mind. Uh, I'm not too sure of that workshop, but um, yeah, it maybe get lost, or maybe they had to make up some uh, panelists. Uh, but as a matter of course, whatever we do, it doesn't matter whether it's any kind of session, anything, even, you know, we do state that it must adhere to the idea of principles. 
Um, yes, I think the, the issue of, of diversity is important. I think, Chennai, that particular session was unfortunate because there were two women speakers who got lost and only arrived really at the end. Um, but I think the principle of diversity is it's getting more scrutiny from the community. And I think how people understand it um, is also changing. And I think that's good. I think it's challenging for us as, as the IGF, um, but it's also um, uh, important. I think with day zero, um, what we should remember is that, yes, the kind of, of uh, diversity when it comes to race and gender and, 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 and origin is important, but it's also different in the sense that on day zero, for example, um, we accommodate sessions that focus just on one region or sessions that focus just on the concerns of one stakeholder group, such as the civil society session. So I think it's also important to distinguish between what the, the diversity standards are that we want day zero session organizers to respect and the diversity standards that we expect workshop and main session organizers to, to respect. They are, there's an overlap, but there is also um, some difference. Did you want to add anything, Shangatai? Oh, I think I'm just repeating what you're saying is that, yes, I mean, it's not a mathematical formula as such. If it is a workshop for people from Latin America, we don't expect them to have representatives from all five continents, uh, but they should have diversity in, it shouldn't, it should have diversity in, um, you know, gender diversity. It should have diversity in, in other aspects. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Shengatai. It's very, you know, I'm from South Africa. Shengatai is from Zimbabwe. So it's a, it's a real pleasure here to, to sit and talk to my, my neighbor. We're used to repeating one another. Um, I see the floor is closed, you know, and, 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 and our timing is actually fantastic. Um, I, I don't have a summary at all, and, and we do have the synthesis, but I want to just highlight some points that I, that I think are important takeaways for us and takeaways for the MAG. And I encourage MAG members to keep their own notes so that we can come back to this. There, there's clearly a message that we need to retain and build on some of the innovations uh, of, of 2019. So that's come across very strongly. Um, the, the, the thematic track, um, uh, um, uh, that in itself is, is considered an innovation we should build on. Um, the fact that there was real-time messaging and, and, and outputs, quite accessible short um, outputs, and that these were produced um, as the event proceeded, that clearly is something as well. The political visibility of the IGF, I think that is definitely an achievement. Um, and it's been a struggle, I think, sometimes for the IGF to retain that political visibility. And it's also quite a complex uh, demand because on the one hand, you want political visibility. Uh, visibility. You want um, both at UN level and at, at host um, government level, um, the IGF to be taken seriously. But you also want to retain that nature of the IGF as a bottom-up, self-organized, community-organized event. So. Um, uh, and I think what Berlin has showed us is a very good way of, of doing both, of having strong host government presence and participation, but not losing the IGF's quality as a bottom-up um, community-shaped and organized event. Um, I think that um, um, the, the point that, that um, day zero, I think I, I won't dwell on that. I think we have a clear idea of, of what worked well around that. Um, in terms of continuity, that strikes me as well. There there's um, seems to be a call for more continuity from one year to another. And this is not just as much, so much a multi-work program necessarily, but continuity in terms of content and themes and the material that we, that we deal with. And the suggestion that, that a high-level session um, can build on some of the work that emerged from a high-level session in the previous year. Um, participation. Um, Berlin really stood out in terms of participation from the Global South and, and youth participation. So that is something we really need to, to build on. What seems to be the primary um, emphasis in calls for improvement is at the level of participation, gender diversity stood out, so we can build on that. Um, but integration and linkages with the intercessional work. For me, that stands out as probably the biggest challenge for the MAG um, this year. 
How do we work with the NRIs earlier? How do we get their input into the shaping of the, the thematic contact? How do we use the BPFs, not as these free floating and small groups of people that do really interesting work, um, but as, the, as the, be, the best practice forums and the dynamic coalitions, as spaces where work can continue before and after the IGF to build more continuity um, in terms of the outcomes. Um, I, 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 you know, can I use an ITU term here, study groups? Who's familiar with the idea of study groups that the ITU sometimes use? You know, and, and where, where, the, where the work of, of those smaller groups like the BPF actually become um, more connected to the content and the outputs of the entire event. So that's def it's a huge challenge, but I think that's something the that MAG has the capacity to, to work on. Um, in terms of design and flow, what stands out for me, um, um, different types of workshops, possibly that was one of the suggestions that we should look at workshops as perhaps not all being the same type of workshops. I think one suggestion was that you'd have workshops that, that, uh, uh, that are new, that address new topics, and then workshops that uh, respond specifically to the, the themes and policy questions of the year. The other suggestion in terms of flow is to have the high-level sessions at the end. And um, in terms of the organizing of the high-level se sessions, I think the one critical point that was made uh, is to make them more transparent and to make participation more, more uh, and the modalities of participation more inclusive and, and more transparent. So, and the idea of putting them at the end, I think is a very interesting idea actually to use them in a slightly different way. Um, the number of sessions, I think that comes up year after year. Um, do we have more, do we have less? And I don't have the answers, the MAG will have to find those answers. What I can say is that that, that um, you know, for those who feel we need fewer sessions, um, uh, Roman, uh, among you, you, one of them, remember that the IGF is about ownership, and it's about ownership of the community, which is a very loose term, but I think we, we, we have this concept of the IGF community. It's about their ownership of the event, and that's really what drives the IGF. Remember, the financing of the IGF goes into the host country costs, which are significant, and, and, in, and in some cases, they also participate, um, uh, support the participation through travel grants. But, but the financial investment that goes into the IGF, the largest one, is the cost of the time and travel and accommodation of the people that participate in the IGF. And therefore, changing the modalities in a way that reduces that level of ownership and engagement will put, I think, the IGF at risk. So you need to find a way of making it not too big, making it accessible, understandable, but to not lose that quality of this is an event that's organized um, and owned by the, by the community. And the MAG, we are the facilitator, we, we're the mediator. But definitely, I think we need to look at design and flow. Absolutely, I think that message is, is clear. On themes, um, there seems to be at this point we need to discuss as a MAG whether we put out a further call for, for themes. There's strong support for that. But we also have some indication of what people uh, feel are priorities. And uh, definitely the themes of 2019 are still considered relevant by, by most people. And then we have the additional theme of climate change or the environment and how we integrate that as a new theme or a new track. Or that's that's um, that's come up. And then the idea of, of business models, digital economy. Um, what do we mean by that? What, what are, the, the, are the inherent um, challenges at the level of business models that, that the IGF needs to explore? Um, I'm not, what else I think has, has, has stood out? I think that, um, that really is, um, oh, oh yes, I think the fi my, final, my final point is about outputs and outcomes. So I think this is new, we get that every year. And I wish Lynn was here, by the way, and uh, I don't know if she's online, it's not a good time for her, but a big thanks to Lynn for, for all the, the innovation that she nurtured um, through her role as MAG chair in the years that she was. I think that the issue of outputs and outcomes is one that the MAG will have to face. And I know the MAG deals with that every year. And, and I think there's been, significant progress in, in documenting and communicating outputs. 
um, in understanding what outcomes are, and there is now clear, clearly a call um, that we need to take that even further in partnership with other processes, but also as the IGF. Um, I don't have a particular wisdom on that. I think that it is, again, a challenge for the MAG to retain um, the spirit of the mandate and the, 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 the primary, the core of the IGF mandate, which is to be a platform that brings people from different stakeholders together to, to explore and discuss internet governance issues in, in a, in a non-conflictual, open and collaborative space. And, um, but at the same time, there is a demand for, for, for taking, for, for um, distilling from that type of open interaction um, outputs that can be used and inform by policymakers, by practitioners. So I think, again, the challenge here is how do we strengthen um, um, uh, the IGF um, outputs and outcomes without losing that essential quality of the IGF, as really it's the only space in the world where you get linked to the intergovernmental system, a platform where people from all stakeholder groups can come and debate and share and learn together. So we always need to keep in mind what will being outcome oriented uh, in a more, um, in a more um, deliberate way could it potentially risk that, that quality of debate and open engagement? But again, I think the MAG has much to work with because the innovation of best practice forums, the modalities of dynamic coalition, the intercessional work gives us modalities that we can use to, um, to make the, the, the IGF more output and outcome oriented without losing some of its essential characteristics. But I just want to flag that because it's not, I know there's sometimes a very clear demand for policy recommendations um, um, and it, it can, the IGF does and, and, and produce those recommendations. But it's not simple. And I think the other thing to keep in mind when it comes to outputs and outcomes is who has accountability for taking them further. And I think that's something else that we need to keep in, our, uh, keep in mind um, you know, as, as, as an IGF community and as a MAG. Um, there's nothing as um, disencouraging. Um, uh, sorry, English is not my first language. You'll get to know that better and better. Sometimes I struggle to find words. As producing recommendations, which then sit up in the air, I always, in my African um, capacity, I often say, uh, particularly to governments, that there's this cloud above Africa that's full of recommendations. It's a cloud of policy recommendations, of conference outputs. And, and that cloud sits there. And that's what happens. You make recommendations and they go up to the cloud and they stay there. And they might even be blocking the rain and sunshine. Um, because no one actually takes responsibility for, for implementing them. It's much easier to make and produce recommendations than, than to take them forward and, and put them into practice. And I think the IGF needs to take that into, into account because as, um, as, as our reputation can be affected by the fact that we are not seen to be output oriented enough, um, I heard some speakers say that they talk to stakeholders who feel the IGF doesn't produce anything, it can be even more harmful for the IGF to become a platform that produces recommendation which no one is then accountable for taking further. So we, we, we will need to, to look at those and find ways of balancing that. So um, I have no further comments. I'm going to ask my, my, my co-chair if she has any reflections or remarks. Um, the Secretariat, Joanne Dessa, Rudolf. Wayman, you have the floor. Yes, and, um, thank you. Thank you, Andre. So j j just to uh, reflect on a few points from the perspective of uh, DESA. Um, on respect for diversity, um, I could not underscore more how this is important to IGF, but not just to IGF, it's also the one core principle of the UN. So um, that, that includes all diversity, um, um, just for example, gender parity, uh, in supporting the max selection, some of you would know that starting uh, last year, we managed to achieve gender parity for all the MAC members. So now for this year, the 2020 MAC, there are 50 of you, 
and we have 25 women and 25 men. And uh, that, 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 this um, statistic will stay. And of course, we will uh, see how we can actually take this diversity into, into different work. Um, on, the, um, on the part that has been elaborated very well by, um, by Andreas on continuity, integrations, um, the relevance um, of, of the current IGF, um, this is especially important um, that in 2020 is, is actually the halfway mark of the current mandate um, of IGF. Um, some of you will know that, in fact, this is the, the third mandate of IGF. The first mandate was five years, 2006 to 2010. The second mandate was another five years. Uh, and the current mandate, the third mandate, is for 10 years. Um, we are at the halfway point. The renewal of IGF will be considered by the GA alongside with WCIS in 2025. Um, I'm not surprised that there will be early consultations that we will get to know and to prepare from the Secretariat uh, a couple of years from now. So in, in looking at the relevance of the IGF the, uh, for 2025 and beyond, uh, I think the work has to, has to begin now or has begun, but we have to be more mindful uh, as we are approaching this halfway mark. Um, on, on, on that one point uh, that has not been uh, uh, mentioned, though it was also in the message of the, um, the USG of DESA, Mr. Liu, uh, was about the health of the IGF uh, main trust fund. Um, we, 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 like many of you, uh, we cannot uh, again underestimate the, the, financial, um, the financial commitment of the host country. Um, at the same time, there's also the IGF main trust fund. Uh, that supports the IGF Secretariat and all the intersectional work. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the, all the past and current donors. Some of you are here with us. And of course, I'm taking this opportunity to, to encourage the current donors and new donors to continue to, to contribute. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Oyamin, for that very important point. And there, there will be a briefing um, on the IGF Trust Fund tomorrow for those who want to, to know. Um, we have a little bit of time left, so I just would like Shengatai to give us a short overview of the participation statistics um, of the IJF in Berlin. Uh, Rudolf gave us the total number of participants, just the breakdown by gender and stakeholder group and geography. Uh, the statistics are available on the IGF website, and um, we, we do these statistics every single year. And unfortunately, mine are not working, but I will read off the screen. Ah, there. It's, it's not coming. Okay, so um, for on-site participation by stakeholder group, 42% um, 40, um, came from civil society, 18% from government and 19% from the private sector. Um, inter intergovernmental organizations and legislators, we did not usually have the legislators. I think this is the first year that we have um, stated the legislators um, in the graph. But if you go up to the text here, Sorry, um, we did have a breakdown of the statistics. Yeah, okay. But um, as opposed to last year, I don't know if it's possible to have them side by side. Just to see um, if we've improved or, or if we have um, gone backward. But uh, this year we definitely have um, improved. Uh, that's
So let's just start with the stakeholders. Um, right now, that's uh, regional. Uh, yes. So, so there's a slight decrease um, in the percentage of overall uh, civil society, and there's an increase in the in the governments, which is um, very good. And we must understand that there's only um, 193. Uh, governments um, uh, within the UN, so of course we, you, you know, you know, you're not going to get a 10% increase based on the um, figures, but that 2% does re represent quite a lot of new governments um, c coming in. So, I mean, that's one thing to, um, to point out. Uh, percentage of private sector is 1% less, but it's not, yeah, but, but that's the overall size again. I think we had more in the number of um, private sector people coming and also more of the high level participation from the, the private sector thanks to the efforts of the German government. I mean, we had, you know, high level people coming from Dalma Benz and um, the banks and et cetera. So uh, I, I think, you know, all in all, if you look at all the metrics, um, the te technical community stayed the same, but that also means that more people from the technical com community came. Um, and the press and the media, that's 3%, so a, a lot more. So I think across the board, as far as the uh, stakeholder representation um, is concerned, I think we've made progress across the board there. Uh, this, this is last year compared to the previous year. Now, if we look at the um, regional uh, representation, uh, of course, the IDF was in um, Europe, but also the previous year it was in Europe. So, in fact, this makes it a, a very good um, comparison as well. Uh, so, Western Europe and others, we have 55 for this year, and last year we had 38. Um, hmm, I don't know how quite to dice that. <laughs> I'll think about it. And then uh, intergovernmental organizations, we had a lot more, uh, which is a good thing. And as you can see, we've had... Um, Africa group, we have 25% last year, and um, Asia Pacific, we had 16, and Eastern European group, we have, oh, okay, Eastern European increased, but I'm surprised about the Africa group, 25%, especially since we brought in quite a lot of people coming in. So we have to look into that, and maybe tomorrow we'll give you a better analysis of it. Yeah. Um, Latin America stayed the same. Oh, wait, what's the difference? Ah, that's... Uh, no, no, yeah. I, mean, I think it's not surprising yeah. the difference in Africa. You know, France has got a very large... Uh, diaspora African population oh, yes. okay. that yes. would probably, as they register, uh, identify with the African group, even if they are resident in France. Yeah. Okay, let me. Mm -hmm. um, let's just look at the agenda. We'll come back to you because this is, I'm, I'm very, very interested in this. Yeah. I have to do some more deeper so analysis. So we, we, we've, and uh, we've given yeah. you, so, and then, and then gender we've yeah. got as well. Yeah. Um, and Wanda just asked me the very logical question, which people ask all the time, and that's, where's the academic community? And, um, and this is a bit of a historical uh, World Summit on the Information Society legacy that they are classified with um, the technical community. In practice, many would identify as part of civil society. Yes. I think it's something for us to consider, whether we don't actually want to to have data that is specific on the research um, and, and academic community. It might be useful for us to, 
to try and extract that. So that's something for the MAG to talk to the Secretariat I about. mean, we can. We can keep the statistics as they are because it's very important to be able to compare backwards. But we can also do another one with the academic uh, uh, taken out. Uh, but we also have to remember that these are self-selected. Mm. Uh, we don't select the stakeholder group. The participants select the stakeholder group. Um, thanks for that, Shangatai. And I think just what I will emphasize is that um, increasing government participation and having um, substantial participation from business, those were specific targets that the MAG focused on in 2019, and it's really good to, to get um, um, such a positive response to that. And participation from the Global South does, does remain a, a huge challenge, and it's not something that that either the MAG or, or, the, or, the, or UNDESA or the Secretariat or the host country can ignore. Yes, but, uh, and we also, I mean, if we move to um, the Global South, of course, all those figures will change. So that's one of our efforts that we have to see and concentrate and also try and get governments from the Global South to come and um, offer to host the IDF meeting. And, and this may um, involve giving them fi financial help because, you know, holding an IDF is very um, expensive and they may not be able to do it alone. And so we have to find either some mechanism to help them out and to see what we can do. Um, thanks very much. And um, on that note, if there are no, no further inputs, I um, declare the morning session close and I wish you all a really good lunch. And um, we see you back at three o'clock for the, the, the joint session um, on the IGF Plus and the high level panel on digital cooperation. Thanks very much everyone. And thanks for everyone who took the time to give input. Yes, it should be running automatically already. Geneva, I'm online, but I, I'm not sure you can hear me. I can hear you well, Fabrizio. Um, if I raise my voice, is this better? I can hear you well. Should I, should I go ahead? Uh, not yet. I have to start the, the meeting officially. Okay, so I'll just stand by. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I don't have, I don't see anything on your, on, on, I just see myself on screen. I don't know. If there's any way from your side you can activate the screen.
Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, please take a seat. We'll be starting. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Anriet Esterhuisen. I'm from South Africa and I'm currently the chair of the multi-stakeholder advisory group of the Internet Governance Forum. Um, I want to welcome all the non-MAG members and um, representatives, delegates from, from missions who've joined us and others who've joined us for the session of, uh, this afternoon. I want to welcome you on behalf of myself and on behalf of the MAG. And I see the room has just been entered by the co-chair of the IGF for this year. Um, Ms. Wanda Bok. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I'll just wait for her to take a seat. Thank you. So, very briefly, um, the context of this meeting is that it's coinciding with the first meeting and open consultation of the Internet Governance Forum Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. For those of you that are not part of, of the IJF process, the Internet Governance Forum works in a bottom-up and inclusive way. And we start our year's work always with an open consultation where we listen to the community, we listen to stakeholders from government, civil society, business, technical community, and others to, to get a sense of what we can do as the organizers of the annual Internet Governance Forum to respond to needs and priorities and to make the IGF a living and relevant process that adds value to, 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 the, to the multitude of internet policy work that, that's done by governments and others um, throughout the year. Um, this, this meeting is for us a special opportunity to, to ask the IGF to invite and, and have a shared briefing and consultation with another very significant process. And that's the process convened by the UN Secretary General um, known as the UNSG's High Level Panel on Digital Cooperation. Um, this panel, a multi-stakeholder pan panel, was convened in 2018, if I remember correctly, and um, took on the challenge of, of addressing gaps in digital cooperation. Um, that, that had been recognized and that had emerged in other processes. And they produced last year a very substantial report on digital um, cooperation um, with some recommendations, which they are now in the process of, of, of consulting, briefing, and engaging others in implementation. Um, this particular session this afternoon is for us an opportunity to do two things. Firstly, as the IGF MAG and um, UNDESA and the Secretariat uh, of the IGF, which is where the IGF sits, it's an opportunity for, you, for us to share with you some of the outcomes and successes of the IGF um, 2019, which concluded in Berlin in December. And to get general feedback, I think particularly from missions, but not only from missions, from, from, from any other stakeholder group um, uh, in the room, of what you feel are the internet policy issues and priorities that an IGF can respond to usefully. What are the issues? What are, what are the thematic and content issues and policy challenges that you are facing that, that the IGF can, can usefully um, take on? And secondly, it's also an opportunity for the IGF as a platform for open dialogue and engagement and cooperation, um, that's in the DNA of the IGF, um, to, to provide a platform for the, the office of the Under Secretary General. Um, you'll meet him soon, he'll be speaking to us, um, Mr. Fabrizio Hofschild, who is the Under Secretary General for the UN 75th anniversary, but also uh, who has been steering this process of, of the high level um, panel on digital cooperation to provide them with an opportunity to share their progress and their challenges and their ideas um, about increasing um, digital cooperation. And along with the USG's office, there are also champions and key constituents um, who've committed to be part of this process. Um, and we're hoping that by having this joint session, we'll create more inclusion, more transparency, more, more um, participation, but I think also more um, 
mutual benefit for the IGF. Um, any conversation about the challenges of digital cooperation um, can provide us with useful input um, to reinforce the ongoing self-improvement, is the term we tend to use in the IGF, um, the process of enhancing the IGF and making the IGF process more substantial and more valuable. And keep in mind that when I talk about the IGF process, I'm not just talking about the global annual event. The IGF has evolved in, into this, this um, system of processes, which includes national and regional internet governance forums. It includes dynamic coalitions groups of self-organized institutions and individuals that work on particular thematic areas. And it also includes best practices forum, where you have, again, teams of self-organized people um, identifying and extracting and documenting best practices and responding to particular policy issues. Um, so the IGF is, in, in, in its very nature, a process that, that improves every year or tries to improve every year. And, and so we feel that this discussion about taking forward the recommendations of the panel will also have some useful um, input for us to process and to try and integrate. Um, so we see this as a mutually beneficial, reinforcing and collaborative process that will add value to, to all our work. Um, separately and to our collective goals um, and, and our vision for, for more, more, more cooperation and, and more collaboration across all stakeholder groups and across the vast range of issues that, that fall under digital operation, but that also fall under what we, we see as the umbrella of internet governance. Um, so, um, we have this afternoon and do not forget there will be a reception um, um, after the proceedings, and you'll hear more about where that is and how that is. But on this, I'd like to hand over to um, Fabrizio Hochschild, who is joining us remotely from New York. And I think he's ready and waiting. And we'll hear from him, and then we'll, we'll move on to our co-organizer, Switzerland. Fabrizio, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Good. You can go ahead. Put your headsets on and then you'll hear Fabrizio much more clearly and his face will be on screen shortly. Over to you, Fabrizio. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anrietta. Thank you so much, uh, Switzerland, for convening this. Um, a very good morning uh, to you from, from New York I, uh, or good afternoon. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to be with you. Um, I, uh, you know, my name is Fabrizio Hochschild. I, I, uh, work, support the Secretary General both in the preparations uh, and execution of his vision for how he wishes to mark um, the 75th anniversary of the UN, which is very much focused about uh, getting feedback uh, globally from uh, people across the world about how the UN can better address emerging threats and threats to the future. And then uh, my other hat is to support the Secretary General on issues related to new technologies, and in particular with the follow up of the high level panel. Behind the high level panel, as you alluded to, Henrietta, was, was a sense that there's a deficit in global cooperation to steer digital technologies to maximize their benefits while containing their abuse, their misuse or their unintended consequences. And the result of that deficit was uh, a plethora, alongside the innumerable benefits, a plethora of um, harms, uh, and also the danger, um, and some would say um, uh, uh, the reality, of the fragmentation uh, of the internet uh, as um, people reacted to perceptions of these harms by trying to uh, erect uh, walls in cyberspace. Um, so the Secretary General convened the panel to have recommendations how we can overcome uh, some of the divides, um, real or, or emerging, um, related to these new technologies. And the panel came up with a series of recommendations, which we're now consulting on, seeing what already exists in terms of uh, their implementation, where the gaps are and how we can bring 
ongoing efforts um, to scale. We're doing this very much in the spirit of the IGF, very much in the spirit um, of the, the MAC itself through multi-stakeholder fora. And this is something of a first um, for the UN. So based on uh, expressions of, of interest, we've convened these multi-stakeholder groups uh, to map the actions that are already happening under each recommendation to identify where the gaps are and to see um, what in the recommendation, what should be done to further the implementation of the recommendation or where appropriate, maybe change the recommendation. And that process, which started um, just before the end of the year, will lead to, um, in the initial, as an initial output, a roadmap, a proposed roadmap for the Secretary General on the way forward. And we're very grateful to those organizations, those countries, um, and those uh, industry members uh, or academic um, institutions who've joined this effort. And of course, the effort is open, so anybody is still free to join who may have a particular interest in advancing this or that recommendation. Um, we are posting um, on our website um, the outcomes of the first discussions um, we had before Christmas. Some of the, um, some of the notes are already up, others will be up um, in the coming days. Of course, one of the major recommendations was uh, the idea to, to further strengthen um, or improve um, Eva, I, I stopped because apparently I can't be heard. Geneva, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm on standby to continue. If you give a signal. If you're talking to me, I can hear you. It seems I'm back on.
for those online who apparently can hear me, I'm connected to everybody online, but what has been lost is the bridge to Geneva. So, um, I stay on standby. It seems back now. Uh, Geneva, this is New York. Um, can you can you hear me now? Should I go ahead? Yes, Fabrizio, Please. we can hear you again. Uh, Henrietta, yeah, sorry, Henrietta, I see you. I see you speaking, but I can't hear what you're saying. Try again. Um, can I confirm? Um, can you hear me? Transcribers can't hear me. But we can hear Fabrizio, right? Yes. Okay, Henrietta. Um, I can hear Good. you loud. So you can hear me now. I can hear you loud and clear, but I don't know. Uh, should I start from the beginning? I don't know where I was cut off. Um, uh, Fabrizio, we just looked into that. Um, so we would like you to go back to where you talked about how people can join and others can join in the process. So okay. I'm, I'm really, really sorry about this, no, but no, you do no, need to go back a little bit. Yeah, this, this, this happens um, anyway. Um, so, we, so you have the this, floor. Please continue. I just yeah, want to tell you, you we're ready to go. We have Fabrizio back. Have your headsets on and apologies to everyone. Back to you, Fabrizio. Yeah, thank you, Henrietta, and uh, greetings again to, to everyone. So just to go back, I'm charged with a follow up to the high level panel report. When the high level panel report came out, we sent it to over 500 stakeholders soliciting feedback. Over a hundred responded, and based on the uh, interest expressed um, and views of the hundred that responded, we formed these uh, multi-stakeholder groups to follow up on each recommendation. We had the first round of discussions um, just before Christmas by each of these eight 
uh, multi-stakeholder groups. Um, we're in the process of putting up on the UN website um, and on the Digital Cooperation website, the outcome of those discussions. You'll see there the composition of each groups. The groups are open. I mean, the more uh, interested parties, we just want to keep it multi-stakeholder. We want to have a balance between North and South. But having said that, while ensuring diversity, the more interest there is in joining these groups, the better. So everybody's welcome. Um, and if there are any queries about how we set this up, how we went about this, what we mean by this in this or that note, uh, my colleagues, I mean, David, Kelly, who many of you know very well, Yu Ping, were totally at your disposal. So, so please, if there's any sense that information is lacking, press us for it, and we will do our utmost um, to, to, be to continue to be uh, responsive. And if there's interest in joining the process, Please express that interest, but do look at um, <coughs> the notes we've put from the first round tables up on the website, um, and the more will be coming in the in the coming days. And of course, as I was noting, one of the chief recommendations is the idea for um, further strengthening, or to use Henrietta's word, further improving the IGF and trying to position the IGF to be a strong contributor, not in competition, but in complement to the many other mechanisms that already exist um, to uh, global internet um, governance, taking advantage of its unique um, or pretty unique multi-stakeholder fora and its uh, long and distinguished roots in the WISIS uh, process. But as you may, many will recall, the Secretary General in Berlin uh, suggested that the forum should transform into a platform where government representatives from all parts of the world, and I'm quoting, along with companies, technical experts, and civil society can come together to share policy expertise, debate emerging technologies, and agree, and I guess this would be the new element, agree on some basic common principles and take these ideas back to appropriate norm-setting forum. So there's no aspiration for the IGF itself to become a norm setting fora, but there is uh, an aspiration to position it to better feed into existing norm setting fora at the national, regional and global level. I know at the IGF concern, uh, the, the IGF in Berlin, some concerns were expressed that uh, perhaps by calling upon it to have agreed outcomes that could jeopardize the quality and diversity of the debate at the IGF itself. Um, I think there are ways around that. There are other multi-stakeholder UN bodies where there are very substantive um, uh, discussions, um, notwithstanding uh, the, the pursuit also um, of, of outcomes. So I think trying to have outcomes doesn't necessarily um, have to um, uh, dumb down the debate. Um, but I think these issues do have to be considered. Also, the, another concern raised in Berlin was how do you ensure the connectivity tissue to norm setting fora? Um, and I think there are ways around that. I think the innovation at the IGF this year of ensuring prom having a high level segment, um, ensuring strong participation of parliamentarians, those are two ways that you can try and get the connection to the normative tissue um in 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 ways that would ensure a, a, a greater um impact uh, of outcomes but we're very glad that um you know we have germany and the uae um, have taken on the task of um leading a multi-stakeholder group to come up with much more detailed recommendations based on uh, the outcome of the high level panel report and no doubt the discussion today will also uh, be an important contributor um, to that. Um, I, do, I think we're all aware of the challenges um, we're trying to um, contain. Uh, perhaps the principal challenge is the fragmentation um, of the World Wide Web. Uh, perhaps the principal challenge is the growth of, 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 of um, harmful use um, and uh, lack of security um, in digital um, technologies. And of course, the IGF um, can't um, uh, on its own uh, be the magical solution to, to such enormous challenges, 
but we believe it can be positioned um, to uh, build on its formidable strengths um, to, to make a, um, a, a greater contribution um, to, to tackling um, some of these um, challenges. So that's where we stand. Um, we hope very much um, for your support in continuing this process um, and for fine tuning the recommendations and for um, contributing to advancing them as and where uh, appropriate. And I wish you uh, all the best for your deliberations today. And we very much look forward to, to learning um, of the outcomes and being, uh, being able to integrate the views that emerge uh, in our own processes. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that, Fabrizio. And we will produce as an output of this afternoon's session a summary of discussions which we will share and which we trust will be of value to yourselves, um, the champions and key constituents, as well as to the IGF MAG. Um, Ambassador Thomas Schneider, you have the floor again. Thank you and hello again. So. Um hope that uh, technology now works. Um, so again, um, we really enjoyed the IGF in, in Berlin and would like to thank uh, our German friends again for this. And at the same time also thank the UAE and Germany for, for uh, signing up as champions to lead the process uh, with regard to, to discussing uh, implementation of recommendation five which is, in our view, one of the key recommendations of the high-level panel report, um, because it, it, it tries to, to improve the architecture that should deliver uh, progress on all the substantive areas of the other recommendations. So for us, this is really a crucial, a crucial part. And um, we uh, propose to facilitate it, this meeting or this discussion here this afternoon, because we are convinced that of the gaps identified in the report uh, in the digital cooperation architecture, the IGF has a great potential to, to actually help filling uh, these gaps uh, through, through developing it into uh, or being uh, into this, this horizontal networked architecture that is, that is uh, described in, in various variations in, in the three proposed options or models in, in the report. So, and, and also the discussion in Berlin has shown that there is uh, a very uh, great interest in discussing this issue of, of how to using the IGF a basis to, to develop something that would actually then fill the gaps that, that are identified in, in the report. So, um, and, and already now the IGF is fulfilling some of the of the functions that are described in the report that have been discussed in particular of course the dialogue function <clears throat> some things may may uh, need to be strengthened like the support function this is probably one of the key issues um, and and the IGF has also proven over its existence that it is able to develop itself further this is not the first time that we're discussing how to improve and further develop the IGF there has been a, a report and a process uh, facilitated by the CSTD already some time ago um, and we are convinced that that when we now start with discussing um, the IGF the last experience with the IGF in Germany that that can be one of the inputs and one of the basis is on on have on, on developing concrete ideas on how to bring bring this forward so um, uh, we will hope, uh, we're, we're hoping that today we'll, we'll get into the concrete gaps that you think are important that they are filled and what we can do concretely based on the IGF and the IGF plus model or whatever you call it in the end uh, and, and hope for, for an interesting debate that will then, as uh, Anette has already said, feed back into, into the, the process. And of course now uh, we depend on technology this uh, afternoon in the evening will be uh, unfortunately disconnected but then again uh, i hope the discussions will also continue at the reception at least with the ones present so uh, this is just the beginning of the discussions i guess thank you thank you very much um thomas um, so don't be intimidated by this very fragmented agenda you you see in front of you and um, this agenda was developed by committee and i think it was developed by committee while some of them were still trying to be on holiday 
um, <laughs> shortly after New Year or even between Christmas and New Year. Um, essentially, this afternoon session has, has two parts. The first part, which we'll now go into, which will be quite brief, is just updating um, everyone present on the IGF 2019. Um, and then to give um, you an opportunity to talk about what you feel would be useful priorities for the IGF to address in 2020. So that will be quite brief. Um, and then we'll move on to the substantive, the larger part of this afternoon session, which is to look at recommendation five. And I, 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 I know I will make sure that recommendation five is explained to you in, in greater detail um, and, and how to move forward um, with that process. So on that, um, I'd like to give the floor to, to Rudolf Gridel from, from Germany, who was one of the key people, if not the key person, who steered um, IGF Berlin with the cooperation of many others into being a really hugely successful IGF. Just to give us a sense of what the innovations and outcomes and outputs were of the IGF in Berlin. Um, thank you very much, uh, Henriette, for giving me the floor and um, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you to you and to Switzerland for um, having taken the initiative for this um, session. I think it is very timely and very important to have this um, kind of a transparency and input oriented um, exercise at the beginning of the year at the first MAC and open consultations. So thank you very much for that. Um, Concerning um, IGF 2019, of course, we already were aware of the work that was going on uh, in the high-level panel on digital cooperation when we started to think about um, what could be um, a good IGF in Berlin, what could be the elements of a good IGF in Berlin. We had in July the report that has already been um, talked about, and um, we um, are very happy to witness that these two processes, uh, the IGF MAC process and the HLPDC process, um, that were at the very beginning um, parallel processes, are converging more and more. And that is, I think, a very good um, development because um, uh, the IGF has been one of the um, three elements in the, pro in the, in the report as called the IGF plus that could be um, that could be uh, developed upon further. So what, what that, did that mean for the IGF 2019 uh, in Berlin? Um, we uh, took up uh, concerns that had been um, um, that had been uh, taken to us from the report but also from others that there was not much, uh, enough involvement of the global south. Uh, we, we managed to um, to uh, have uh, more um, participants from Africa, from the Global South, from Latin America, from Asia, from many countries that had not been present before. Um, we uh, could um, deblock uh, uh, some money for um, a traveling fund um, for the UN. Uh, we had for the first time the parliamentarians, uh, Fabrizio has mentioned it, that um, was an innovation and it is also the, um, the uh, element of making a, a link between what's happening on the international level to the national legislators. And um, we had this high level leaders track uh, where we had like 30 ministers and vice ministers from all over the world, but also business leaders um, from various uh, branches of industry, not only from the tech industry, um, including SMEs, which are in Germany, but I think in many countries, a very important element of the uh, economic development. And um, we um, hoped that we could manage by um, having these new elements to uh, make the IGF um, a little bit more um, relevant for stakeholder groups that were not active before and um, also to reach out to a more globally balanced um, participation. Um, I think these are elements that we can build upon if we are now thinking about what does it mean um, 
to have uh, an IGF plus or whatever new model comes out of this um, process described by Fabrizio Hochschild. And um, I'm very um, happy to hear also today from all the distinguished delegates uh, what their input and their visions would be on that. And uh, thank you very much uh, to our chair and give it back to you. Um, thanks for that, Rudolf. Um, we won't go into a detailed presentation of the IGF 2019 outputs, but I just want to alert you to, to their existence and, and the fact that you can access them on the IGF website. And I'll just review very briefly um, um, what they are. Um, the IGF is this, this huge um, self-organized event with inputs from, from multiple stakeholders. Uh, the program is designed uh, by the MAG, or I would say it is nurtured by the MAG, but the actual input comes from the community. Um, so you have a variety of different types of IGF outputs. And if you go to the IGF website, you'll, you'll be able to look at them. And we'll put this in the outcome document of this, of this event. But firstly, there are messages. Uh, we refer to them as Berlin IGF messages. And, and they um, synthesize, um, they, they don't summarize. I think they extract key elements of discussions that took place along the three thematic tracks of IGF 2019. And those tracks were data governance, huge area that includes a range of issues that, that fall under that umbrella. That was um, one of the main tracks. The second one is digital inclusion. And again, that covers a whole range of issues. Um, and if you look at IGF messages, you'll get a sense of what the diversity of issues were that were discussed. And then the third track um, was security, safety, stability, and resilience. Um, the messages are not all that there is, but they'll give those who were not at the, at the event a sense of of, of what the highlights were. And then it's possible to go and look at detailed session reports and get more of a sense of some of the specific issues that were discussed. Aside from those um, Berlin IGF messages, um, there's also um, other types of outputs. Um, the IGF has what is known as intersessional work. Um, that is work that's done throughout the year um, by best practice forums and dynamic coalitions. And I won't go into detail again, you can find that on the IGF website. But in Berlin, there were four best practice forums. And, and what these best practice forums do is that they, they, in the area that they're tackling, they do research, um, they listen to stories, they gather examples, and then they synthesize that into quite substantive outputs, which really can be very useful to you as policymakers um, and as, as implementers. Um, the, the four best practice forums we had in 2019 were cybersecurity, that's an ongoing best practice forums, and, and they um, cover different areas um, uh, every year. They looked at implementation of norms in the cybersecurity field. There's a best practice forum on gender and access. In 2019, this best practice, practice forums looked at the digital economy and the participation of women and gender diverse people in the digital economy. What, what are the policy, uh, what, what as an enabling environment at the level of policy and other resources, what is needed to ensure effective participation in the, in the digital economy? There was a best practice forum on Internet of Things. Um, and that, I cannot remember exactly what it um, covered. In fact, I see uh, um, the coordinator or the, the support consultant of that best practice forum. Just tell us briefly what, uh, what you did, one of the MAG members. What did IoT cover in 2019? In one sentence. Wim? Okay, that's fine. Say I can be used to um, help solving uh, societal challenges, all kinds of challenges. And in a second step, to be able to do that, it looked how uh, policymakers can help and what challenges they have. Uh, three different, three types of challenges. They could help to uh, establish trust in the technologies. They could help to develop technologies and, uh, well, develop the technologies and uh, help them spread. And the last thing, uh, we all know there is a lot of discussion around data 
in the uh, in the privacy data and related issues, they also should look at that. So that were the three topics. Thanks very much for that one. And then the Best Practice Forum on Local Content looked at how the digitization of local content can be a way of responding to the challenge of language diversity and cultural heritage and history being threatened by social and political upheaval. Um, and again, there's a very comprehensive report with recommendations on what to consider from intellectual property provisions to, to ensuring that digitization processes of cultural heritage are inclusive and actually create opportunities for, for um, the communities that, that, that whose heritage it is that's being digitized. So um, thanks very much um, uh, you know, for, for, for uh, the Secretariat for doing such a good job in documenting these. And we will, in our summary of this afternoon session, give you more intuitive links to this. But I really do want to stress for those people who are not on the mag, um, the IGF produces more outputs than you might think it does. And it, in fact, it's so vast that it can be difficult to navigate. But they really are useful and concrete um, um, research um, often. It's not just opinions and debate and dialogue um, that you can use to inform your work um, in this area. Um, on that note, I want to uh, just open the floor. Um, if there are any questions about the IGF 2019 process and the outputs and outcomes, and also, particularly for those who are not on the MAG, what you see on the horizon of internet policy and, and governance, um, issues and challenges or topics that you think the IGF MAG should consider when it plans the, the program for 2020, which um, will be hosted in Poland. And we have our Polish um, host team present if you have any questions for them as well. So I open the floor to, to questions, focusing on IGF 2020. Just, you can just raise your flag. You don't need to use the online system, the online queuing system. So if there's anyone in the room who wants to contribute. So I see there's a request for the floor from Bill Drake. You can introduce yourself, Bill. And others, please put your flags up in the meantime. Bill, you have the floor and introduce yourself. I'm Bill Drake from the University of Zurich and a uh, longtime IGFer involved in the, uh, involved from before the beginning, uh, including the working group on internet governance that put together the proposal for the mandate for the IGF. Um, I would make one suggestion out of just my, it reflects my own interest, but I think it also is um, something where there's an actual need in the international community, which is that uh, increasingly a lot of internet related issues are being driven into um, economic and especially trade policy forums. Um, and they do negotiate binding agreements in fairly closed manners that don't allow for multi-stakeholder discussion or input. And uh, the WTO is currently uh, engaged in trying to um, reach an agreement, a uh, plurilateral agreement on digital trade that would have, I think, a f substantial impact on different aspects of the internet with regard to uh, how data flows and, and so on uh, that matter. And there's no other place to really have any structured dialogue about this. The WTO has a public forum uh, that it does once a year, but those public forums, having spoken to them a number of times, I can tell you that the agenda is completely controlled by the staff, and um, it's not a criticism, it's simply the way they do it, and it's just little workshops. It's not larger scale discussions that are really kind of open engagements. Um, UNCTAD does some stuff along these lines, but they have their own kinds of uh, factors that are shaping it, and it's not a space that has historically attracted a lot of people from the internet governance kind of community, the stakeholders that have been engaged from WSIS and before uh, around the, these kinds of issues uh, that we deal with here. So I would simply say that um, since the WTO is hoping to have 
a final agreement in June, um, which either will succeed or crash or burn, and then there will be a question of what to do next. Um, and similarly, in parallel, there's a whole bunch of plurilateral and bilateral and regional uh, agreements being formed. Um, it's a space that at least some amount of time in a more focused way maybe could be uh, given to um, on the program. Thanks for, thanks for that, Bill. That's very topical. There were some, some workshops on that topic in Berlin, if I remember correctly. There was, yes. There were, there were more in previous years. Um, any other comments or suggestions? Well, you know, while, while, while you consider whether you want to take the floor or not, I can share that based on the call for input that the Secretariat put out in December, um, which we do every year, um, what we heard from people who responded is that climate change and, and the environmental impact of ICTs are definitely, uh, is definitely a, a, an important issue. I think we also got feedback from, from our open call that the tracks in Berlin are still relevant. So digital inclusion, data governance, um, security, stability, those are also still relevant. Um, and I think the new themes uh, we were asked to consider included climate change and looking at the business models that, that, that drive the internet. And this issue of trade policy and data flows definitely is also a very significant one, as Bill said. Any other thoughts? You don't, you know, you, you really don't have to feel deeply prepared for this. Just, just any other topics you think IGF should consider working on. Um, Vod, you have the floor. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Andreta. Uh, Walter Natis. I have my own consultancy. Um, I would like to step away from topics for a moment. I think in 2012 or 2013, I organized a workshop on how to break down silos. And we decided it was not necessary to break them down, but to create doors and windows so that you can look at each other and perhaps a little bridge to cross. If you look at 2019, then still there are several communities who think that the IGF is not really relevant because all you do is talk and you can organize a million workshops and their frame of mind will not change. So in other words, how can you assist these communities to engage while at the same time they have the opinion that actually something is changing, not per, per se in their favor, but in everybody's favor. And that is not on topics, but about interaction. And that is not solved by having another workshop, I can tell you. So, so how could the, the MAG and the IGF assist communities to actually reach out to each other in better ways? Thank you. Thanks, that's, and that's important, the, the quality of the interaction, the process. Um, online participants, yes, we have. Um, Rahul Echeberria, Rahul, please go ahead and introduce yourself again. Hi, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, as I have said in my, in, in my comment, comment uh, I submitted um, that have been identified uh, for uh, Berlin were very good and it was a very important progress. But as I have said also in my comments, I think that themes uh, should be more concrete. So maybe it's not only uh, what are the topics we have to add to the, the three tracks, but also um, how we can go deeper in, in some And a couple of things that are really creating some tensions in the discussions about regulations and policy in, around the world are one of them is encryption. So I think that under security, we should um, uh, pay much more attention to that specific issue because all the, the, the risk uh, around encryption that uh, exists about overregulation, affecting freedom of expression and privacy and other things. And, uh, and the other topic I think that is very important and relevant is intellectual property. And uh, now, maybe recently, because the new uh, directives on intellectual property in Europe, this is a topic that is being discussed all around the world. And those are the things that are relevant, things, uh, themes that matter to the people that's working on, on developing policies. And those are the things that we should discuss and pay 
Um, so attention and, and discuss deeply in, during the, the next IGF. So a couple of examples, but maybe we can go also deeper and, and, and select a concrete and specific thing for under the other the, the umbrella uh, topics, uh, areas, the thematic areas. Thank you. Um, thanks very much um, for that role. And yes, intellectual property emerged in the local content-based practice forum as a really important enabler and under certain circumstances disabler um, so of content um, um, creation at the local level. Um, if there's no one else that has it, no other questions or suggestions, um, oh, I see someone right at the back. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam yeah. Chair. Um, um, I think you can still hear <laughs> probably myself. So um, my contribution was also um, in the spirit of looking uh, back and, and going forward. Uh, one of the intersessional work that didn't happen last year but happened uh, in the past is the major policy intersessional track, which is the connecting and enabling the next uh, billion, uh, the CNB called another acronym. Um, and it actually started uh, together with the BPF efforts in the, the terms of uh, creating more tangible outcomes, um, but with a slightly different focus because it was streamlining not only uh, the work that come out of the BPFs itself, but also from the DCs, uh, from the, the, the workshop, the, outputs and so on and so forth and the idea was more focused on uh, creating this uh, policy options and uh, it's not to rescue itself the let's say hold on to the old but it's just demonstrating from the lessons learned that when it started it was about connectivity uh, it was more about uh, connecting and then the, the next year it was about uh, connecting and enabling so it's not about getting to the internet but what happens after you get there and then uh, it was connected to the when the SDGs uh, uh, were approved, uh, how this connectivity and this um, uh, access can really change people's life. Um, and then, of course, you had the challenge with uh, narrowing down because we couldn't tackle all the SDGs uh, and which ones we were going to pick. Uh, the, the first year, I should know better, but the first year was education and gender, and of course, the nine that has more of the linkage to, um, to our work. Um, or to the internet itself. Um, uh, the other year, oh my God, help me here when you were there. But anyway, so uh, each year uh, th this was changing. And um, this was not only about researching, but also identifying uh, from concrete case studies where uh, policies have been made and how this was changing and impacting people. From my takeaway, um, as we were part, I was part of the, the, the MAG and uh, coordinating uh, this process, um, also there were people there for the first time and they were not there, um, they've never been to any of the UN related or uh, directly into the IJF, but they were there to share. And this experience has been very, very grateful. So as we look into options, perhaps uh, for new teams, uh, new uh, topics, new, uh, perhaps we can think on how to, to have this building processes and where we want to get. So if that's policy options and if needs to be more streamlined, we might revive a major uh, policy issue. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks, that is very helpful. And this was for those of you that are not aware, this was an intersessional work stream that the IGF undertook for many years, looking at policy options for dealing with the digital divide and with the challenge of connecting those that are not um, connected yet. And that has to some extent been taken up by the dynamic uh, coalition on, on community connectivity. And in fact, you remind me, Raquel, that one of the, the um, inputs that, that I've received as well, particularly from, from Africa, is measuring impact. And I think there are, there are several um, um, governments in particular who, who are interested in assessing what the impact of the internet is. And I know there are partnerships at the moment with UNESCO who developed internet universality indicators. And UNESCO is um, working in several countries, I think about uh, 15 to 20 <coughs> countries at the moment, using these indicators in a, in a multi-stakeholder context to assess what the impact and the reach of, of the internet is on social and economic and human development. 
Um, but I will close the session um, uh, on the IGF um, to, to demonstrate that this is not the last opportunity that you will have to, to give input on the IGF program for this year um, um, through the MAG, through other processes, through the intersessional work. Um, I'm going to ask the Secretariat to just present um, briefly the current timeline for, for IGF 2020 so that you have a sense of, of, of what the opportunities will be to participate in, in organizing um, the work of the IGF this year. If you could just review it very briefly, and it's still in draft um, form. The MAG still has to review it. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm just going to go through the draft timeline that the IGF Secretariat uh, prepared uh, for the MAG, so it just highlights the major milestones and dates for the for this year's uh, preparatory process. And it's available on the IGF website. If you go uh, down below at the bottom half of the page where there's documents, you'll see a link to the IGF 2020 uh, draft timeline. Um, so it starts off with the announcement of the 2020 MAG, which happened in the, on the 25th of November. And I would like to thank you and Dessa, uh, particularly Wyman, who's here for pushing this, and also the Secretary General's office for the timely announcement of the um, 2020 MAG. And, and it did, it was very, very helpful to have the MAG um, announced before the meeting, the 2019 meeting, because it helped us prepare. And during the 2019 meeting, we could uh, really start and hit the road running right during that meeting. So uh, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> so um, we've had the um, IGF community call for inputs, which I read a summary of um, this morning, and that ended on the 10th of January, which was Friday. And then right now we are in the middle of the um, first open consultations and the two MAG uh, days of meetings will happen tomorrow and the day after where the MAG will discuss, uh, amongst other things, the timeline and uh, the intersessional work, et cetera. So that's happening this week. So we envision that um, we will launch the intersessional work on the 10th of February. That's the best practice forums and uh, the other intersessional work that we have. And if you are looking at this timeline, we do have um, a more detailed uh, description of what happens in each of these boxes um, below the box. So. At the end of this meeting, we hope to have approved um, the MAG working groups, um, have a general idea on the uh, shape of the program and general idea on the main themes, as well as um, ideas on the best practice forums. And what we are doing now is the um, strategic discussion, which includes um, the high level panel um, report and recommendations. So after that, we're going to have the call for workshops and other sessions. So this will be from the 2nd of March until the 15th of April. And this year, everything, all the deadlines will be on the 15th of April. That means for the um, workshops, for the, um, for the open forums, et cetera, so, and, for the, and also for the day zero, so that we don't have this um, venue shopping or if you fa fail in one venue, let's try in another venue. So we give everybody equal opportunity and that's why we are um, closing it on the 15th of April. Well, we propose to close it on the 15th of April. Um, this also is, as I said, a call for village booths, et cetera. And then uh, we have the evaluation, um, the workshop evaluation from the 20th of April to the 10th of May. And this is the MAG evaluating um, the workshops and choosing what workshops will be um, approved for the IGF 2020 session. Uh, we propose to have the second IGF open consultations and MAG meeting from 16th to 18th of June. Uh, I do, we do realize that 
summer holidays for the people in the northern hemisphere may begin in June, but these are the dates that we could um, get that don't coincide with an ICANN meeting or any other meeting that would draw away participants um, from the IGF meeting. And before that, uh, we do have some holidays like um, ID and et cetera. So we try, we, we, we try to skip those. So that's why we're having it in uh, June 16 to 18. Um, between June and August is the drafting of the IGF 2020, the plan of the um, IGF village and then uh, bilateral meeting requests, that's fine. And I'm sorry, I have to just drop one back. Uh, there's something important that I missed out, is invitations to high-level participants. Um, that begins in February until September. So we would be asking MAG and any other person, people from the community, if you think that there is somebody that needs to be invited to the IGF meeting, uh, the 2020 meeting, uh, please contact us and we will put the um, name on the list and then together with the host country and UNDESA, we will look at it and send invitations out to those people. If you could also please provide a justification, a small justification, because we may not be familiar with the name, but if that person will enhance the meeting, um, then yes, of course, uh, we are very well willing to uh, consider inviting them as well. Um, that's to say that, of course, the invitations are, I mean, the, the meeting attendance is um, open, but for those people uh, we think will enhance the meeting, we will uh, produce uh, formal invitations either from the government of Poland or from UNDESA or joint in invitations uh, from both of us. Um, the registration for IGF 2020 will be open from 15th of July to 6th of November. And again, uh, we always try and stress that people should register early so that you can get your visas early. And in case there's any visa problems, we can also assist together with the uh, Polish government, assist in getting those visas. Um, so the earlier you do it, the better it is for us. And then from June to November, there's the media and communication strategy that we'll be working out together with the MAG. There's a MAG working group on communications and strategy and also with the um, IDF secretary to UNDESA and the host country, we'll be working out a communications uh, strategy to inform people about the IGF. They are still a few people out there who are not too familiar with um, the IGF. And then um, from the 2nd to 6th of November is the IGF meeting in Katowice in Poland. And um, after that meeting, we hope to finalize the IGF outputs, the IGF 2020 outputs in um, 15th of December, just before everybody breaks for the Christmas break. Uh, this year, we last year we had a little bit of um, an issue because if people break for Christmas, it's very difficult to get them started up again until the 7th of January. So we will try and uh, really get that out and done by 15th of December, and we can distribute it through all our distribution channels. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the, the point is that there's still opportunity to participate in the shaping of the IGF um, this year in many different ways, probably too many different ways because it's quite confusing. But I really do urge those people in the room who have not been part of the IGF in the past to, to commit to be part of the IGF this year in one way or another. Um, you can approach um, anyone on the MAG, myself, the Secretariat, um, our co-hosts, um, to find out when, how, and, and why it's valuable for you to do that. Um, but I really do urge people. It's not as difficult as it might seem, and there are lots of different modalities. The IGF is a very flexible process, so it creates lots of different opportunities um, to participate and, and share your work. So on that note, thanks very much, um, Shengatai. I will bring to a close this part of the meeting, which was the briefing on the IGF. And we will now move into the, the second and the, the major part of our discussion this afternoon, which is the consultation on recommendation five of the UNSG's high-level panel on digital cooperation. Um, 
to, to open for us, um, thanks again, Fabrizio. I don't know if you're still with us um, for joining us and apologies for the technical challenges. Um, but to take us back and give us background um, and update us on, on the state of this process, I give the floor to David Kelly, joining us from New York. David is Strategic Planning Officer from the Executive Office of the Secretary General. Um, David, are you with us and can you hear us and are you ready? Yeah, no, yeah. I just want to confirm, can you hear my audio? We can hear you very clearly. Thanks, David. Go ahead. Thank you, Henriette. Uh, thank you for your work as chair. Thank you to the Swiss for hosting this event and to IGF public for both attending and, and dialing in online. Uh, I'll be, maybe briefly take the through um, where we've come since the launch of the report, uh, the current period, uh, take us forward in the short term to where we're going to be uh, 75 and up. We began in June when the launch of the report and um, consultations that took place after that is the feedback. Can I confirm you can hear Henriette? Yes, we can. Oh, sorry, I just hear some feedback there on the other side. Um, we had consultations informally with people here in New York and in Geneva, and then we issued, as Fabrizio said, emails to between 450 and, and 500 organizations that were involved not only in deliberations on the high-level panel report, but those who had been engaged actively in digital cooperation issues. We then had a briefing at a series of member state meetings here in New York, and we attended the um, IGF Berlin, where there were open discussions uh, on this topic uh, throughout the week, including introductory and closing remarks, remarks by Fabrizio. I was also there in, in Berlin and was pleased to meet so many of you there. After the IGF um, in Berlin, we embarked on a series of roundtable discussions for each of the eight recommendation areas. Now, there were originally 11 recommendations that were part of the uh, high-level panel report, but many of them were similar or connected, so we, we narrowed it down into eight. We didn't think that we'd want to have 11 roundtables. Uh, it was certainly enough to to try and manage. So we did we did have those multi-stakeholder roundtable discussions in December, uh, all eight of them. You can see that the summaries of those discussions, certainly the first three, uh, are posted online now at the UN website. Uh, the following three will be posted, uh, I believe, at the end of the day today, and we should have all of them by the end of this week, all eight summaries online. Uh, what I'll do, because I know some people have asked where those can be accessed, we're posting them on the UN Digital Cooperation website, but we are also going to be posting them on the uh, independent uh, Digital Cooperation website. And we're also going to be using our social media platform. It's going to be re-engaged uh, in the coming weeks to start sending those out via social media. If you have any questions about the roundtable process, if you have any questions about multi-stakeholder engagement or what was discussed, there is an email address that we've been trying to push out everywhere. Uh, which is digitalfeedback at un.org. Uh, our team checks this email every single day. We respond very quickly, uh, as quickly as we can. So we will make sure that the IGF Secretariat has access to this, uh, or at least has the details around these websites and the digital feedback email address, and that that will be sent out to everybody. Uh, if, if there's anybody who hasn't heard about the digital cooperation process or follow up, we can be sure that that goes out to them and that they have access to these roundtable discussions. And just to echo one final point from Fabrizio, and it is that these processes and these roundtables are not closed. If you're a constituent who has an interest in digital human rights, uh, artificial intelligence standards and, and ethics, if you're in, interested in uh, digital cooperation in the IGF Plus model, reach out to us and we will bring you on board and include you in those roundtable discussions. The roundtable groups are, are about 20 to 30 organizations at this point and you know we're, we're comfortable increasing it a little bit from there. So that's where we are we've had the eight roundtable discussions we've had great summaries these discussions were introductory now is meant 2020 to be the period of action and follow-up consultation periods are quite close we've had a lot of them it's now time for action and that's where we're going to be heading in the spring three months from now roughly in, in around april the idea is that the secretary general will publish a roadmap on digital cooperation the roadmap will be informed by the roundtable discussions. So the champions who have put their hands up to lead these roundtable discussions, and thanks to Germany and UAE for their leadership of roundtable five A and B, 
Those champions and the key constituents that make up those roundtable groups will advise our office on where they think action and success can be in the medium and longer term as it relates to the recommendations under their purview. So the IGF, the IGF process will be deliberated on within the 5AB. We are having side discussions as this one is with IGF. We will be having side discussions on a number of different roundtable areas. For instance, digital human rights will be massively discussed and the recommendation will be massively discussed at RightsCon in Costa Rica uh, in June of this year. Many different roundtables are engaging audiences far and wide on discussions to follow up to the recommendations. It's a new process. It's multi-stakeholder. It's not something we're doing um, traditionally in our office and we're really excited by it, although you'll have to bear with us uh, with regards to growing pains and engagement. And we do apologize if there is a sense that there hasn't been as much transparency as there should be. We are making every effort to be transparent. We will continue to do so as we go forward. We value transparency. And that's why we're seeking to publish as much information as much as we can going forward. So these discussions, these roundtables over the next two to three months will lead towards a Secretary General Roadmap on Digital Cooperation. Once we get past that publication, we will move quickly forward towards UN 75, which will take place in the fall of 2020. There's two recommendations that bear specifically on UN 75. Recommendation five, which calls for language on digital cooperation in the UN 75 declaration, and recommendation four, which calls for a commitment, a global commitment on digital trust and security. We will be accelerating discussions around implementation of that language and how it fits into the UN 75 as we go forward. We value input on those processes. Of the other six roundtables, it is envisioned that they will continue as long as they are useful to the audiences and the constituents that are there. The idea of AI governance, AI you know, principles, AI measurement, uh, AI standards, these are long, broad term questions as it relates to global internet connectivity, which is recommendation 1A, that's not going to be achieved in the next eight to 12 months. That is a longer term process and discussion. So the idea is that we would continue to have these conversations as, as they are deemed relevant. One final point just to close on, and, and this is to reinforce something that, that's uh, you know, a big priority for us, is we want to make sure that there is broad engagement from stakeholders of all groups, from stakeholders of all geographies, we're still far too, in our opinion, we're still far too focused on Western institutions, Western organizations and governments. And we are actively trying to engage more fully uh, with, uh, with the Global South institutions, both academic, civil society, technical and member states um, from the Global South. So if, if you do have interest in participating in the roundtables, I wanna make this plea here uh, that we continue to engage, that we talk further uh, and that you engage more fully in this process. So that's a bit of a summary, Henriette, if I haven't taken too much time of where we've come from, where we are and where we're going in the follow-up to the high-level panel process. Um, thank you very much, David. And David, will you stay around to respond to questions later on? Yes, I'm very pleased to. Thanks, Henriette. Okay. Good, so you'll be there. Thanks, David. And now next, um, I would like to give um, the floor again to our representatives from, from Germany, um, who is one of the champions. And, and, and maybe, Rudolf, if you can explain recommendation five to, to people who have not yet read the report or were, who were not part of the process. I think just so that we can see it um, through a, through a, from a broader uh, perspective. Um, and thanks very much for that input, David. Yes, thank you very much, Anriette, for this easy task you are um, giving me. So, um, the, the recommendation 5AB that has been talk about for some time now um, and for which we uh, as Germany together with um, Fabrizio Schild's office and the UAE are the champions, meaning not meaning we are the best, meaning we are championing, we are supporting, facilitating this recommendation and I will come later in my intervention to the point how we want to do this. Um, is the one recommendation in the report that has a structural nature. 
it's the recommendation um, that um, describes how options, how um, internet governance, um, digital cooperation governance can be structured, could be structured in the future. And um, it sets out three different um, models, I wouldn't say models, three different headlines with a little um, precision, precis precision after the headline. And um, the one headline that has been um, mentioned of a lot today is the one called the IGF plus model, meaning um, the IGF that it exists that, that is already existing um, could be strengthened um, by different um, ingredients to it. For instance, the question of how to make it more relevant, to how to make more relevant what is being discussed at the IGF for decision-making bodies, how to better ensure political guidance, how to better ensure <coughs> political um, interaction without making the IGF a decision-making body. Um, another idea that has been presented is the one of uh, the digital commons. Um, there is a debate going on what the term of digital commons really means. Um, there is, um, for instance, uh, for many of you who are perhaps uh, familiar with an international law background, the digital commons is a, uh, is a notion that is very well known in the law of the sea or in the law of the space. Um, um, it is probably not this kind of digital commons uh, architecture that is uh, being set out by the report. So, um, because we have here not a uh, natural resource that is um, um, belonging to the entire mankind, we have a privately owned resource, which is the internet. So, it is more about the question of how to together um, in an inclusive way manage this. And um, we have as a third, um, uh, as a third um, proposal um, some kind of uh, network of networks of, um, of several layers that are ex already <laughs> existing in the, in the world of the internet governance and that could be interlinked in a, in a more efficient way that could be also be more transparent in their interaction between each other so that everyone is all the time at the same level of information and that these uh, different um, processes that are going on, for instance, in the ITU, in the OECD, in, in the UNCTAD, in so many different fora, also non-state like the, like the World Economic, Economic Forum, um, could um, together be um, interlinked as some kind of network and of networks and out of this network of networks would result in some way, not yet defined how exactly, um, the future structure of the internet governance. So these are the three, these are the three um, institutional um, proposals which are probably not completely exclusive one to each other. Probably it is possible to um, combine them in a way so that the best elements of each of them could uh, feed into what at the end would be the proposed structure. There's one more element that is a little bit super superseding all these um, ideas that is the creation of a tech envoy and the Secretary General of the uh, United Nations at the Berlin IGF announced that he will um, designate this tech envoy in the near future. We don't know exactly when, but this has been announced. And um, so now what is our task? What is our task as champions and what is our common task? Um, as champions, we have, the, um, we have taken this um, uh, very seriously in a way not to um, like impose our view of how the structure should look like to anybody, but more as a facilitator, as a moderator, as someone together with the UAE and uh, the team of Fabrizio Hochschild, David Kelly and others, um, to, um, 
to uh, facilitate the process to be as transparent as possible and to bring on board as many views as possible on how to flesh out these um, ideas that have been presented in a coherent, structured and operational way. Maybe with all the input that we will get, um, we will not come um, out with one single um, solution, but perhaps with options to the uh, Secretary General and then he could take the responsibility and choose among the options that have been presented to him. Um, but uh, we in no way we uh, do, want, do we want to um, uh, steer or uh, dominate the process. We want to facilitate it and we are eager to learn what are the inputs that are coming from different sides um, in order to then, and that would be our task, to assemble them and to um, break down the input to perhaps two options or something like, or three options, something like that. So we are dependent on the input coming from you, the stakeholders, um, and in order to um, get your input, we have um, uh, conceived a um, roadmap for ourselves and together with our co-champions, which are the UAE, which could not be present today. That's why I am taking so much of the, of the speaking time. Um, and, um, and my colleague, um, Svanti Mecca from the Foreign Office, she will uh, present uh, on a more detailed basis later on where you will be able to um, participate, you or your colleagues or, or your friends. We have a very strong will to have this consultation process um, all over the world, not only in Western Europe, not only in North America, but also in the Global South, Latin America, um, Africa, uh, Asia, and other places, so that we can really get, we can go to the stakeholders, get their input on the ground. We don't want to be anybody left out. We want everybody to be involved in this process. So in order to have a very well uh, balanced and broad based uh, input at the end. Um, I, um, Svanti Mecca will, um, will uh, say more about this uh, towards the end, but I just want to flag that there will be, there is now, from, from now on, I'm pushing the button on my mobile phone, there is a website online where all the uh, um, uh, events that we are planning um, can be seen and uh, you can participate and everything, the information that you need. Um, the um, name is www.digital-cooperation, um, sorry, that's my fault, www.global-cooperation.digital, that's it. It's online now. I think for the moment, I stop there, Henriette. Um, thank you very much, um, Rudolf. Um, and you know, it's a, it's. I think it's um, it's really important that this this work is done and that it's it's done inclusively. And I think it's complex work. I think um, some of you might recall the working group on enhanced cooperation, which was convened by the chair of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development. Um, in response to the UN General Assembly resolution on the WISIS plus 10 in, in 2015, which also um, looked at, at cooperation and, and what is involved in enhancing it. So I think this is, it's challenging work, and I think um, it is work that needs to be done and, and needs to be done um, inclusively. Um, and I want to buy us a little bit of time. So I am going to ask, uh, um, because we, we're running a little bit late, um, but I do want to open the floor. Are there any questions for clarification uh, on what you've heard thus far? Next, what we'll hear is the presentation of the IJF Plus model, um, and then we'll go into a discussion um, uh, until the closing. But if there are any questions um, for clarification, um, that you have for 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 David um, or for Rudolf, please um, put up your flag. I see 
Carlos Afonso in the speaking queue. So Carlos, you have the floor. And, and let's keep it to questions, are you not? No, you're withdrawing. Just questions for clarification at this point. Nothing at this point. So now, and this will be the final input uh, before we go into to open um, discussion on this, um, we have Jovan um, Kurbalia, who was one of the executive directors of the high-level panel on digital cooperation, who will present to us um, a schematic of, of, of how to help us think and visualize what is meant by IGF+. Plus. So, Jovan, you have the floor. Will you be speaking from, from your chair? Well, it's, it's great to, uh, to be back at the IGF. Thank you, Andriette. Thank you, Switzerland and Germany, for hosting this discussion. And uh, a lot uh, has been said already by, uh, by, uh, by Fabrizio Hotschild and colleagues here at the panel about the uh, conclusions, about the recommendation five. And as uh, it was indicated, the proposal IGF Plus is one of the proposals. In the preparation for this session, uh, I was basically going through the document to the outline of the report and what has been done uh, so far in the IGF context. As you know, we structured the work on the report around a few issues. The first, uh, identifying gaps, then focusing on the function, and at the end, uh, suggesting some uh, uh, forms or solution how to address those, uh, how to address those gaps. And while I was going through the gaps, uh, I just produced one document, ad hoc document. I have a few copies, you may, you may take it. Uh, 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 it was clear that IGF is already, next one, please. Uh, IGF is already uh, addressing quite a few gaps. One of the gaps was the low status and visibility on global political agenda. We have uh, so far two IGFs uh, which were opened by, by Secretary General and the heads of governments of uh, states uh, in uh, both in France and uh, in Switzerland, France and Germany. We probably still uh, need a bit of more, uh, more of media coverage because as you can recall in Berlin, there were more articles in global media on dot uh, org uh, controversy than on the IGF. Uh, for the working group on the, on, the, on the media visibility should put more efforts. Then there was a question of a desire for more uh, tangible outcomes. Uh, IGF, as Henriette indicated, has uh, quite a few uh, best uh, practices forum outcomes. IGF meeting message, improved host country, country report. What is basically, uh, and I can go through the, through the all uh, gaps or I can distribute these documents with more, more details, but I will try to return to, the, to this uh, schema and the sort of visualization of possible IGF plus uh, uh, function. Before I go to that, it's important to highlight that uh, the, we are not starting from the scratch. IGF is, uh, has been doing quite a few significant improvements. Therefore, uh, while one can be critical on, of some shortcomings, one should also highlight, especially after Berlin, the major breakthroughs and achievements. IGF Plus model uh, has a few uh, inbuilt advantages comparing to the other models. As it was already indicated, probably the solution should be found through the comp combination of different models. But as we know, IGF has a mandate in the Tunis Agenda, Article 72. At this, oh, we have the youth yeah. joining us. Excellent. Well. That's, 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 the, that's the missing community which we should uh, engage more. Rights of future generations. Good. Uh, well, uh, when, when it's also a reminder and a reality check when we get into uh, abstract discussions that there is, uh, there is important consideration in this context. First is a mandate. We shouldn't underestimate that because, uh, as we know, currently to get the new mandate in multilateral space is almost, if not impossible, extremely difficult. And that mandate is a very generous, you know, very generous when it comes to possible improvements and enhancements of the IGF. Second point, IGF is uh, still the only place in international uh, sphere, in the international environment, 
which addresses digital issues in holistic way. We heard from, uh, from Bill about, uh, about uh, dynamics in the WTO, there are in OECD, but there is it's the, still the only place under the UN umbrella which addresses the digital issues and internet issues in, the, in a holistic or multidisciplinary way. It is multi-stakeholder, it exists, it tested the many procedures and processes and uh, it is a huge advantage. Therefore, my strong plea for the IGF community would be to, to consider some of those proposals and to use this context with the HLB uh, uh, consultations to uh, further develop IGF, whatever it is called, IGF plus, small plus, big plus, enhanced, well, enhanced, one has to be careful of using this, uh, this uh, description. Now, the discussion at the panel was guided by the identified gaps and what we uh, identify after discussion were more or less three new, uh, or not new, three, three spaces, you can call them um, new policy spaces or even bodies within the IGF, but I would be careful about going too far in that context. One is cooperation accelerator. Uh, you probably realize that we use terminology incubator accelerator. One of the idea was to outreach to people who are outside the UN and policy context, therefore high tech communities, people who gather around web summit and other places. The function of cooperation accelerator is exactly uh, to do what Bill indicated in the relation to WTO, how to connect what's going on with WTO on e-commerce with the IGF dynamics, how to make these processes more inclusive, informed, or I can mention OECD and digital taxation process, which is currently co-governed by OECD and G20. Some interplay with the, with the IGF would be, would be extremely useful. This is within multilateral framework. Then we have Web Summit. We have so many important uh, digital events which are completely out of sync with the, with the policy processes. Therefore, that cooperation accelerator should connect as many dots as is possible. Second uh, element is a policy incubator, place where uh, can, uh, well, as the name goes, incubate new ideas, policy proposals, in some cases even discuss possibility of norms as the as the Global Commission of Cyber Stability has been, uh, has been doing very successfully. It was identified as a clear gap. We heard from many actors and stakeholders that nobody wants and expects from IGF to be normative uh, or uh, rule-making organizations. But there is some hope that IGF could be place where the, these new policies and norms can be discussed and then provided to the private sector, governments, international organization for a possible follow-up and adoption. The idea is to have it very decentralized, obviously multi-stakeholder and follow the overall spirit of the IGF. And the third, let's say, part is observatory and policy help desk. Throughout the constant, uh, consultations, and I think that that would be the shared point in this room, there is underlying point that people have perceived, it could be just perception, that there are no places where they can address their policy issues. The least developed countries, the more concerns are where to go and how to address the policy issues. This perception is to the some extent misguiding because there are more than 1,000 policy processes and spaces. But one, again, should help stakeholders, especially from small and developing countries, to connect the dots, to find the places where they will address their concerns in the child safety, e-commerce, uh, whatever, whatever are the, the, the issues. And the IGF has the legitimacy of the UN, it has the legitimacy of multi-stakeholder process, it has been around for quite some time, and it could be a possible space which can coordinate the networks of help desks or observatories. The underlying uh, spirit, and uh, with that I will uh, uh, conclude, is to include uh, buy-in for the IGF. 
one element which at least uh, motivated me to be part of the IGF process that IGF rarely imposed itself as the place to do things. It was moving by attraction, by engaging, by providing value-add element. And those are some of the value-add elements around cooperation, around policy incubator, around the, around the, the help, help desk. And that would be, in summary, the logic uh, behind the IGF Plus proposal, starting from the gaps and moving to the functions, and these three possible policy spaces uh, that could be developed in the IGF framework. And one, the last comment, we have already embryonic elements, like best uh, practice coalitions that could serve as a possible policy incubators. Well, I would see this progress more as evolution than a revolution when it comes to the possible shift towards uh, IGF+. Plus. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that, um, Jovan. That's very useful to, to, to see it represented in that way. Um, and I think, but, but I think my understanding is that the consultation process is still ongoing. So I don't think people should feel that they are presented with this as a package deal. Um, so in fact, that, that's precisely what this whole process is about. So to open our discussion of this, I want to give the floor to Jorge Cancio, who, who is going to give us a brief summary of what the response was in Berlin um, to these proposals. And then we'll open to, to, to the rest of, uh, of, of the, the participants in the room and remote participants. But Berlin was an important moment and there was a substantial discussion on this. So just can, uh, Jorge, are you ready to go? Hello, uh, good afternoon. And this is Jorge Cancio from the Swiss government. Um, there is actually um, a session report on the session in the IGF in Berlin, which uh, dealt with this specifically. So I will post the link to the, to the chat and, or I guess the secretariat can also um, uh, distribute the link and I will go over very briefly because I think that uh, time is uh, running short uh, to the main points of uh, that discussion. So uh, this was the main session we had in Berlin on internet governance and digital cooperation. It was on the 26th of uh, November and uh, there uh, we had uh, uh, amongst others, Fabrizio Hochschild participating and uh, uh, with the moderation uh, from the then uh, MAC chair, Lynn Senamur, and the co-host, uh, uh, the, the host uh, the chair, uh, Ms. Daniela Brunstrup, and also the moderation by uh, Ambassador Fonseca from Brazil. Um, it was explained, and we have heard this uh, again in greater detail now, how the co-champions, Germany, UAE, and the office of uh, Mr. Hochschild itself were selected uh, for running, uh, for championing, as Rudolf said before, this uh, process on recommendations 5A and 5B of the high-level panel report. And uh, the uh, Undersecretary General Hochschild uh, summarized the purpose of the panel to present recommendations on how to strengthen cooperation in the digital space among relevant actors at a scale that really fits or addresses the dimension of the challenges we are witnessing in the digital space. Uh, he also made the point very clear that it's uh, important to make efforts and progress in the inclusion of the digital cooperation arrangements, especially with the Global South. Um, there was a very lively discussion 
where uh, there was widespread support from uh, all intervening stakeholders uh, to the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance, whilst uh, some uh, intervenants also made the point that you have to combine uh, this multi-stakeholder approach with also the multilateral or more traditional intergovernmental settings and uh, ways of working. Um, then uh, also, as uh, Rudolf uh, mentioned before, uh, was mention of the three models or approaches uh, uh, presented in the high-level panel report on how to go about these improvements in uh, digital cooperation. And uh, there was uh, also mentioned that they don't need to be mutually exclusive and maybe combined. Um, also in line with, uh, with uh, what we have been discussing this afternoon, um, there was uh, a highlighting by uh, stakeholders that there has been a lot of progress made in the IGF since its inception, but uh, turning back to the gaps identified by the high-level panel, uh, there is a need to uh, link uh, better the discussions in the IGF with other processes uh, and also especially with UN processes. Um, there was also reference to the, um, ref to the uh, recent discussions on the need to have, uh, let's say, stronger regulation or to approach regulation on some of the um, phenomena which are happening in internet governance with some um, um, proposing a greater role for governments, but many also cautioned against a splintering of efforts and pointed out the need for coordination. Um, there was um, expression by some on, uh, of concern regarding the transparency uh, until Berlin uh, of, the, of this process of roundtables and on implementation on, of the recommendations. But uh, as we have witnessed today, at least in my personal opinion, there has been a lot of progress in that regard. And we now have even a dedicated website for the Recommendation 5 process. Um, then uh, let's say that uh, there was a discussion on the three approaches, uh, the IGF Plus, the COGOV, and the Digital Commons uh, proposed in the high-level panel report. Most of the people who expressed their opinions favored the IGF Plus, although some also expressed the possibility of taking elements from the other models which could be um, useful. Uh, drilling uh, deeper on the IGF, there was a uh, reference to uh, the need of more inclusive participation, highlighting the efforts made by Germany for uh, reaching out to Global South stakeholders for the Berlin IGF. Of course, uh, all these improvements need more stable funding. Uh, we need to nurture um, all these uh, improvements with uh, uh, support and with uh, finance, with funds. Um, there was also reference that uh, while the IGF has to remain uh, bottom-up and community-driven, and we can uh, better integrate NRIs, the youth, and other communities, there is still a gap to be bridged between a pure dialogue and decision making. And uh, uh, at the same time, some underlined that the IGF should remain non-decision making forum or a non-negotiating forum, so to say. Um, regarding the specifics or the specific uh, arrangements part of the IGF plus, 
uh, as the cooperation accelerator, there was uh, uh, support by some participants to this and uh, also mentioned that this would allow for better coordinating existing processes and initiatives dealing with digital policy issues and bringing, for instance, uh, what happens outside of the IGF, like the Paris call or the Christchurch call into the proceedings of the IGF itself. And finally, uh, there were only few uh, interventions specifically referring to the two other approaches of the high-level panel report. There was uh, support for the appointment of the tech envoy and the need that there is uh, a good and uh, smooth uh, synergies between this new role and uh, the IGF. Uh, um, recalling how this used to be in the early days of the IGF with uh, former Under Secretary General Nitin Desai, who used to be the special advisor to Kofi Annan on these issues. Um, I think this is it. So I hope this has been uh, useful uh, for all of you. Thanks for that, Jorge. And now. Um Let's open the floor to the room and remote participants. Uh, consider all the remaining agenda items merged. We're now going to have um, questions, discussions, suggestions for implementation, um, and any other proposals. The only thing to keep in mind is that David Kelly can only be with us for about another 10 minutes. So if there are any specific questions for, for them, let's hear those first. But he will be represented by his colleagues. So um, don't feel too constrained by that. And we thank New York for their presence. So yes, I, I, I open the floor for discussion on interrogating, critiquing, and suggestions for implementation. Um, of this model and questions to, to the champions. Our speaking queue is still empty. Flags, we have Bill Drake. Anyone else at this point? Sandra, okay. So, um, Bill, you're not using the speaking queue, which is fine. You have the floor, then we have Sandra, then Rahul. Bill, you have the floor. Um, okay, uh, I think that the, uh, the framework that's outlined in the report is a welcome starting point, but I agree with what uh, the chair said earlier that we should view this as that, as a starting point and recognize that more ideas can be on the table. Um, my predilection is to say that the way forward for thinking about uh, the evolution of the IGF should be well informed by the past 15 years of debate and activity around the IGF. Um, many of us who are, have been involved in this stuff since the WISIS uh, have been party to discussions about uh, the ways in which the institutional framework could be uh, rendered more optimal. Um, and the high level report, I think, is a welcome addition to that discussion but it would be, to me, sort of odd if it, um, if the whole discussion then pivoted only to the, those pages of this report, um, given the way the process was done, uh, rather than accepting the possibility of uh, broader kinds of range of ideas being on the table. So um, I hope that we can have an open and inclusive discussion around these issues um, going forward. Uh, my own view is, you know, I strongly support the, the idea of an observatory or help desk. Uh, I've written about this in the past uh, and called it uh, a um, clearinghouse function, but whatever. I think that there's, the, there's a real case to be made for the IGF playing a sort of knowledge bank, information sharing uh, role that's unique. Um, with regard to the um, some of the other elements of, of the model that's been laid out, um, you know, the cooperation accelerator and the policy incubator, I'm not clear uh, how much buy-in internationally there will be um, to launch and sustain cooperation in these manners. Um, but if it were to come, uh, 
then there's the question of operational. Is, are these the best ways to engineer what's needed uh, for the IGF? Um, as I look at the, the Jovan gave me this nice paper. Is it, I could just imagine the fun you guys had in the, in the panel, a drawing on a whiteboard with circles and lines connecting things and saying uh, the, work will, the work will flow like this. Okay, I, I know, but I'm sure that there were discussions like that. And um, the problem is, though, it's easy in those kinds of panels. We've all been on so-called high-level panels uh, that try to tackle different aspects of Internet related policy and governance and have come forward with different kinds of models and so on. And you try to think out of the box, you try to think about new innovative ways to do things. It's possible that we can over engineer things in that process without actually um, thinking through how in practice this would really work. How much would people really pick up this process and utilize it and sustain it? Um, so I'm a bit unclear about that, but perhaps these processes going on in New York that I didn't know about um, will clarify all of that. Um, my own view is that it would be, and I will con conclude, um, my personal preference is that for something more along the lines of the kinds of things many of us were debating 15 years ago, um, which was that the IGF could be a place for more structured thematic discussions where you took, you know, maybe two or three issues uh, per year and had a year-long preparatory process through working groups or whatever, networks, whatever you wanted to call it, to develop um, serious knowledge-based inputs that could be utilized in having a broad collective discussion uh, around those issues with an eye not towards necessarily drafting, negotiating recommendations, which I know everybody doesn't want to do, but to at least have a structured walkthrough of topics and an outcome document that summarizes the discussions in way, ways that capture the areas of agreement and disagreement. Um, I still think that that would be useful. And we've seen models that work like this, uh, the Net Mundial, even, you know, the, in an intergovernmental way, the ITU's World Tel Telecom Policy Forum do this kind of like long, structured, focused interrogation of a couple of issues and try to fo foster focused conversations around those. And you could do like that in a couple of days and then have a couple of days of workshops that were thematically related, that explored and took elements of those discussions and drilled down into more detail. Or as I've often thought, you could have a day that was focused on developing country concerns in particular, uh, like IG4D type day. There's a lot of different ways to think about how the IGF could be improved. So I guess I'm just saying the, the, the model that's articulated in this report is one, it's interesting, it, we should certainly talk it through and try to see what it would really mean operationally, but we should also keep uh, open, I would think, to some other possible trajectories. Thanks, thanks for that, Bill. Before we go on to, to the next speakers, David, are you still with us and do you want to say anything before you leave? No, that's fine. I am here and I have listened and I appreciate uh, the most recent intervention from Mr. Drake and, and I think the best way to do would be to connect uh, directly. So I'm, I'm here listening. Uh, colleagues are also going to be on the line and we have colleagues in the room to follow up on any specific questions. So I'll sign off for now. Thanks for that, David. And I think, Bill, that's exactly what this phase of roundtables and consultation is actually trying to, to unpack. So it's good to be a devil's advocate on, on this. And next, I'm very pleased to give the floor to Sandra. Um, Hofrichter, you can introduce yourself, Sandra. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Henriette. Uh, as the new chair of the IGF, I also congratulate you and very happy to have you leading us. Um, um, actually, I prepared after the IGF uh, a statement that um, I wanted to distribute among NRIs about the national and regional IGFs asking for support and um, Christmas time preparations and all these made it not easy. So 
Um, basically, now I'm coming too late because, on the other hand, I'm very happy to see that what I was preparing or what we were preparing at Eurodic basically is already implemented in this uh, website, what uh, Rudolf Griedel uh, just mentioned us, because you can see in the timeline of activities that um, there will be a, a consultation, a grassroots consultation leveraging national and regional IGFs. And I would take that opportunity to very much thank the champion of recommendation 5A and B to be so forward-looking in terms of including national and regional IGFs. Um, I would encourage all the NRIs coordinators that are in the room to participate in this process actively because what came out of our gathering in this respect in, at the IGF was that um, that we basically recommend that national and regional IGF structures um, to be used to support the consultation process that are currently being established, follow up on the recommendation in particular A and 5, uh, um, 5A and B. It appears that the IGF plus model, which basically enjoys a lot of broad support within the community, but also among NRIs, its implementation would benefit from the perspective of the NRIs because some elements of the proposed uh, IGF plus model have similarities with mechanisms and initiatives that are already in place or are existing in some countries and regions. The success and the lessons learned from these initiatives could serve as a valuable input to the subsequent work on the IGF plus model and broader digital cooperation mechanisms. So basically I'm very happy to see that this has been taken into account before even calling for it. And I personally, and also I think my colleagues from CDIC, we are looking very much forward to contribute to that process. And maybe also the IGF secretariat, Anya could take up this uh, initiative and manage the global NRIs to contribute to that process in uh, giving input to, in particular, this, this track on recommendation 5A and B. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Sandra. Um, next, we have Raul um, Echeverria, remote participant. Thank you, Henriette. Um, first of all, I, I think uh, <clears throat> I agree 100% with uh, what uh, Rudolf uh, from um, the German government said before in the sense that the alternatives that are, are proposed in the report are not exclusive to each other. I think that this is a, a key uh, concept to keep in mind, that we don't have to choose one. Uh, but however, the IGF plus is a must in my view. So that should be the basis. So we have to implement the IGF plus and add components from the other models that are very useful, are, are very well designed and well uh, thought. But so if we, if we have to implement the IGF plus, we have to evolve toward this new IGF and we have to introduce several improvements. Uh, we already covered some of them in the, in the discussion this morning, so I, I, I will not repeat them. But let me come back to the proposal, specifically to the proposal of having that high level session at the end of the meeting instead of at the beginning uh, to discuss the outcomes of the different tracks. I think that that idea is crucial in order to achieve one of the objectives, that is to produce the uh, valuable outcomes uh, for the global community. Because the, the, having the, that discussion at the end of the meeting would give more value and more legitimacy to the outputs and outcomes of the meeting and to the, all, uh, the annual process. Uh, we are now producing several outputs, but they are not uh, uh, very visible later after the, the IGF. And so finishing the annual meeting with a high level session would change that uh, in very significant uh, way. My second comment is more conceptual. Uh, the IGF uh, was conceived at the beginning as the central component of the, IG, the internet governance ecosystem. And it worked well at that time because the, the number of forums that we had was much smaller than now. But the, the world now is absolutely different. There are many initiatives uh, most of them bottom-up initiatives where IG related issues are discussed. <laughs> so the, some governments sometimes this, uh, decide that they will uh, meet a, in a new mechanism to discuss a specific issue or, or civil society organizations or a multi-stakeholder um, multi forums. And we cannot tell the community how and where they have discussed uh, a given issue. 
So we have to recognize that the new IG ecosystem is a big network of forums and organizations. And the IGF Plus will not be longer the central piece of the IG ecosystem, but it will be a fundamental component of the IG ecosystem. Not necessarily the central one, but a fundamental uh, component. And this is a big change in the, in, the, in, in the concept on how we conceive the, the IGF uh, from now. So if, uh, if we want to address the concern mentioned Yes, by this morning about the lack of accountability, about how to, uh, how to take the outcomes further after the IGF, it is crucial to work in the communication among multiple forums and organizations, including NRIs, understanding the role of each of them, and keeping in mind that most of the policy making happens at the, at the national level. And so the, the big objective of all the IG ecosystem should be that those decisions at the local level are taken in a very well informed um, uh, way with the participation of uh, as much stakeholders as possible, depending on each of the, of the, of the topics. In the comments I submitted to the report of the uh, high level panel, as I included a chart that uh, tries to uh, show how the different uh, pieces of the, of the ecosystem uh, interact to each other. It's a work in progress, I think, uh, and I appreciate any, any comment or feedback on that, if we can improve it, and I invite uh, all of you to, to visit the comment that is available on the internet and, and to see if, uh, if that chart makes uh, any sense. My last comment is about the other ideas that, that are included in the recommendations, the help desks, uh, regional hubs, uh, the incubator, the accelerator of uh, um, initiatives, and, and I think all of them are very good ideas. One thing that, uh, that we have to be careful about is that we cannot impose them. There are already a lot of original forums and mechanisms, and it is important that we, we don't impose new mechanisms to them. What is important is that we work with them in order to build new ways of cooperation together. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Raul. It's a hear the voice of experience in this. Um, next, um, I give the floor to um, uh, Paul Blecker from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm Paul Blecker. I speak for the UK government. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this discussion. I think it's very good that the MAG is having this discussion. Um, we have welcomed the reports of the high-level panel. Uh, we've welcomed the consultations which have taken place over the last eight months or so and welcome the strong support emerging for the IGF plus model, particularly uh, in the discussions in Berlin. The IGF has continued to change and improve over its lifetime and we must thank Germany and the other previous hosts for the huge contribution that they have made to that process. But the challenges we face now and will face in the future do require new reforms and improvements. And we think that after the consultations that we've had so far, we now need to start thinking about identifying and developing concrete steps to make the IGF Plus model a reality. Uh, and in the UK, we've been uh, thinking about this in six broad areas. Uh, and I will just run through those six quickly, if I may. Uh, the first is around policy issues, and I think Raoul touched on this earlier. Uh, we think each annual IGF meeting should focus on a smaller number of specific policy issues. In the past, the themes have been rather generic, and the danger of very generic themes is the lack of focus, and people don't feel there is a, a need to be there. Uh, so we think that um, having more specific issues identified would help. The second is around uh, the role of local and regional initiatives and finding stronger routes for national, regional IGFs to contribute to the discussions at the global IGF. If the policy issues can be identified much earlier, it would give uh, local initiatives more time and an opportunity to prepare and then if we could find some more concrete and perhaps formal ways of taking the messages from those local and regional IGFs as an input into the global meeting, it would both help promote inclusion 
and embed a much more global perspective in the annual IGF. Um, thirdly, uh, we've been thinking about the structure of the meetings um, and how they are, if you like, curated. So absolutely, the IGF should remain bottom-up and led by stakeholder contributions, but they need to be curated and given a clearer shape in order to make the debate more coherent and easy to follow. So, for example, the opening sessions could perhaps present the policy issues to be addressed, there could be workshops during the week looking at the detailed aspects of those issues and then the final day should bring that work together to identify board outcomes and in that way the week would have a much clearer shape. Fourthly, uh, we do think that the IGF should uh, produce outcomes. Um, it should not become a negotiating body and the IGF should not be expected to agree by consensus outcomes on every issue, but there should be clear outcomes on the policy issues reflecting the discussions during the week. Those outcomes may identify areas of consensus or they may identify areas of difference or areas where further work is needed, but we do need to have clearer outcomes. Uh, the fifth point is around the role of the MAG and how can we empower the MAG and give it a more strategic role for this new uh, strengthened IGF. Um, we looked at some of the functions set out in policy indicator, uh, incubate, incubators or accelerators uh, and those other ideas. Actually, we think a lot of those functions really should be within the MAG uh, if the MAG is going to play the strategic role that we need in terms of identifying issues, convening discussions, uh, helping to build an evidence base and preparing for, for the IGF itself. Uh, and we should be thinking about how to empower, em, empower the MAG rather than setting up lots of new committees which have disadvantages in terms of resource and inclusion uh, and just everybody's time. Um, and then finally, um, the sixth point was um, how the IGF can develop more of a strong corporate identity of its own guided by the MAG um, as, as a convener and custodian of multi-stakeholder dialogue and a, and a champion of inclusive multi-stakeholder dialogue. Um, that means looking at having a better and clearer website, for example, clearer communications. Perhaps the chair of the MAG should be given a stronger leadership and representational role uh, and there are different ideas there. Certainly the outcomes of the IGF need to be communicated more clearly uh, including across the UN system. Uh, but the IGF needs to take on, needs to find ways of taking on that stronger and more clearer corporate identity of its own. Um, so these are the six main areas that we've been looking at uh, and, and we hope that now uh, we can start to share these kinds of ideas on concrete proposals so that we, we, we know the direction that we need to aim for. Um, my last comment is uh, around the um, the round table and, and the work going forward there and we would like very much to thank both Germany and the UAE for the work they are doing in championing this recommendation. We strongly support an inclusive process but it's also important not to forget that we have already had eight months of discussions and consultations and that should be fully taken into account. Um, we're thinking in particular, Jorge talked about the discussions at the global IGF. Sandra mentioned the uh, Eurodig, which had a very extensive consultation exercise over the summer and the autumn. Um, the, the website, which I've just had a look at, is an excellent initiative. Thank you very much for all the work that's gone into that. But I wonder if it's possible for that website to include a record of all the previous consultations which have taken place so that they are not lost. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. But that, re that, that immediately reminded me of my son, who seems to be well on the way to being a student for the rest of his um, adult life. <laughs> so I think, yes, discussions do need to be intensive and comprehensive, but they also cannot be endless. They do need to have some kind of um, finite point until we start implementing. Next, the floor goes to vote. Thank you, Chair. 
my name is Walter Natus, and I said I run my own consultancy. But also, I'm not just representing myself here, but there are many people supporting in funding or in actual support to make the work I do possible, which is until more on Thursday. And I said I would present on Thursday, but I, because of the discussion, I'm going to highlight a little bit which is relevant to this discussion. But not before I compliment Paul on his comments, because it reflects the report strengthening cooperation within the IGF almost 100%. And just as a reminder, that report was based on a workshop held on the day zero in Geneva in 2017, where 33 different organizations participating in the IGF contributed to ideas how the IGF could actually strengthen their cooperation. And I won't say that everything is 100%, but these sort of ideas are reflected by our community. So it's not just something, somebody saying something in a report, but it's widely supported if we actually start going forward that way. To reflect on my own work and why this is relevant right now, because some people said things about we have to make the internet more secure, more safe, we have to work together harder on that. And if we don't understand the following, and that's what I'll be saying a little bit more extensive about on Thursday, is that if we talk about internet security, then a lot of people think about completely different types of security. What I've been working on is internet standards. And if you think of internet standards, then you reach the public core of the internet. And I think that most nations at this point in time think that that part of the internet should not be attacked, abused, either by nation states or by other actors. And if you go into the norms and law discussion, reaching the public core of the internet, then internet standards are not included as far as I know, and I'll take a caveat, a serious caveat there, as far as I've been known and been told, are not a part of official laws, official agreements, etc. So in other words, if you're talking about protecting the core of the internet, which is the DNS system, the, the, the DNS system, the routing system, the email, etc., is there we leave the defense of that public core completely in the hands of, of industry and other organizations. So in other words, if you look at norms and laws, and I reflect back on this document that has been shown earlier this morning by the people of the Hague uh, Center of Strategic Studies, norms, or oh, sorry, the, the, the internet standards are only discussed in a very isolated part of norms and laws, which is connected to only one node in the whole discussion. And that is a node which is what I translate as shoulda, woulda, coulda. In other words, nothing is official, nothing is really documented, and when we talk about the public core of the internet, we're talking about sta internet standards like the DNS system, etc., which are completely unknown to most people in the world. In other words, they're totally unused. So people say there's a lack of a business case. No, it's a completely unknown situation, unknown territory. So there's no need to, re to take a business case, there's no need to take action because whether you do or don't, literally nobody cares because nobody says, oh, well done, or nobody, nobody says, oh, you should be doing this. So in other words, if we talk about internet security, the whole narrative of this discussion needs to change because a lot of people need to become involved and informed. So that's just a highlight from what I'm going to present on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, um, Bart. Next, Ben Wallace. Thank you, Henriette. So um, I speak um, as a Microsoft representative and, um, and give uh, some sense of, of how we're looking at this potential move towards an IGF plus. As was said earlier, um, the IGF always seeks to improve the way it works. Um, and I would see the move towards an IGF plus as more of an evolution than a revolution, although clearly a more substantial leap forward than, than the iterative improvements that the Secretariat, the MAG and the host country try to take each year. Uh, so let me give you some examples from the envisaged functions of a potential IGF plus of why I see it as more of an evolution than a revolution. For example, I'd agree with Bill Drake that an IGF plus uh, would be well placed to act as a help desk and I've been among those in the past that has 
said there's value in finding ways to, to better organize the outputs and the reports from previous meetings to serve some kind of repository of really valuable um, information. And uh, separately, uh, as a facilitator of one of the best practice forums, um, I co-signed a statement back in October, which set out the parallels between um, the, the envisaged function of a cooperation accelerator and the way that the BPS have, have worked in the last few years. So I, I'll also just give you a sense of the direction that Microsoft would like to see the IGF going. I think um, maybe this was Jovan that said this, but one of the panelists has said earlier, I would agree the, the IGF is the one international venue where all stakeholders can come together on an, on an equal footing to have open and inclusive discussions on a range of internet policy issues. And we believe there is inherent value in, in that simple function of bringing people together, bringing together such a broad range of stakeholders, of views and experiences and ideas. Uh, it enables us to learn about new topics or to learn new perspectives on issues we're already familiar with. And we can then take back ideas or connections and back home with us and feed them into the companies or organizations that we work for. We do support the move towards clearer, more concise, and more widely disseminated outputs to represent the discussions at the annual meetings, including uh, where there are areas of consensus. Uh, and I think there's been a really positive movement in this area just over the last um, couple of years. And these are valuable written outputs alongside the recommendations and the best practices um, developed by the other various intersessional work streams. But we think it really is important to retain significant space within any expanded IGF so that it continue to serve as a forum where views are exchanged uh, and people can learn from and get to know each other. So I think it, it would be a mistake to look for more concrete outputs or new functions in a way that would would turn the IGF into a negotiating forum and would dilute the energy that enables such a rich exchange of views. Thanks very much. Um, we have two more people and I, I, I'd like us to, if anyone else wants to take the floor, please join the speaking queue now because I want to allow, allow enough time for, for, for the champions um, to respond. So, um, Good, so we'll leave it open for like another minute and then um, Luis, we can, we can close it. Next, we have Susan Chalmers. Thank you, Henriette, for giving me the floor and a warm welcome to you in your new role as MEG Chair. Um, my name is Susan Chalmers. I am with the National um, Telecommunications and Information Administration, U.S. Department of Commerce, but offering comments uh, here on behalf of the U.S. government. Um, to continue my thanks, I'd like to thank Rudolf BMWI, the German government, and the German IGF community writ large on an outstanding IGF. Also, thank you to our prospective hosts from Poland, and to our co-chair, the deputy minister, for your support for the IGF 2020. We look forward to working with you. I'd like to recognize the um, thoughtful intervention from our colleague from the UK and also uh, some of Ben's uh, most recent points. The US also encourages um, improvements to the IGF and in line with Bill's intervention, there is a large corpus of work to draw upon uh, which should figure into discussions on the evolution of the IGF both within and without the context of recommendation number five. We appreciate the concrete efforts towards transparency by the Undersecretary and his team on the HLPDC recommendation discussions, including the posting of the minutes. Um, and the U.S. government looks forward to further details and more clarity on the process leading up to and following the roadmap that was just mentioned. Um, and especially on the ideas or goals and proposed formats for the outcome. Um, for example, the options, options presented to the Secretary General, um, uh, Rudolph, as you had mentioned. Um, so just very brief intervention. I just want to thank you, um, Henriette, Chair, and also Thomas, uh, for having this open and transparent discussion during the open consultations today. 
Thank you very much, um, Susan. And next we have Paul Charlton from Canada. And that's it. We're closing the, the, um, the floor now. Paul, you have the mic. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I wanted to uh, join others in welcoming you as, our, as the new chair of the MAG. And uh, hello to, to other uh, colleagues and, and stakeholders who are here and online. Um, I just wanted to, to make a few brief comments. Um, I, I think that we as the Government of Canada, we are, are participating in some of the activity following up on the HLP report. We're following some of the roundtables, including the roundtable relating to uh, recommendations 5A and 5B. Um, I, I welcome the, 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 the consultations that are taking place, the ones that have taken place as we've it's been described to us, there have been already very extensive consultations. Um, and also I thank the, the Swiss government for co-hosting this uh, consultation session. Uh, I think there are um, uh, uh, some aspects that, that are worth uh, addressing. I, I would like to thank uh, Under Secretary General Hochschild and, and also David Kelly from his office for their uh, explanation of the, uh, uh, of the um, HLP follow-up process uh, and also for their, their commitment to transparency, which I think is an essential part of the, uh, of the process and will help uh, immensely uh, as we move forward. Um, I'd also like to thank Jovan for his um, explanation of some of the elements of the IGF Plus proposal. I think as we move along in further consultations and in the roundtable process, um, there will need to be more discussions on, on the various elements of that proposal uh, and what they mean, how they would work with existing uh, institutions that may be doing some of the same things that uh, the, the incubator or the accelerator, uh, for example, would, would be um, uh, uh, aimed at doing. Um, I also would support the, the, um, the proposals put forward by, uh, by the UK government. Um, I think they're very constructive and, uh, and give us a, uh, a good framework going forward. Um, I'd also pick up on, on what um, a number of, of um, participants have mentioned, which is that the, the process of improving the IGF um, has been ongoing um, really for a number of years in different guises. Uh, at different periods, uh, and it's ongoing now, and especially the, you know, the two perceived gaps that, that we've heard a lot about um, in terms of lack of focus and um, lack of concrete outputs or lack of visibility of outputs, that I think it's very important that everyone understand that the IGF, uh, the MAG, and the wider community uh, and, and our host countries um, uh, for example, especially Germany last year, um, have been working hard to address those perceived gaps. And I understand the, the comments that uh, more could be done, for example, on in terms of focus that the, that the, the more um, sort of narrow and concrete the themes, the better. I think that's something that's worth discussing. And I trust we will continue discussing as we, uh, as we work with uh, the Polish government in preparing uh, IGF 2020. Um, uh, but uh, I would just pick up on something that Ben said, which is that this is, for the IGF improvement, is, it's a process of evolution, um, and it's, it's going to continue. I think the, the HLP process may be a way to, to kind of uh, uh, perhaps accelerate that improvement, um, but uh, it's just important to know that uh, it's, uh, it is taking place. I think all of us here are committed to it. Uh, and as we work through the process, whatever the outcome of the HLP process is in general, I hope that in, in regard to the IGF, the, the result uh, is a better uh, IGF, uh, one that's constantly improving, uh, one that is um, uh, meeting the community's expectations in terms of focus uh, and in terms of usable outputs, uh, and an IGF that is remaining true to uh, its essential purpose uh, and as well to its multi-stakeholder nature. So I'm, I'm glad to see, uh, um, and I hope to see continuing forward that we'll all be committed to that. Thank you. Thanks very much um, for that, Paul. Jorge. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andriette, and uh, thanks also to 
to the previous speakers because I couldn't agree more with uh, some of the comments which have been made. Um, I think that uh, Paul Charlton just put it very nicely. Um, we have been evolving the, the IGF along the, the last years in a certain direction, making it uh, as much as possible more effective, more, more inclusive, stronger and more relevant to digital policy discussions. And I think that uh, really the, the high-level panel report is an, op an opportunity to accelerate those uh, improvements, those uh, um, enhancements to how the IGF work, works. And as uh, Bill Drake uh, said before, there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, what has been discussed in the, in the last years where we can learn from. And I think that the high-level panel was very conscious of that and was uh, perhaps putting in different words what had been proposed by others uh, before. Um, I think also that the, the specific, and I very much welcome that approach of making specific proposals from the UK, is uh, very helpful and uh, we can uh, make progress in the six fields that uh, Paul Blaker identified. Also the notion that uh, we have to have an evolutionary approach but that uh, at the same time change is needed to, to address the, the new needs. Um, that was also put forward by, uh, by Ben Wallace from Microsoft. So I think there's uh, a lot of common ground. Perhaps this is the typical Swiss uh, deformation of looking for consensus. But uh, I think that uh, that's a, a, a very useful basis where to start from. And uh, just referring back to what uh, I also mentioned this morning, uh, there's a lot we can already do for the IGF in Katowice, um, going, uh, building on the basis of the IGF in Berlin. Um, there are things to maintain, for instance, or to institutionalize, like this uh, state of uh, digital cooperation speech by the UN Secretary General, <coughs> and the answer, <coughs> or the second speech by the host country president or head of government. That's uh, something that really raises the political visibility of the IGF. Uh, also, uh, another thing where we can work on is this high-level leaders gathering. This is a, a very welcome uh, uh, innovation or re-innovation brought about by our German colleagues, and we can build on that. And as has been said by many uh, during uh, today's discussions, uh, it would be even better if that high-level uh, segment discussions are strongly linked with the intercessional work and also with the discussions in the thematic tracks so that we uh, really make the connection between the political level or let's say the more uh, VIP level of those leaders and what has been prepared or what has been discussed at the workshop level or at the intercessional level. That would be a win-win both for the high-level segment and for the intercessional work which by this uh, would also gain in visibility and relevance. Of course, we can also be innovative, perhaps this is more for the roundtables discussion, but w w perhaps we have to think uh, about uh, giving a more uh, permanent or a more uh, continuous basis to these high-level gatherings so that they help in this follow-up and in this coordination of what uh, is uh, discussed in the annual meetings. Um, I think that probably we can uh, 
make progress in further streamlining and supporting the intercessional work, also integrating the work from NRIs into the program without having to put them as an addition to, to, to the program with uh, specific sessions. And for making this possible and also uh, another thought that transpires in the HILO panel report and in the discussions we had in Berlin, inclusion is basic. And inclusion comes, uh, inclusion is only there if there's meaningful participation of those people, those stakeholder groups to be included and to be to have that possibility of meaningfully participate, you need information, you need resources, and this leads us to this observa observatory help desk function. And there is already a lot being done there, be it by the IGF Secretariat, be it by other initiatives. I can also mention the work done by the Geneva Internet Platform. And what we have to do is to give it more, um, more stability, more institutional le institutionality, uh, so to say, to formalize a little bit that network of observatories and help desks so that they give a better service and help to include all stakeholders. So um, outputs has also already been mentioned. Uh, we have to strike the, the right balance between uh, non-negotiating but going all the way down to the path of recommendations as set out in the mandate of the um, Tunis agenda for the IGF. And perhaps in Poland, in Katowice, we can select one topic where we want to develop such a recommendation that, uh, that really uh, meets the, the level of, of the mandate set out 15 years ago in the WISIS phase two. So to sum up, I think we have to find the right balance of incentives, of uh, innovations, of uh, creative evolutions of the IGF in order to have a a big plus after the IGF, uh, uh, an enhanced and a strengthened IGF, <laughs> which is uh, more inclusive, more effective and stronger, and which really addresses the, the needs of the uh, digital uh, reality we live in. And if we get all the incentives right, I think that we will also have a big chance to convince uh, at least in my case, uh, our supervisors to put more money into this because with more effectiveness, with more um, results, with more networks, with more policy recommendations, with uh, more solutions, we won't be in the need of finding uh, solutions elsewhere or setting up ad hoc uh, initiatives which are less inclusive, less transparent, less democratic, and we will be able to do it in the IGF plus. And if that is the case, the, the money will also follow. So uh, finalizing with this uh, optimistic note, uh, leave it by that for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Um, Raquel. And we, we need to, we, are, we, we don't have a lot of time left, so we have two more people and then we'll go into concluding remarks. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. No pressure on time. I'm going to be brief, I hope. <laughs> um, so uh, I, my name is Raquel Gato. I speak also in, in the name of uh, the Internet Society. And uh, of course, we've submitted contributions uh, in the past uh, uh, consultations uh, before and after the report, but also to the um, IGF consultations itself regarding the HLPDC follow-up. So um, I'm sure uh, this is all available and uh, I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, but we've also joined the roundtable, um, the, the 5A and 5B roundtable um, as one of the key um, 
participants. I don't recall exactly the, the title, uh, but I, I really wanted to emphasize uh, that we highly appreciate these efforts for a continued uh, dialogue, um, but also the clarity and transparency uh, on the process. Um, it, it was really um, good to hear from Fabricio uh, about the timeline and the, the roadmap and uh, where this is going to uh, to feed uh, all the contributions. Um, so um, I don't want to echo uh, many of the suggestions. I think um, we are in agreement in, in most of them and uh, they're also uh, in agreement with some of the comments uh, during this morning. Uh, but I want to in particular emphasize uh, the point on the evolution of the, the IGF um, and, and we treat this as an evolution. Um, it's not uh, the time to uh, be reinventing new mechanisms, but to recognize that the context has changed. When the IHF uh, was uh, agreed upon, uh, the internet back then, or the perception and the use of the internet was different. Um, and uh, we need to recognize that most of the, uh, what we call the upper layer or the content and the platforms uh, and the use itself has changed over the past 15 years and um, most of it um, is also increasing and some of the tensions are increasing with the international geopolitical environment. So um, it is time for the IGF to also uh, go under this exercise and reinvent itself. So we really appreciate when the, the high-level panel um, uh, addresses it, uh, recognizing its pillars with the mood stakeholder and inclusive approaches that has been, have been there. Um, and uh, we see that from the, the mechanisms proposal, of course, the IGF Plus is the one that seems uh, more feasible. Uh, and similarly to some of the comments made um, um, uh, with the, the evolution of the IGF that, uh, that we are concretely talking about in delivering more tangible outcomes, but also um, to have a kind of a dispatch function that can be enabled once you have this repository or an idea of what is uh, what are the outcomes, but what are uh, what are the sorry the outputs, but also the outcomes. Uh, but more importantly, also who is going to carry that? And if there is a particular fora that uh, an existing fora in the internet uh, ecosystem that can uh, follow up and retrofit with the the, the IGF itself. So uh, that's a particular um, function that could be um, added in this effort. Um, we also uh, echo uh, the importance of not creating um, um, a negotiating body at the end of this um exercise or, or this efforts. Um, uh, there are some concerns when um, we try to negotiate or we try to put together multi-stakeholder and multilateral approaches and it might lead to some compromises that are going to um, kill the very nature of the IGF, the very nat uh, uh, DNA that the IGF was built on. Um, I also, I'm probably not going, going to do a good job naming everyone, but I believe that uh, Paul from UK has brought um, a very um, important point that is the time to uh, go for the concrete proposals. I think he brought also um, a good way forward. Um, as a gluten, I might say that uh, uh, the only way to eat the big sandwich is by bites. So <laughs> it's good that we can also break and, and go forward. Um, the last uh, comment that I'm going to do, um, and I'm sorry for taking uh, so much time, but um, it's also that as uh, we have these efforts for the high level um, uh, the HLPDC report follow-ups and we broke into the roundtables. Um, this roundtable in particular, the, the 5A and 5B, uh, could also benefit from having a uh, feed from the other ones. Um, I believe, as I was mentioning, the context of the decisions around uh, creating the IGF itself, uh, some of the challenges remain the same, for example, connecting more people uh, and, uh, well, with different nuances on how to do it. Uh, but uh, it's still uh, some of them uh, that are the recommendation five, uh, five A, if I'm not mistaken, on the high level uh, report that brings the global connectivity. But also some of them have changed. For example, the uh, recommendation for around uh, the trust um, and, and cybersecurity issues. So 
I believe also uh, connecting us with the challenges and the, the, the problems and the issues that are being discussed there with how the mechanisms can go forward is, is going to be important. And I'm sorry if I missed uh, this from Fabricio's reporting earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Raquel. Um, Valentina, are you going to be brief? Because Wanda needs to leave, so I need to give her the floor. I can do it before. Shall I do that? So to our co-chair. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, Anjette. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for, uh, for this whole day. This is um, my first day, and uh, this is my first opportunity to participate in MAC meeting. And I haven't expected uh, such a good learning and inspiring day. Um, I think that this uh, variety of perspective you have here and it's, it's really impressive and valuable at the same time. So you will, uh, we all benefit from it. But uh, for us, uh, especially as a host, host country, the most important remarks and recommendation cons uh, concerned uh, were uh, were about, of course, this uh, uh, logistic dimension and the um, zero, uh, zero agenda. Uh, so um, thank you very much for all of, uh, all of them. I, I hope you will give us more. I really, truly regret that I have to uh, leave today and go back, uh, go back to Poland, but unfortunately we are going through some a legislation process right now that requires my presence there. Uh, but as I mentioned previously, uh, Michael and Przemek will stay here till, um, till uh, Thursday, so don't hesitate to, to contact them and, uh, um, and give uh, other, uh, other advice you have. Uh, so, so we could really accelerate the improvement, but as I've, <coughs> as I've all, uh, all, already heard, um, bases, uh, bases are very strong, and this is very intimidating when I hear all the, uh, all the, thing, uh, all the things you said about IGF in, in Berlin. <laughs> I hope we'll be able to, uh, to catch up. Uh, so, again, thank you very much. Uh, I, I wish you a fruitful discussion uh, and see you during the next MAC meeting. And then see you in Poland because I haven't gotten an important, I, I forget to invite you to Poland, but you are of course invited. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Thank you very much and we wish you safe travels and we really look forward to, to working with you. And let's continue. Valentina, you have the floor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Valentina Schalpi. I work for the European Commission in the unit in charge for internet governance. Since this is my first time intervening today, let me first welcome the new MAG members. Congratulate you, Henriette, for the nomination as MAG Chair. Congratulate Rudolf uh, once again in Germany for the amazing organization of the IGF 2019 and wish the best of luck to our Polish colleague for the organization of the 2020 IGF. Now this one in Poland will be the fourth IGF in a row organized in a European country. And of course, it is our utmost wish in the commission to have another country, a non-European country stepping up and taking up the challenge for 2021 to organize and host an IGF, which of course will also help in geographically balance uh, the participation and in increase the diversity and, and ensure the diversity of participation. I am very happy today to be joined by my head of unit near me, Mr. Olivier Bringer. And so as they say in Latin, ubi maior minor cessat, I will leave the floor to Olivier for our contribution. Thank you, thank you Valentina. Um, so I would like to yes comment on the on the recommendation five. Uh, first of all, commend the work of the uh, high-level panel on uh, digital cooperation, it, which has produced very uh, very useful uh, uh, output, uh, and which is now followed up uh, by the team of Mr. Horschild and uh, the very uh, courageous uh, champions. Uh, so that the, the, the report is not yet another report, but there is follow-up and there is implementation of uh, the recommendations contained in it. So 
the Commission, the European Commission, is remains very committed to the multi-stakeholder uh, model, and we have ourselves implemented it uh, in uh, our own policy areas. So you may have heard about the work we are doing currently on artificial intelligence or on blockchain, where we have set up uh, multi-stakeholder groups to help us devise uh, policies at European level. So overall, we are uh, supportive, like uh, most of you, of the uh, IGF Plus uh, model. We think it builds upon uh, existing procedures, uh, procedures which have been uh, tested and developed by the current IGF for uh, nearly 15, uh, 15 years. And at the same time, it addresses some of the shortcomings of the current architecture. And uh, Jovan, uh, a few moments ago, described, for example, the good ideas of uh, cooperation accelerator or policy incubator, which uh, describe how to address, uh, how to improve cooperation or how to uh, develop policy uh, in a multi-stakeholder uh, environment. So we have also a number of uh, suggest suggestions for areas of uh, improvements, uh, which are very similar to what you have heard already from the UK and other, uh, other um, uh, participants. We also believe that there is a key role for the national and the regional initiatives, and that's a bi-directional. Bi uh, role. So it's very important to uh, collect ideas that come from these initiatives and at the same time to use them as instruments to spread the uh, IGF messages to the local community. We think it's important to develop strategies that make uh, the best use of the information and the knowledge that is built at national and at regional level. We also believe very much in the need to uh, increase the level of participation of uh, certain categories of stakeholders, uh, in particular governments and the private sector, including in terms of uh, vertical sectors involved, uh, as well as startups and SMEs. And I think the last IGF showed, the IGF in Berlin showed that it is uh, possible. For us, it's very important because it's the way to ensure continuous renewal of the IGF community. And Valentina was explaining to me how you, how you proceed inside the MAG. You have this system of uh, rotation, and that's also very good to have new ideas, new people, and new perspective. And we should also apply this principle at the, at the IGF uh, level in general. Um, it's also important to, we think, improve the operational process to set up the annual program, and I think there the MAG has a very important role, and I would echo what uh, Paul has said on the cur curating role of the, of the MAG, which is uh, possible together with uh, bottom-up uh, procedures. The two are not uh, uh, antagonistic. Uh, and it's also very important to have multi-year uh, planning, to agree on topics which are going to be studied uh, for several years so that we come to the bottom of the, of the topics. Uh, outcomes is very important. We also believe clearer outcomes are, uh, are needed. And it, indeed, it can be uh, consensus, not consensus, recognize where there is no consensus. This is what the uh, high-level panel report has, uh, panel has, has, has done. I mean, they have recognized that in some areas there is no, uh, there is no consensus, but they have not removed the area from the, from the content of the, of the report. Um, it's uh, important to um, uh, also address these uh, conclusions to the relevant stakeholders, uh, and that's why participation is important. Participation from uh, companies, from governments, from policymakers has, has been uh, uh, tried in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, and I think there uh, we, we also can build on, on the work that has been done. I mean, there has been a lot of work. I was, very, I was in the uh, uh, Best Practice Forum in Berlin, and I found the discussion very interesting, very open, with, uh, uh, for someone coming from inside the, the European Union, having the perspective from African Asian countries was, was, very, uh, was very interesting. So there is a way to uh, um, uh, have this uh, work done and to coordinate well between the discussion in the yearly meetings and the discussion in these intersessional inter uh, um, uh, bodies or, uh, or uh, meetings. And my last point would be on the, and it has been mentioned by, uh, by Jorge, by Switzerland, 
it's very good to um, develop a new, uh, a new model, but it's very important to think about the practical imp implementation. And I heard the word not to over-engineer. I mean, this, I think this is a risk. Uh, so we should always think about uh, what is the right process model, but how can we implement it in practice? And one key issue there, of course, is the financial sustainability, which has been a recurring issue for the current IGF and which will remain. Um, so there will be no better model if there is no uh, good financial support uh, uh, for it. And I would like to make an announcement to finish, which is that we, or rather uh, uh, we together with uh, uh, Germany, We'll hold a similar consultation uh, in our uh, multi-stakeholder group uh, inside uh, Europe, which is called the High Level Group on Internet Governance, on the 28th of, uh, of, of January. So for European stakeholders who uh, want to come to Brussels, you are also very welcome to, to join the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now for concluding um, remarks, let's first hear from from Germany. Okay, thank you very much, Anriet. And um, just to introduce myself, I'm Svanich Mecker of the German uh, Foreign Office and uh, happy to be here. Firstly, uh, thank you very much for your contributions. They are well noted and not just in transcript, but also here and in our minds. Um, I, first, I would like to respond just with a few words to the contributions I've heard here. Um, just, a, just a few points taken. Um, um, it, it is clear that um, the consultations uh, we are holding now should, be, should lead to concrete outcomes. They shouldn't repeat consultations already, um, which have already been done, uh, but uh, should um, lead to more concrete results. Uh, this is uh, well taken. And, um, also, uh, we heard the comment about the website, and I think um, that's also well noted. Um, so uh, now to the next steps. Um, uh, first, uh, we'll hold uh, consultations uh, from January to June. That's our roadmap. And we have three kinds of consultations. Um, uh, there are first the ones uh, um, which should be initiated by the key constituents or by other stakeholders. And uh, let me repeat again my warm invitation to everybody um, to come um, to us with their proposals, their ideas for their own consultations. Um, that's really important. That's, that should be the key pillar of the consultations. This is today a first step. and. Um, Thanks to the European Commission, we'll have another one uh, end of January. Um, then there will be um, more um, events organized by the co-champions, which are, is our own contribution to the process. And I will um, introduce um, some of uh, those uh, shortly. And then there's the third pillar, uh, which was al already mentioned today. That's um, the grassroots consultations, um, which will we um, convene uh, with, a, with an organization which will um, lead these grassroots consultations, which should be bottom up and include the national and regional IGFs. Um, that's at the moment at the, plan, um, at the planning state. Um, so regarding uh, our tentative list of um, co-champions led events, uh, we have identified um, in beginning of February, um, the annual conference of the Freedom, Freedom Online Coalition in Accra, Ghana, and uh, we will hold a workshop there on the follow-up on recommendation 5A. Um, then 14th to 15th March, uh, there's the South um, by Southwest uh, conference in Austin, Texas. And uh, 6th to 9th April, um, there's the World Summit on the Information Society here in Geneva again. Um, 6th to 8th May, there's uh, the Republika happening in Berlin. It's also a digital society event. Um, 12th to 13th May, there's the UN Multi-Stakeholder Forum on Science, Technology and Innovation for the Sustainable Development Goals in New York. And um, then um, 9th uh, to 12th June, there's the RightsCon uh, in San Jose, uh, Costa Rica, where we'll also hold a workshop. Um, just to note, that's uh, the tentative list uh, at the moment. Not all events are confirmed.
but uh, we are also aware that uh, this list is not um, fully regionally ba balanced. There are some gaps, so if you have any propositions for more events, um, um, they are very welcome. Um, we would like to hear them. Um, so um, these consultations from January to June um, will lead in the end to most likely an options paper which, um, for which we will develop a draft um, after June um, and which we of course will also share and discuss uh, with the key constituents so there is another round for discussion and which will then be submitted to the Secretary General for the 75th anniversary. Um, and uh, to point again, if you have any contributions, uh, please uh, submit them, um, especially on the website, um, which uh, went online uh, today. Um, and uh, we are happy to hear your suggestions. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, um, Svante. And th thanks to Germany for, for being here and being part of this. <coughs> um, Ambassador Schneider. You may, I not, like saying that. you may also call me Thomas. I like, uh, like I, I've, known Thomas, years, I've that. known Thomas for a very long time, so it's really <laughs> fun to call him ambassador. <laughs> You're not the only one, um, but don't worry. Um, I'll be very brief um, because uh, I think you've heard quite a lot of uh, good wrap-ups. Uh, I'm quite happy with the discussion because we had a number of concrete ideas that do not take 500 years of negotiation to actually implement them. Some things are fairly straightforward and it just one 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 thing that that uh, and again it's 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 Paul Blaker who, who said it um, to try and create more clear tracks, for instance, at the IGF that are more where the sessions are more connected and try to more build one on each other. Maybe also with with a, a site where you can put uh, existing background documents, already existing recommendations and regulations and 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 back, background stuff to discuss it. Um, this is very straightforward proposal. You would just need the resources that somebody, and this is what the IGF Secretariat has been suffering, to moderate such things are complicated if, if you want to feel everybody owning the process. So, so w again, uh, we need a little bit more money maybe uh, for the Secretariat, and then uh, things can, some things can be done quite easily at the IGF. And the other thing is, of course, also looking at the, at the elements of, of support and help desk functions that are there at the at the existing networks, and one of my favorite quotes is, of course, the Internet and Jurisdiction networks because, Network, because they managed to get a number of people together that have an interest in finding concrete solutions for concrete but not so easy problems. And so basically, the more we, we can build on these things, the more we can pull the ropes together, always built on, never built on, on an over-engineering top-down decision, but on, on the desire, on the demand of people to find solutions for challenges or for seizing opportunities think, uh, yeah, if we collect this in, in, in a good way, um, I think we can actually achieve something not just in the next 50 years, but in a reasonable time frame. So that's basically my wrap up for today. And again, um, we will have um, a reception uh, for you tonight at uh, 21.30 um, at the lake. No, I think it's at 6.30 at the OMM building. So with the GRP, the Pro Foundation building is so it's just enough time to walk over. And I'll make sure that you get directions. So, um, yes, so some, I do not have a, a summary. Maybe just some points that stood out for me. Firstly, it was very clear that the input you all gave has dual value. It has value for the IGF within its current mandate um, um, to, to add more substance to the process of strengthening the IGF. So very useful for the MAG and, and for the Secretariat. But it also has value for this process. And, and, I, and I hope that the champions and the key constituents in the room um, and our friends in New York found this useful. Um, I think what stood out for me is the, 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 the remark about the ecosystem being complex and the IGF not necessarily being at the center of the internet governance ecosystem. And I think that's a, that's, that's a fair um, comment. It might be at the center of, of, of the, the common space 
um, if there is such a common space, or it might represent to what extent you still can constitute a common public open space for internet governance. And I think Fabrizio's use of the language of connecting tissue or connectivity tissue is, is very important. Um, I think what is also really important is to note that cooperation is most valuable when it's not abstract and when it's closest to the ground. And I think that is a caution that I heard from some people in the room, and I think it's a very valid uh, um, caution to, to have a cooperation architecture that looks good on paper and that works well at an abstract level um, is not necessarily going to achieve the, the results unless it's really connected to or reflects cooperation um, at the, at the front line of where policy and implementation happens. And that's often not in Geneva or New York. Um, I think the other point that stood out for me is, is, is this issue of the focus on depth. I think there's clearly consensus around that, um, um, the, the need for, for continuity, thematic engagement, um, linking with the intercessional process, being selective about topics. I think what I did not hear is, is how one um, does not do that at the expense of renewing the community. I think, I think it, it, from a policy-making perspective, um, it is very useful and important to have that kind of narrow focus and that depth and continuity. But keep in mind that the IGF process, not necessarily just the global IGF, is about bringing young people into the process. It's about bringing newcomers into the process. And I think we need to, we need to consider whether there's, there's more directed, targeted focus does not at some level perhaps risk that type of easy, accessible uh, uh, renewal of the community that this more open and sometimes more, more horizontal uh, approach to topics achieves. Um, I think the issue of technical standards and public policy still, in spite of years of trying to achieve that, there's still a divide between how we talk about and where we talk about uh, technical standards and public policy. So that, that, it was good that that came up. Um, I th the point about the value of bringing people together, I think that was made, and I think it's extremely important. Um, as I've just said, it's, it's, there's value in that, there's intrinsic value. I think it, was, it might have been Ben who said that, just in bringing people together to talk about these issues. Change, change ultimately does take place through people. And I think one of the unique characteristics of the IGF is that it is not just about representatives and institutions, it's about individuals. And, and, and the IGF's kind of change process, the way in which it produces change, is not necessarily through X <coughs> institutions deciding we're going to do one, two, three. It's about changing the way individuals think and understand their own work and the work of, of people of other stakeholders. So I don't think we should lose that. I heard consensus on outcomes, actually. I heard that there's, I heard consensus on the IGF producing outcomes, but that need not be or should not be negotiated recommendations. So I think that's real progress. We should recognize that. Um, one, one, one sort of uh, something more, more challenging point I want to flag is this discussion of evolution versus revolution and gaps versus perceived gaps. I think it was good, Paul, you talked about gaps versus perceived gaps. I think it's important to talk about that. I think we should also, it's very easy to say we're talking about evolution and not revolution, but I think we shouldn't let that mask the fact that there are political differences and, and that there sometimes are power differences in, in how people feel uh, about the IGF and their agency inside the AGF, IGF. And I think that's something we need to confront. It's very easy to say we don't need revolution, we want evolution, but you need to convince those that want revolution that evolution is, is powerful and quickly enough that it satisfies uh, you know, some of the demands of those that want revolution. And, and I think we talk about gaps sometimes um, in a way that, that can, I think, risk masking that, those, that behind those gaps are sense of disempowerment, a sense of, of that there's still divides between countries, between the South and the North, between different stakeholder groups. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I, I just, I agree with, 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 the, with, with what was said about evolution and revolution. I just think we shouldn't, um, 
deny or, or uh, not confront the fact that there actually are political differences and what people feel about the IGF, what about some about multi-stakeholder approach. There are governments who are still not comfortable with multi-stakeholder approaches. There are other stakeholder groups who are, who are not comfortable with it. And we do need to take that on board as well. And then I think um, uh, finally, really the point that that was made was that we do have to work with what we have and not underestimate the value of incremental change. I think we sometimes do. I think the IGF doesn't have a, a lot of resources and it, it feels that it cannot produce the kind of incremental change that could in fact make a lot of difference. And, um, and that's really my final point and I think many of you have said <laughs> this. We need to look at capacity, institutional capacity, institutional resources, um, and not fragment those resources. And I think that's a real challenge for, for, for those of you who are champions of the follow-up and implementation of the high-level panel's recommendations, as well as supporters of the IGF, is that we can find a way to strengthen the IGF and use resources that can support that new process, but in a way that, that doesn't fragment the, 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 the um, channeling of resources um, to, to the IGF. And, but it's not just financial capacity. I think as Paul said, it's also about institutional identity and leadership and presence and agency. And that is something that the IGF lacks. And I think that's something that the champions need to consider in, in their architecture uh, for digital cooperation, which clearly involves the IGF. And I have a special recommendation to, <coughs> to the champions of recommendation 5 A and B. I suggest you change the name call it recommendation on mechanisms for digital cooperation rather than, um, than, than recommendations 5A and 5B, just, just, just to make it more accessible. And thanks everyone who contributed. Thanks to Jovan um, for his presentation, the Secretariat who worked hard for this. Um, and thanks very much to Switzerland um, for supporting um, this event and um, supporting our cocktail reception. So on that, I'm closing the event, thanking everyone, and Shengatai will give us directions to, to where the refreshments are. <laughs>Oh, sorry, second floor, second floor. WMO. So does second everyone floor. have that? WMO, second floor. It's walking distance. It's where the Diplo offices are. It's not very far. It should take about 10 minutes to get there. Yes. So it's out the flag gate. Don't go out the, um, the apprentice gate. It's out the flag gate. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow morning, those that are on the mag. <laughs>